Alrighty. Should be live now. We've got face cam. Just make a couple posts real quick. Perfect. Alright. Um so today. Oh, hold on, let me go grab the case real quick. All right, we're putting this thing together. So this is a Louis case. Uh, it's a portable I've built quite a few times, um, but I wanted to do a Super Nintendo themed one. So try to design it to look like the back of a Super Nintendo. Uh, the buttons are gonna be the rainbowy Super Nintendo buttons. Uh, but yeah, should turn out pretty nice. Uh, but to start, I wanna do uh, the entire like we trim process on camera since I've never actually done that before I usually just do that off stream and then just bring in a trimmed we already but I got a shot back so I should be able to cut a we in here without uh, Getting dust absolutely everywhere, but we'll see how it goes um but yeah So the first thing I need to do is soft mod this we which is relatively straightforward. Um, I'm gonna bring this camera over for a second. Maybe. All right, see. All right, we'll run it with this cam for now. Um, but hacking a Wii is really easy. Uh, it's like two steps and uh, it's worth doing if you just got like a home Wii where the disk drive doesn't work anymore. So this process will work for that too. Um, so you're gonna turn it on. Here, I'll switch to uh, there we are. Uh, let's hide. Okay. Okay. Found a Wii remote that works. So all you got to do is you got to go to the Wii options. You go to Wii settings. And then in the top right corner, you'll see a version number that should say 4.3. So uh, this one says 4.3U, which is good. That means it'll actually work. Um, and then if you go over to internet, and then if you go to connection, no, console information, you'll get this MAC address. And so with that, hey there, Amadeo. So with this thing, we can now switch over to this. And then if you go to, what's it called? Hack me? No, letter bomb we. If you go to letter bomb we, you'll get this website called please.hackme.com. And then up here, you want to set your system menu version to like whatever uh, like region of Wii you've got. You've got like United States, Europe, Japan, and Korea, I think. And then you just punch in whatever your MAC address is into this box. So 8C, C, D, E8, 8, 7, A4, A. Um, you can bundle the HackMe installer for me. Click I'm not a robot. And then you can cut whichever wire you want. And then once we've got that, open it up, we get these files. And then if you copy them onto an SD card, which I should have one here. 
Uh, it helps with this SD card. It's like a one or two gigabyte card. And if it's formatted to FAT32, uh, that sometimes is important. Uh, so once you've got that, you can go ahead and just take out the SD card and pop it in your Wii. Let's see, we can switch back now. Here we are. Yeah, trying for a portable Wii speedrun. Wanted to set up splits, but it's already getting late and I want to get this done today. So, um, yeah, I'm using Twitch. I do like it better for live streams. So then once you've done that, if you head back over here to the Wii message board, what day is today? And then if you head to the current date, oh, there it is. You'll see this like little bomb in a letter. So if you click that, it'll load up this menu. Oh, thanks, TJ Fatty. And so then you have to sit here at this screen for like a minute or so. They really like to make sure you know that uh, the software is available for free. Saw a random video of you making the GameCube portable. I'm glad you saw that. That was a fun video to make. Yeah, I haven't actually tried like streaming on YouTube, but I enjoy Twitch better as a viewer, so I'll just stick with this for now. Are you just teaching people to install Homebrew Channel? Uh, kind of. I'm gonna show uh, how to install this, uh, how to install, oh, yeah, I should explain what I'm doing. So once you get here, uh, you'll see install the Homebrew Channel. You'll hit yes, continue. It'll install the Homebrew Channel. And then once that's done, you can just hit exit and your Wii is homebrewed. That's literally it. Um, and then once you've done that, to actually install some files, uh, you have to remove the SD card and then on a USB drive, here, I'll show this too real quick. Uh, screen capture, if you go to Google and you type in RV loader, and you go to this GitHub page. And then to releases. And then RV Loader V, whatever the most recent one is. And then just download this. Uh, it'll download up here. And then you'll cop copy all of these files to the root of a USB drive. Uh, and then once they're on that USB drive, uh, you can plug that USB drive. back into your Wii. I plug put it in the wrong way? I did. And then you'll get this. So you want to go to RV loader, hit load. And then RV loader is not installed. You want to run the installer. You hit yes. Ah, okay, we're gonna take a quick detour. So sometimes there are WAD files missing, and if they're missing, then you have to acquire those somehow. Uh, but yeah, yeah, the adapter is a bit small. Okay, is it gonna give me an option to exit? No, it's not. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a quick minute and add the right files onto here. Thankfully, I think I've got them. Oh, where do I have them? Oh, wait, I know, I know. Alright, so this, plug it into the Wii, and 
and we'll turn it back on. You don't have to unplug your Wii from power, but the power button on this Wii doesn't work. So that's the only way I can turn it off. You can turn it on by pressing the eject button though, which is convenient. All right, uh, so we'll go back into it. Uh, you just load up the homebrew channel through here. Yeah, this will eventually go on YouTube. Um, I'll probably just upload the entire VOD to a channel. Uh, okay, we'll go back into RV Loader. And so now that the WAD files are on the USB drive, it should play nice. All right, there we go. So now you'll get to this screen. Um, and so on most portables, you're gonna wanna patch out Wi-Fi because relocating Wi-Fi is a pain. Uh, and you'll want to enable VGA uh, because that's the nice screen quality that most screens use. Uh, and so it's pretty much the best option except in really specific circumstances. So once you've got that, you'll double check that you've got yes on both of them. And then you hold down the start or the home button for a couple seconds. And then it's going to run through the installer. So it'll take a couple minutes, but uh, it should go pretty quick. Uh, thankfully, this, this software is really consistent. I don't think I've ever had an installation fail. Like once it gets to here, it just has to chug through and add all the files and so forth. But yeah, once this is installed, uh, we'll tear down the Wii. And then after that, we'll cut up the Wii. Um, as far as getting games to put on the Wii, uh, you can make backups of discs. I won't go over that because I don't know if I have any Wiis with working disk drives right now, but... Um, but yeah, this is what the software looks like. Uh, there aren't any games on it because I'm using an old USB drive, but... Hey, MP3! But this should be all good. So, once you're here, you can power off the Wii. I will do by ungraciously unplugging it. And should be good to go. Alright, we'll switch back to this cam. And I'll bring this back over here. I think that's more or less how it was before. Hey there, Pablo. But we'll go ahead, zoom out a bit, and tear down this Wii. So this one, this one's in kind of rough shape. I'm hopeful there aren't any roaches inside of it. Uh, but this one is looking a little bit suspicious. So we'll see. Um, looking for a broken pair of tweezers. Okay, these ones aren't in great shape. Because I like to just stab something in here and pry up the stickers, but uh, it does ruin the uh, the tweezers. So, want to use something I've already done one with. Um, as far as where the screws are on the Wii, there's like these like hidden stickers right here. These are the ones that always get me. Oh, it's, it's like brown and crusty. That's really exciting. Um, and then these ones have screws hidden underneath. Oh, uh, water damage. Oh boy. Well, if we've got water damage in here, then uh, we might be using a different Wii. But now I'm curious, so we're gonna open it up anyways and see what it looks like. Um. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some ugly Wii's. The best ones are the ones that are infested with roaches. Those ones are very fun. I'm just gonna 
preemptively grab some gloves because this one looks this one looks pretty nasty yeah it does have video out but if it does have water damage that might be why the power button doesn't work I thought that might just be a mechanical thing but uh, we'll see Well, these screws are just flaking. Hmm. Okay, you know what? This one might just be a mystery for another day. Or I'll just rip this Wii apart. We'll see. Oh, that's right. I do remember you talking about that. I think you had a really, like, gnarly new Super Mario Bros. disc in there. Might have to bust out the Dremel early. Uh, if it's just these screws that are stuck, you could just like rip the front plate off. Done that a few times. Let's see. Then up here. A bunch of screws. No, it's shells and pretty terrible shape. I'm not going to keep that coin so I'm just going to assume it's busted. Ah, uh, yeah, here's another screw that's just... Um... Okay, change of plans. This Wii sucks. Uh, on to Wii number two. So, this Wii... A quick tip. So, to figure out what Wiis you can trim, uh, they need to be a four-layer Wii. And four-layer Wiis are Wiis that are a color other than white, uh, or Wii's that don't have GameCube ports. But this one is white and it has GameCube ports, but the serial number starts with LU7. And if it starts with that, then it should be a four layer Wii inside. So in theory, this one should work. I don't know if I've tested to see if it boots though. One second. Um, okay, it boots. Um, I guess we'll homebrew this one real quick. Uh, kind of a pain that we got to do it twice, but this one doesn't appear to be water damaged. So, ooh, this one comes with soccer sashi demo? Soccer bocce? Huh, all right. Well, let me, just gonna run through the quick Wii settings thing again. Wii settings, 4.3U, internet, console information. All right, we'll plug that in real quick. Um, actually, I'll tear down this Wii first, just to make sure there's nothing weird before we homebrew it. But, this one doesn't appear to have super rusted out screws like the other one. Alright. Back in we go. Also, <laughs> you can tell that this is where someone ripped off the front panel, because uh, the screws here still have like a bit of plastic from the the button cover on there. So, looks like someone couldn't find the screws. Well, that means that this Wii has probably been taken apart before. So, hopefully we don't run into a bunch of strip screws because that tends to be what I find inside of pre-opened Wiis. Fill the other Wii with fireworks. I suppose I could do that. Don't have any fireworks on hand though. I don't know. I might open up that Wii later. Curious if uh, like the metal shielding is rusted to any of the traces. Because if so, then yeah, it's probably not even worth trying to do anything with it. Um, it's all those screws. 
Alright, there's actually a bunch of screws missing on this Wii, which is convenient. It's a lot easier for me to get this guy apart. Yeah, I've seen, like, slightly rusty screws before, and that's never been too much of a concern. Alright. Got this guy. Huh. There's some weird sticky stuff on here. Uh, you can get the disk drive out. There's like a million screws on the disk drive. But if you just pull out these four screws... I just can't see these. If you pull out these four, then they all just come out. <laughs> the turtleneck. Yeah, this is, this is the shirt I've got today. It gets cold in this room. Because uh, the upstairs of the house I live in doesn't have... Doesn't have heaters. Or it doesn't have like vents in any of the rooms. So I've got a space heater over there, but I don't really want to fire it up because it makes rooms pretty toasty. I'm probably going to be in this room for a while today. Um, I always forget about this screw. There's one right here. Peak modding outfit? I suppose so. Although I might have to change my shirt because I don't want to get dust all over it when I trim the Wii. These screws actually aren't stripped, which is very nice. Oh, interesting. I've never seen... Maybe I have seen. But this Wii fan is, uh... It's different than the ones I usually see. Unless they just put it in backwards. No, this one's different. Huh. Very strange. Turtleneck as I de-shell the Wii? Suppose so, although... De-shelling a turtle would probably be... Somewhat more horrifying. Pokemon Rumble Cart. That is a strange one. I haven't found anything too crazy in a Wii. I think the best thing I found was like three discs jam like all jammed into a single Wii. It was like the Incredibles, uh, like Top Gun, what other? Oh, I think Spaceballs might have been the other one. But there's just like three movies that someone had all jammed in there. And so, hey, look, I came out of there with some good films. But, uh, now they're just in the pile of assorted discs that I have pulled out of Wii's, most of which are Wii Sports. Alright. Um, this motherboard, from what I can see, looks to be in pretty good shape. There's nothing too gnarly. My driving soundtrack just came on my headphones. Maybe. I don't remember what this is from. But. Yeah, unfortunately my, I had like a playlist full of music for like stream, but uh, like half of it got nuked in the uh, Silva Gunner Day of Reckoning. So, down to quite a few fewer songs. What is this? Oh, huh. Never seen something snap right there before. Very strange. Oh, right, Mitzi's. Also, let me know if something's up with the audio, like mic too quiet, music too loud or something. I had to change a bunch of settings today because I'm trying to uh, record the stream onto my computer so that way it can be saved in 1080p for YouTube because Twitch only lets you stream at 720 unless you're a big streamer okay um, I think we'll leave the Wii like this for now 
Uh, so it's a design that I've already done before. Uh, I've modified it a little bit to fit in some uh, like custom boards, but uh, it's a Louie. I'll grab the original at some point to show off. Um, but for now, okay. I'm gonna swap out this Wi-Fi module with one that I know the MAC address for. Where did I put it? Uh-oh. Hmm. Or maybe we won't do that, because I don't know where I put that Wi-Fi module. Strange. All right. So we're going to soft mod this Wii really quick. Plug in my cables. If you just came in, I showed how to do this about 10 minutes ago. And then I tried to open up the Wii that I soft modded and uh, found out that there's water damage in it. So we're not going to use that Wii. But this Wii is nice and clean. So it should work. Um, oh, it does need a Wi-Fi module. So one thing, when if you take apart a Wii, and you haven't installed RV loader yet, then you gotta make sure that uh, these two chips are still on there. Now, let me move this so you guys can actually see. Because if they're not on there, then the Wii won't boot. Which is a bit of an issue. Yeah, I do hate when like, I'm trying to read a recipe online and they treat me like I know how to cook. Like, they'll just, like, give me, like, a list of spices to use, but they won't tell me how much of each spice. And it becomes a bit of a guessing game, and I'm not very good at that guessing game. Okay, internet, console information. Alright, let's plug in this MAC address. Uh oh 25, A-O. 77, 28... Robot. Okay. Got letter bomb again. All right. We're going to copy these. Here, we click paste. Okay, should have all the files I need. Let's plug in this guy and this guy. Yeah, I did hear about your soup saga. That reminds me, I was in a store the other day when I went shopping and they were talking about butternut squash soup. And I heard that and I went, oh no, not the butternut squash soup. All right. Um, oh, that's right. So when you, when you try to run the uh, letter bomb, your system needs to be set to the right date. That's why I was opening up the settings. So you go into settings, date and time. What is today? Today's the 20th. Date, three, twenty, twenty-two. All right, and then sometimes it's on the day before. Okay, so I'll run this again real quick. It's too superstitious, oh dear. Taste as you go. The problem is I am not, I do not have a refined palate. I'll eat something and I'll be like, oh, this is pretty good. And then that's pretty much how all food tastes to me. Unless it's really bad. Because the one instance where I tried to like follow a vague recipe 
I was trying to make like tilapia. Like I've had salmon before, but I've never had tilapia. And so they had like this butter, garlic, paprika, a couple other things. And they were just like, yeah, just put it on there, man. It'll taste great. But they didn't tell me how much of it to put on there. So I put on way too much garlic and way too much paprika. You couldn't taste anything else. And it was, it was not good. Still ate it all though, but I would not cook it again. All right, um, RB loader. Okay, let's see if it works without the funny files this time. Fish are weird. Yeah, I'm not great at fish. I can do salmon, cause you just like, you just put the, uh, just put the fish in like a pan with a little bit of olive oil. Patch out Wi-Fi, enable VGA, yep. A little bit of like olive oil, and then it just kind of like crispies up, and it's delicious. Even I can do that. Have I ever heard of Quagsire? Uh, is that like a dude from Family? No, it's Quagmire. I don't know what Quagsire is, but. River Salamander. Oh, the Pokemon. Uh, I've probably seen it before. I'm not a huge Pokemon guy. I didn't grow up with it as a kid. But I played through a couple games of the, as an adult. Had some fun with it. But... I don't know. I'm just not a huge Pokemon guy. I do kind of want to try out Legends Arceus. Because it at least looks different. The issue with like all the current Pokemon games is that I'll get started on one. And it just kind of feels the same. But... All right, there we go. So I've got games on this hard drive. So we've got the software all installed. So we can power off the Wii real quick. All right, perfect. Um, and then at this point, I'm gonna take out the Bluetooth module and the Wi-Fi module. I'm just going to turn it on one more time just to make sure that like the software is installed properly. I've never had an issue with like, uh, uh, with RV loader not working after like taking these off, but I used to have issues with portabilize me. So I just do it as like just a, a quick check, but it still works great. Um, which means it's time to actually get ready to cut it up. People are breathing the new Pokemon games to PLA? Oh, Pokemon Legends Arceus. <laughs> yeah, that sounds confusing. I always get confused because they shorten it to like PKMN. And my brain reads that as Pikmin. That's Pikmin without the eyes. But no, that's that's Pokemon. Because I'm a lot more familiar with Pikmin than I am Pokemon. But the world can't revolve around me all the time. All right. Take off the heat sink. Um, all right. Just get rid of this thermal pad real quick because we're going to replace it with some fresh ones later on. All right. So now we've got a nice wee motherboard. So at this point, from here on for going forward, I won't be able to turn it on and test anymore, but. Let's see. Hey there, Timon. So before I trim, I like to remove just a few things. So there's these six capacitors right here. I kind of cut through them a little bit, so I like to just get rid of them beforehand. And then I'll get rid of all this stuff kind of right here. It gets in the way a little bit. So let's see, just kind of take a pair of pliers and just yank, which uh, is a really bad idea most of the time. But since we're just kind of cutting through this, it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, but yeah, now that I've taken these off, this we won't turn on anymore until after we've cut it up. So just keep that in mind. Pikmin Emerald Kaizo. 
I did try Kaizo Pikmin one time. Because there are a couple hacks that exist, but it's just kind of a headache. It's mostly just enemy spam and you have to like grind Pikmin. Which is just kind of a pain. If I could do it with unlimited Pikmin, I might be down. But... <laughs> Pikmin Emerald. Maybe someday we'll get another Pikmin game. Not today. Alright. So, um... You know what, I should probably draw trim lines. Because I don't use them, but if you've never cut up a Wii before, then uh, knowing where to actually cut is very important. Oh, I got a sharpie. Uh, this song is, I think it's super. Er, it's Color Splash Port Prisma. I do like. I don't love Color Splash as a game, but it does have some nice music. Okay, so let's zoom in a bit. Come on, focus up. Okay, so. I usually cut most of the Wii from this side because there aren't like the massive like GameCube and memory card ports in the way. But if you flip it here, so coming off of the NAND chip, there are some traces that go up like this. You cannot cut these traces. If you cut these traces, it's really annoying to fix. Uh, so I'm just gonna draw a line like right here. You do have to cut pretty close to them on a Louis. Uh, but just make sure you don't cut through those. Um, on this side of the Wii, uh, like the maximum point you want to cut is, you can't really see it on the camera very well, I don't think, but there's these resistors and capacitors right here, and there's vias that come off of them for ground. And so you want to draw a line just off of those ground pads, uh, because fixing that is also a massive pain. Um, let's see, I'll usually cut in like this, just a little bit. I don't really think it matters, but um, on the front side here, the maximum cut, oh, actually, okay, we're gonna, real quick, I'm gonna move this guy up just a little bit. Oh, uh, did you kill a screen? I forget, Piotrev. Uh, did you have like a design that you've started? Because I know I've seen you, I think I've seen you post stuff in 3D printing. I just don't remember if I've seen a case from you yet. Um, okay. My heat gun is all tangled up in my mic. Alright. So, heat guns are really nice for like relocating certain things on the Wii. But I would recommend it if you're going to be building a portable. Building portables is pretty fun. Uh, it can be kind of frustrating to get into, but uh, once you have the soldering down, it's you can pretty much do anything. It's a lot of fun. Um, and then whenever you're removing something with hot air, don't like pull on it with a lot of force. You'll know it's heated up when you can just kind of tap it and it moves. So right now I'm just heating it up and slowly tapping it and seeing if it'll shift at all. Oh, hang on, my temperature's a bit low. Let me... Alright. Usually when I'm desoldering stuff off of a Wii, you want it to be at like 380C, I think is what I usually use. Maybe even 400 if you're going for something massive, like the 1.8 volt rig. There we are. Okay. So that's all I wanted to move. Um, if you're using the PMS2, uh, then you'll want to get rid of this guy, this big guy. Uh, but if you're using the PMS Lite, then you need to keep this guy on there. Um, yeah, should be good. All right, we're gonna let this cool down for a minute. Um, Cause right now the entire board is like 300 degrees, which would not feel good to touch. What else can we do? Um, oh, I can, so I did have some issues with my 3D printer yesterday, that's, I was hoping to start streaming this morning, but I just kept running into issues, so I've got this piece right here, 
uh, which will act as a screen holder and it's got some support bits on it that I still got to pull off. So I'll do that real quick. Yeah, the PMS2s are out of stock right now. I've got a few lying around, but I'm going to try to use PMS lights as much as I can and save the PMS2s for big stuff. Oh yeah, I guess Summer Contest... I guess we're a couple months out from that starting, aren't we? I think it usually starts in May. Since it's right after MGC. But yeah, I definitely want to have an entry this year. Because last year I just... I think the only portable I built was the PS2 Eclipse. And I didn't start it that year, so I couldn't submit it, unfortunately. Um, Okay, supports are all off on that piece. Uh, the disadvantage to a PMS light, it's not much. Let's see, I've got one right here. You don't have the 1.8 volt regulator anymore, which is a bit of a pain. And I think the battery percentage isn't quite as accurate, but realistically, there's not much of a difference. Oh yeah, MP3's got it. Uh, yeah, it's mostly just those two things. 1.8 volt regulator is like the, the big thing that kind of annoys me because I hate this giant guy. Uh, most of my projects, I like design around it. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a Louie. Where do I keep putting that case? I keep grabbing it. Oh, it's right here. But this is the case for it. I didn't think, I tried to avoid doing all white portables, but Super Nintendo sounded fun. And uh, we'll be doing some colorful buttons. So that'll at least make it feel a bit more unique. Um, let's see, we can put this guy back up here. All right. Still a little bit toasty, but I can at least handle it now. Um, is this Louie going to be up for immediate purchase? Yes, it will. Um, as soon as I have it done and tested, I'll post to Instagram and Twitter uh, when it's ready. Oh, thanks for the stub, sub, Timon. Appreciate it. Oh, that reminds me. I set up, I set up like some sort of alert things, but I have to like, I have to like copy that into OBS. I might do that later. I appreciate it. All right, Pietreff. Sorry to hear you're having internet issues, but thanks for stopping by. Oh, this song reminds me. I started playing Chrono Trigger the other day. Uh, I had some fun with it. I just have a hard time getting into JRPGs, but I do want to keep playing it at some point. So I was having fun with it. Alright. That should be good. Yes, I know a lot of people really like Chrono Trigger, so I figure I might as well try it. I am playing the Steam version, which is probably sacrilegious in some ways but if I don't actually buy the game then I have almost no motivation to actually play through it so hopefully that'll keep me involved happy to hear you like the content I would I'd really like to stream more than I do but setting up for a stream is a bit of a pain although it should be less of a pain now that I've uh, set up all the OBS stuff on this PC um, okay, so back to drawing trim lines. I got distracted, but we're gonna cut right up along this piece right here. So I'm just drawing a long line along there. And then it's kind of hard to tell where the like maximum cut point is from this side. But if you flip over the Wii, there's this tiny capacitor right here underneath the NAND. And so we're gonna try to cut up right along that without taking it off. Um. See, I think our line is something like this. Uh, and then the line from like here to here is always a little bit of a guess. We'll just do something like that. Better to cut off too little than too much. Um. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Do I have masking tape nearby? Um, 
I I actually like cutting from the back easier. Uh, Cause then I don't have to like deal with the memory card ports being in the way. But I'm curious, why do you think the, the front is easier? Cause if there aren't the ports in the way, then yeah, cutting from the front isn't a big deal. But I'm also better at like knowing where the maximum cuts are based on where stuff is on the back. So that's why I'm a back cutter. Yeah, the NAND chip is very important. But uh, it is kind of convenient that it's that size because it means it's at least reasonable to relocate. Um, so what we're doing here is we're just putting masking tape over some of the chips. It's, people debate over whether or not uh, like dust can actually like get stuck under the chips and cause shorts. But I'd rather take 30 seconds and apply some tape and just not worry about it. Because sometimes a wee just doesn't boot after trimming. And I don't know why that is sometimes. But by doing this, hopefully we avoid that. Um, okay. Is there anything else? Yeah, it is very nice that all the critical stuff is in here. I can actually explain that real quick. So, all this stuff right here is voltage regulators, which are important because the Wii needs voltages, but you can just redesign all that stuff into like a little board like this. Um, so, we don't need any of that. The ports take up a lot of space and we get rid of all of those. We don't need the SD card slot. We don't need the Bluetooth chip or the Wi-Fi chip. And then the only other useful thing way out here is this MX chip, which I will cut out and we might relocate it later. But yeah, that's uh, that's why you can cut a Wii so small, which is really cool. Um, all right, it's cutting time. Oh, you just desoldered the port? That makes sense. I hate desoldering this port though. I, it takes so long. Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll trust you on that. I've just always done it from the back. So whatever works best for you. I've never, it's been a long time since I swooshed a Wii. So I don't worry about that too much, but that is a fair concern. Um, yeah, buying a, buying a couple of Wiis is probably a good idea, especially if it's your first trim. Uh, just make sure you know uh, which Wii's are trimmable or actually all Wii's are trimmable, but only certain models are actually good for building a portable out of so just make sure you know which ones are actually good for that um, Okay Yes, this is the football song Really I don't know I might just have terrible technique with the hot air station because I the, the Chinese ones have always been a bit flaky for me and I especially wouldn't want to try to get rid of a memory card port although I guess it's easy for just trying to get rid of it and not actually uh, like keep it usable um all right so I'm going to get prepped for cutting and then I'm gonna mute my mic because the Dremel sounds are going to be awful and while my lovely voice is a delight to listen to uh, I don't think you want to hear the Dremel uh, as far as cutting wheels go, um, I really like, I don't know what these are. My dad gave them to me like five years ago and I've used them on pretty much every Wii I've ever trimmed. They're insanely good. I love them a lot. Um, all right, it's locked in there solidly. Uh, I've got this massive 16 gallon shot vacuum. I didn't think about how big it was before I bought it and now it's just too big. Is that one a diamond cutting wheel? I didn't know that, but if it is, then yeah, they're they're crazy. I love how you can also just use like the top of it to like sand down a wee a little bit after cutting. Um, all right, so I'm gonna mute up real quick. It'll probably take me like five minutes to cut up the wee, and then I will be right back. Uh, I will cut it up on camera. Hang on, let's zoom out a bit. Perfect. All right. 
but I'll answer your questions in a bit.
Sorry, forgot to swing my mic back around. It should sound better now. Or did I... No, I muted the right thing. Alright, sorry about that. But... Yeah, I wanted to cut out the MX chip, but I forgot to do that. I might just have to do that real quick. Unless I've got one... sitting in here somewhere. A lot of these Wii's are either dead or potentially dead. I need to go through and just have a day where I test all of them and figure out what's up with them. Um, okay. That's a lot of PS2s. I think two of those PS2s actually still work. So, that's good. Um, okay, I'm going to mute up real quick one more time and cut out the MX ship. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, the G-Man business card is a classic. I love that one. All right, so now we've got the two pieces of the Wii that we actually need. Um, 
So the main part, and then this is the MX chip. Um, it doesn't do a whole lot. It just lets uh, some virtual console stuff work. And then uh, it lets the Wii keep track of time, which is handy for a couple of games. Um, all right, we're gonna try to zoom in without making my camera all dusty. Okay, perfect. So once you've got your Wii like this, uh, you need to do some sanding. So I'll usually start with around, I think this is 220 grit. But you start with this stuff and then just sand your way down. I usually use 400 and 800 afterwards. So uh, that's usually enough to get the edges smooth and avoid any shorts. Uh, and so this is probably gonna be pretty slow because this is just me sanding a motherboard a lot. So if you've got any questions about Wii trimming or portable building, let me know. Cause I'll just be sitting here sanding for a while. Looking pretty chipper. There are some chips, that's for sure. Oh, thanks for stopping by Downing. Although you're probably long gone now for dinner. I think I might've cut a little bit too much along the bottom. Cause I want to keep this screw post pretty intact. It's probably still usable, but would have been nice if it was a little bit more intact. Uh, but the reason you have to sand down a motherboard is uh, because basically circuit boards have like a bunch of layers stacked on top of each other and all of those layers have like different signals but when you cut along a board you can kind of smear some of those layers together and so like if you've got the three volt layer connected to like the controller data layer, then uh, stuff isn't gonna work right. So before you power up a Wii, once you've trimmed it, you gotta spend some time sanding just to make sure that nothing uh, you don't want connected is connected. Um, Yeah, I'd say if your friends are into Wii games, Wii micros are relatively cheap. I think the only tough part right now might be sourcing like uh, voltage regulators because I know in the past I think I saw someone say that like PTHs are like out of stock which is crazy because those are like what I used on my first portable but yeah if you can get like a good voltage regulator solution then uh, yeah I'd say a Wii Micro is a good uh, a good Christmas gift it's a decent starting project Ooh. Okay, I sanded too much. So I accidentally severed, it looks like one of the NAND lines, maybe two. It's not a big deal, I can fix that. But uh, don't cut as close as I did here. Give yourself a little bit more space. Yeah, that's wild. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense that TI's site would have them still in stock. Apparently years and years ago when like PTHs were the only option, you could just like request a sample from like TI's website and they'd send you like 10 of them for free. And then they literally shut down that program because portabilizers were just like taking 10 at a time every time. So uh, now you have to actually pay for them, which is lame, but oh well. Oh, uh, hang on, I think I missed someone's question. Um, I'm not an expert on like how you make an emulator for a controller. That's not something I have a lot of experience with. But uh, yeah, like MP3 said, if you're looking for something like that that already exists, there's the GC Plus, which I'll be using in this build. And that pretty much does it all for you. Uh, if you want to look into designing your own, then yeah, you'll need some sort of like logic analyzer. Um, I think there's some good documentation online because the GameCube controller is still really popular because of like competitive Smash Bros and people just liking the controller. So it's probably not a bad thing to start with since it's already uh, got some good documentation. So you won't be going in super blind. All right. Might even have to ruin the surprise and ask them about theming. I don't know. I really like theming stuff on my own. 
I think that's partially because most people didn't ask for theming. So just kind of got to come up with it. But yeah, there's all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, if you've got access to a 3D printer, then the ability to like uh, 3D print a first layer that's a certain pattern is really nice. Uh, and you can just, you can get pretty crazy with that. That's how I did the case for this project. And the Majora's Mask one I did a few months back. After having saved a Wii from the local dump, can there be adverse effects from not trimming down enough? Um, as long as you trim fairly close to like the standard like trim lines, not necessarily these. Um, but generally it's not a big deal. If you try to leave in like a lot of space, like over here, you can sometimes leave on like parts of the voltage regulators and uh, the Wii will get really confused if it's trying to like take voltage signals from two spots at a time or if it's got that leftover stuff. But uh, as long as you cut like along this line-ish, uh, it's not a big deal. The Wii trim lines aren't super exact in where you have to cut. They're mostly just uh, a recommendation that you should follow pretty closely unless you really know what you're doing. Or else you can do something like what I did where I cut off too much in the NAND lines. Which uh, is a bit of a pain. Uh, what should a portable newbie like me know before starting? Um, I would say know that building a portable is going to be expensive. Um, like the tools and stuff are going to be probably a couple hundred bucks unless you've already got like a soldering iron and wire and all that stuff. But most of that stuff is a one-time investment where if you buy it, you'll have it forever. Um, and when you go out and buy tools, uh, get good tools. Uh, because if you use like a cheapo soldering iron, uh, it is just a pain. Um, and I've used pretty much every kind of cheap tool you possibly can at some point in my portabilizing career. And I have yet to find a tool that I've gone, yeah, this really wasn't worth the money. I should have bought something cheaper. So yeah, just be ready to spend money on tools. Uh, like MP3 said, make sure to check out uh, all the guides on BitBuilt, read through some work logs. Um, and yeah, just be ready to spend some money because most of the time when someone's project fails, well, maybe not as much anymore, but especially like three or four years ago when people would come through and try to build a portable, usually it's people trying to do it for as cheap as possible, which I understand. I first got into portables when I was in high school and I had just gotten a job, but cheap portables aren't really a thing. You gotta spend a bit of money, but it's all worth it. What's a voltage regulator? That is a good question. So when you plug something into a wall, like this is the, and you get like the plug out of it. So like this is the plug for a Wii. So this plug is 12 volts. It goes straight into the Wii's power socket. And then the Wii then takes that 12 volts and it runs that 12 volts through some, through some chips that take that voltage and turn it into other voltages. So it'll lower it to five volts for some things 3.3 volts for some things, one volt for some things. And then those voltages are used for different things on the Wii. Uh, and so pretty much every computer has voltage regulators in it to turn like the main voltage into smaller voltages or sometimes higher voltages. Um, but yeah, so when you build a portable Wii, you need some sort of custom regulators because we cut the Wii's old regulators off. And so the easiest way to do that is by buying a PMS, PMS Lite uh, which I don't want to handle it right now because my fingers are super dusty. But it's a board that handles all the battery charging stuff, all the voltage regulators, um, and it just takes care of all that for you so that you don't have to worry about it too much. But yeah. Remember to post your dead trims in my graveyard thread? Uh, none of them are like spicy dead trims though. Except for, I wonder if I still have it. There's a Wii I've got where I cut through like part of the, I don't remember if that one's the CPU or the GPU, part of the big chip because I just wanted to harvest the AVE out of it. That's all I wanted. But uh, it looks it looks really gnarly. And so it's a funny looking trim, but I might've just thrown it out. The picture is probably still somewhere though. But yeah, most of my trims are just boring ones. <laughs> Lots of voltage. Hey, you know, uh, you know it's, it's like amps, vehicles IR. I don't know, it's the amount of power that goes to something, I think. I don't know, I dropped out of electrical engineering. I'm a marketer now. 
Okay. Um, we're getting close on sanding. I didn't... The issue is that this uh, cutting wheel is getting a little bit worn out. So... It doesn't do as good of a job of, like, sanding uh, afterwards as I would have liked. So I'll have to do more of it by hand. But that's all right. What's a Wii? Uh, it's like a GameCube, but uh, it plays Wii games. Which includes uh, bangers like Chicken Shoot, uh, Farm Shoot. Um, yeah, lots of shooters. The Wii is a very uh, mature console. Buff GameCube. I guess it is just the GameCube with a few buffs. Oh, oh, there's there's got to be a 330 ohm resistor on a Wii somewhere. That's a pretty common one. You know about uh, Shank's uh, Wii Super Thread, right? Because if you know, if if you can look through that, then yeah, it's it's that is one of my favorite threads on Bitbuilt. Because sometimes I just need like a random resistor. I think it was I don't remember if it was Shank or Jackson S that went through all that and found all those. But it is it's a pretty exhaustive list, so definitely worth checking out. Oh, Chicken Blaster, the sequel to Chicken Shoot. Well, Chicken Blaster wasn't nearly as good. Critics all agree. I agree. So we're just not going to talk about it. <laughs> Chicken Riot? Is that a real one? <sighs> well, thankfully this is hopefully going to be the most boring part of the stream. So if you can make it through this, then we'll get into the actual fun stuff of putting it together and testing and making sure this thing actually works. If it doesn't, that'll be frustrating, but I do have working weed trims set off to the side, so if we need to bail out and use one of those, we can. It was Jackson S. That makes sense. He did a lot of stuff early on. Remember that he hasn't built a portable in a while. I'm sure he could do some, some crazy stuff nowadays, considering what he was doing in 2017. Sanding ASMR is the best. Ooh, maybe... Oh, I should just start like a like an ASMR channel, Ginger of ASMR, where it's just me like modding and whispering into the mic. That would uh, that's a market I could tap into. Yeah, I think he's going to MIT or something. He's probably doing bigger and better stuff than we portables. If such a thing exists, I'm not convinced. <laughs> it could rub people the wrong way. Crash bashes hack of 951 beeps. I wonder, I don't even know. I mean, I guess a Dremel sounds kind of nice when it's on low speed. Maybe not, I don't know. It's at least less obnoxious than when it's at high speed. Okay, we're getting there. Okay. I do not cut very smoothly. You can just have to not get caught. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, I'm doing me. Thanks for the sub. Much appreciated. Oh, MP3, did your, uh, did your Prusa ever come in? I remember you said you ordered one. I don't remember if you ever, like, posted pics of it set up or not. <laughs> one step closer to Bezos. I will buy him. Someday. It's getting here this week? Nice. Are they like super backed up right now? Cause remember when I ordered mine, they were only, I think it was only like a week and a half wait time before it shipped. But I guess it's only been like a, no, it's been at least a couple weeks since I last streamed. Ah, uh, yeah. I hate the chip shortage, man. I, I might be able to build one more Wee Boy color. 
And then at that point, that's it until the ship shortage uh, eases up, which is a bit of a bummer. <laughs> I'll be buying his corpse. I don't know. He's probably gonna get probably gonna build like a pyramid, be buried like a pharaoh. And at that point, I don't know. I might as well be better off buying the next world's billionaire. Still an accomplishment. Yes, so. Uh, they should just make more chips. You know what? You're right. Oh, uh, I need to update the site. That that orange wee boy color sold like four months ago. I just need to. Uh, I need to take care of that. I'm I'm not good at maintaining the site. I don't think I've even posted about the uh, the GameCube portable I made. But yeah, I'll update that site once uh, this portable is available for sale. Uh, I'm using 220 grit right now. Um, you could start, I think I might, maybe I should have started lower on this one. Uh, that probably would have sped up the process a little bit. Um, if your Wii is cut kind of rough, then you might want to start with 120 and then move to 220. Um, oh yeah, I don't think I ever updated the PS2 Eclipse video. I'll do that as well when I log into that site again. Um, yeah, I mean, by the time the chip shortage is no longer an issue, we'll probably be able to fit a Wii portable inside of an Altoids mini tin, so we'll see. Um, 3D files and stuff aren't public for the GameCube portable. Um, it's got some flaws, like in the case and stuff, that I just don't feel like fixing. Um, I don't really plan to ever build another one. I was surprised. I had a couple people who reached out and were like, I want to buy one. And I was like, well, it's not a good portable to buy. I promise you don't want it. And they were like, no, I want it. I don't care if it breaks. I just want it to sit on a shelf. Which, I don't know, that seems like an expensive shelf piece. But I might build one more and try and stream it. But they're kind of a pain to build. Um, and it's not a good portable at the end of the day. It's a fun concept, but... Yeah, uh, the files will be public for the Louie um, once I'm done with it. I have an old version of the files up on the BitBuilt forums right now, uh, but it's not compatible with a, with the uh, the boards that people actually use today. So I've updated the files, and so hopefully in this stream I'll verify that all those files are good to go. And then as soon as I'm sure of that, I'll upload those, and then anyone who wants to build one can build one themselves. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I did offer that. I was like, well, I could just print out a case for you and glue it together, but apparently if they want it to be able to turn on. But yeah, parts of that case are like super glued together in weird ways. And it would, at this point, if something in it broke, I don't think I would be able to fix it without like getting a whole new case. Uh, Cause some of the screw posts in it are pretty worn down and parts of it are already a little bit wiggly, so. Yeah, not a good portable. I don't play my portables anyway, so what's the difference? Hey, see, it's a good shelf piece for me. But uh, I don't know if someone wants to spend as much money on I did, as I did on that thing. Okay, so I think we're done with the 220 grit stuff. So now I'm using 400 grit, um, which should make the board a little bit more smooth. Um, parts of it are a bit rough, but we might just fire it up and see if it works anyways. All right, Simone, thanks for stopping by. Have a good night. You're right, I guess I could just put a single board computer in there. Haven't really done anything with uh, with that sort of thing though. Although I'd have to imagine making a boot video run would be pretty easy. Um, I think I actually have a Raspberry Pi in a box somewhere that like I was gonna use for a portable like years and years ago. Not a portable Wii, but just like a portable NES, SNES thing. And then I just never did. But I could use that for something. <laughs> oh, if you think those, yeah, that uh, that was the common theme among the, among the news articles. It was also really weird. Like most of them like got the wrong year. Like they didn't say 2005. Like I swear I said 2005 in the video at least two or three times. And then sometimes they'd be like, Oh, it's a 2009 concept, a 2006 concept. 
And yeah, I don't know how closely they watched the video. There was some other weird, like, misinformation in the articles, but yeah, whatever. And yes, there are a lot of comments asking for a disk drive. Also, a lot of comments, like, I thought the Wii phone was just like this weird thing that no one actually liked. Like, uh, like when I, whenever I see the Wii phone, I'm like, man, that is such a dumb idea. But I had people who were like, can you please make the Wii phone? I love the Wii phone. Please make the Wii phone. And so I might do the Wii phone at some point. We'll see. Not for a, not for a near future project, maybe in like a year. Yeah, that was, that was one of the funny ones. I do love GCP guy 22, which I, uh, I just made up, but, uh, they assumed it was the right one. Although it was really weird. One company actually did like track down his Instagram and make it public, which I didn't really like because he specifically requested that it not be public. So I don't really know why they did that, but yeah, it is apparently none of them bothered to like plug GCP guy 22 into Instagram because, uh, I don't think that's a real account, but who knows? Louis 2600? Going to turn my Intel i3 computer stick into a mini all-in-one? That sounds interesting. It'd be... I was like considering doing like a handheld PC build at some point, but then the Steam Deck came out and I just feel like the Steam Deck is pretty much all I want. Aside from the fact that it's just a massive time to go make it free followers. Yeah, that's kind of the point. The only, the only problem is I'd have to use like a tiny screen, like Shanks kill me. And that sounds like a bit of a headache. Um, and then the thickness, I feel like people are going to get mad if it's thicker than a real phone. But I think if I made it as thick as a, uh, a Wii remote, then I could justify it being that thick. Oh, this is, this is the thickness of the Wii remote. You want to, couldn't possibly expect me to make it any thinner than a Wii remote. And uh, that might be doable. We'll see. But, yep. Yeah, that's something for something for the future. Um, I always forget, like, which parts I've sanded. PS2 phone win, Xbox phone win. We'll see, the Wii can be trimmed. Hang on, let me grab... Uh, my fingers are still dusty. I'll show off the maximum Wii trim here in a sec. But the maximum Wii trim is actually Wii phone sized. Like, you basically cut here, and you cut here, and that's Wii, that's like, all of that is left. And you can make a Wii trim work off of just that. But PS2, there aren't any, like, super tiny, uh... There aren't any like super tiny trims. The trim kind of has to be a little bit bigger than this just because of the way the chips are spaced out. And I don't really know if there's a solution to that, but maybe someday. Is there actually an account called GCP guy 22? Somebody, somebody tried to make a, uh, like they responded to my YouTube video with the uh, YouTube handle Draken4299, who was the guy who was like, this thing is real. Someone made it real. But uh, I know it's a fake account and it's not the real Draken4299 because they made their profile picture the Mario picture that I used in the video. But that Mario picture is just the default picture of that website. That's not like a stylistic choice that Draken used. And like all the, all the profile pictures in that video I just made up except for the Mario one. So it was a good attempt, but uh, not the real Draken4299, unfortunately. I did a little bit of research to see if I could, like, find him. But I found, like, an old deviant art of his from, like, ten years ago. And it seems like he no longer exists. At least under that handle. But uh, I do hope he sees the video someday. What do people want out of the Wii phone? <laughs> yeah, I don't... That's what I don't get. People are just like, oh, I love the Wii phone. Make the Wii phone next. And like at first when I saw a couple people do it, I thought it was just a joke. Like, oh yeah, the Wii phone, that's funny. But I've gotten like emails about pe from people being like, yo, can you please make the Wii phone? I have always wanted the Wii phone. And so, I don't know. Maybe we'll make the Wii phone. But yeah, it's, it's such a weird mock-up. Because it's just got like two classic controllers buttons. It's got the D-pad from a Wii remote. It's got
got a numpad and then no other buttons. And then it's showing like, <laughs> it's showing Super Mario World instead of a Wii game. But, oh, that account was made before January 30th. So that account already exists, huh? I guess I should have ran a quick check to make sure, uh, to make sure it didn't already exist. Uh, I guess I'll do that for the future. All right, I think that's it for 400 grit. Um, so 800 grit is usually where I'll stop uh, with sanding because at that point it's smooth enough. Um, but some people like to go up to like a thousand or two thousand, so you can do that. I was thinking about making my own portable Wii, but I don't really know where to start. Um, so the best place to start is the BitBuilt forums. Um, it's a website uh, like just dedicated to portable projects, whether it's a Wii, N64, PS2, Dreamcast. Um, it's just kind of the common hub for all the guides and parts and work logs from people who have already built those before. Um, so I'd recommend starting there if you want to build a portable Wii. Um, it is kind of tricky to get into. Um, that's partially why I'm trying to do these live streams because a lot of people have an easier time learning just off of like a video uh, rather than trying to find stuff on a forum. So I'm hopeful that over time I can build up like a bunch of Wii portable work logs and show off how to actually trim a Wii like I did today um, and get into some more specifics. But yep, that's the link. It's not active, so don't worry. Okay, that's good. I don't think very many people would try to go to that Instagram page, but... Um... Oh, and then another resource for portable Wii's, uh, Four Layer Tech. Um, they're a company run by a bunch of modders, uh, G-Man, Aurelio, and Shank. Um, and they make like high quality boards uh, specifically meant for portables. Uh, so like voltage regulator boards, audio amp boards, controller boards. Um, I use their stuff in all my builds. It's uh, they're a very good resource. Apparently, T-Mobile gave away free Wii's if you bought a phone back in 2008. Really? That seems. Was it if you bought like an iPhone? Because I feel like a Wii would cost like almost as much as a phone. Or was the Wii only 200 bucks? Do a Twitter post asking people what they want out of a Wii phone. I don't know. I feel like it's pretty much uh, they just want the Wii phone. But maybe there's something specific. I don't know. I think it'd be fun to put like a nunchuck port in the bottom of it. So you can connect a nunchuck to it. But uh, we'll see. Um. Okay. I think we're going to call that sanded enough. Let's... Get all the cocaine off of my desk so that the feds don't get onto me. Oh, wait, I should. Uh, we'll sand down MX later. I'm tired of sanding right now, but we will need to do that. Huh, a high end Blackberry. My dad had a Blackberry back when I was like five or six. Remember, it had like this like puzzle, it would like connect orbs together. They'd like fall on top of each other and you'd have to match them all together. And I always wanted his phone so that I could play on that. Cause that was the, uh, that was the height of portable gaming in 2007. Okay. Should be all the dust. Uh, I'm going to go wash my hands real quick. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, I hope the music is still going. I haven't had my headphones on all this time. Okay. Nunchuck with a microphone in it. The speaker is in the moat. 
I guess, but how many Wii games even use the microphone? I think it was like two? get all the dust. <laughs> Drawing a mock-up so you can post originality. Someone actually did. I was looking into the Wii Phone more last night, and someone actually did like a more uh, thorough mock-up of my, what it might look like from another angle. It just kind of looks like a thick Wii remote, almost like a phone, like a home phone that you'd like put on like a receiver thing. But... The feds are coming for me. It wasn't me. I did not distribute co cocaine on this desk. It was just wee dust. Okay. Well, now I can get high off the fumes of isopropyl alcohol. All right. Oh, it's been a long time since I've seen like a modern phone with like a, an actual physical keyboard, but I guess it makes sense that they exist. Okay. We dust is valuable, nothing to be stiffed at. I probably should wear some sort of like respirator or something when I trim wheeze. It's not as big of a deal when I've got the shop back, like sucking up the dust immediately, but it is not healthy for your lungs. Okay. Um, where's my... Got a little bottle of isopropyl alcohol that I use for uh, dirtier stuff. Okay. A bit. Uh, I don't know if I've heard that story, but if anybody would get sick from trimming too many wheeze inside, that does sound like a shank thing. Yeah, that does sound like a fun keyboard. I've never had a phone with a physical keyboard. I'm, <laughs> I grew up with uh, smartphones, so it doesn't hold a whole ton of appeal for me, but I could see how it might be nice. All right. So we're gonna let the Wii dry for a minute and we're gonna bring in Let's see, where's the PMS light? Um, let's see. Here's the USB C board. These are all PMS 2s. Oh. Here we are. All right. So, oh, I need to wipe down this thing too. So this is the board we're gonna use as our voltage regulators and battery management stuff. Uh, I'll talk about more later once we get soldering to it. Uh, I still need to clean up this mat. It's got bits of wee inductor all over it. Oh, okay. That's, I forgot you were the guy who sanded or no, you literally just trimmed your N64 with a belt sander, didn't you? That just sounds awful. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you thought that was the move. Correct. Oh, dear. I mean, I guess it's safer in, in terms of for your fingers compared to using a Dremel. But, uh, ugh. Can't even imagine inhaling all that dust. Okay. So, in order to get this set up for testing a Wii, um, we're gonna need to connect batteries to it. We're gonna need to connect a power button. We're gonna need to connect the voltages to the Wii. And we're gonna need to connect the U10 trace. So, oh, something I should point out. 
So on this Wii, uh, you'll notice that all the vias up here that we'd usually solder to are already exposed, like they're gold and shiny. Sometimes they're covered up in like dark green. And if that happens, and if you've got one of those Wiis, uh, then you just need to take like an X-Acto knife and like scrape off the coating. And then you'll get these nice gold circles. But uh, this is a nice Wii. It already has it all exposed, so it's really easy to use. <laughs> I guess it is multi-purpose. Unfortunately, I don't have a belt sander, so I've got to stick to the old-fashioned way. Although I'm not sure if your method is dumber or smarter than that time Boku D cut up a Wii with scissors. Although supposedly that trim actually worked in the end, so... <laughs> maybe, maybe your way is dumber. Alright, I've got these battery holders. I don't know where these came from. Um, I bought, like, someone had a bunch of old portabilizing parts, and this was in it. And uh, this seems really convenient, so we're going to use this. Um, let's fire up the soldering iron. Uh, I'm going to go wet my sponge real quick. Be back in a second. Spoken like someone who cooks and cleans with a sander. I mean, you can like cook a chicken by slapping it a lot, right? Maybe you could do the same by sanding it a lot. Hmm, I think the playlist might have hit Earthbound World. I think it's done like eight Earthbound songs in a row. Is it on shuffle or is it on normal play? Oh, it jumped off of the playlist onto a Mother Earthbound series music compilation. Well, that'll do it. Here, go back to the shuffle. Earthbound's great, but I don't want to listen to Earthbound for six hours. Okay. That music is fixed. Um... Let's see, I've got like a th thick pair of tweezers somewhere. Here they are. And this one's battery plus. It's battery minus. Oh, yeah, I'll check and see if it's looping. Because I think the last song on the playlist might be a mother song, which might be why it jumped to that. Oh, really? The Wii doesn't have a single 330-ohm one? I'm surprised. But, that's unlucky. Um, oh, uh, one thing we should do really quick. Um, so once you've got your Wii all cut up and sanded, and you think it's good, um, you want to grab your multimeter. Oh, hang on, my face is in the way. Let me... I'll disappear for a second. You have to go to chat, sorry. All right, so I've got my multimeter and you want to set it to, uh, if there's a continuity mode, that'll work. And then you'll put one of the probes on ground and touch the other to a voltage point. So like this right here is 3.3 volts. And so I'll touch that. I know from experience that that number in continuity mode means that 3.3 volts is good. But for the sake of showing off, 3.3 volts is, Around 10,000-ish? Or I don't know, it's going up. As long as it's not shorted, it's probably fine. Um, so then 1.15, that's about normal there. Oh, Life Customs, thanks for the sub. I think I might have missed that, sorry about that. Might have been when I was up. Um, so I'm getting continuity there, but 1.15 volts to ground is pretty close. So I can see that it's about 32 ohms, uh, which is legit. So we're just gonna leave that. And then I'll check 1.8 volts real quick, just as a 
precursor. And that's also around 30 volts or 30 ohms, sorry, which is normal. So that means that our trim is sanded probably good enough. Uh, there could still be like an issue somewhere on something that's not voltage, but that's just kind of a good like quick 30 second check to make sure your Wii isn't totally busted. How many songs are in this playlist? Uh, I think around a hundred. I had way more and then it got nuked. So we're missing pretty much, all, well, not all the Nintendo stuff, but quite a bit of it. Um, okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the wire for U10. Ugh, my camera is mounted too high. Okay, I'm gonna try to fix it real quick. Hang on, it's gonna look a little weird for a second. Um, we'll go that. Um, okay, that gets us a little bit closer. I, oh, now it's, man, I need to get a better, a better mount. This one works, but it is a pain to get it uh, configured in any... Oh wait, we can... Right. Crotch cam is great, but we're not that kind of live stream. Perfect. If someone somehow got the free portable reward legitimately, would you actually give them a free portable? Uh, yes, I would. And then the price of that reward would double, but... If for some reason I... <laughs> I stream long enough for someone to get that, because I think MP3 ran the numbers, and I'd have to stream for... I don't remember how many years it was that someone would have to watch. It was a long time. I think if you run, like, gambles and stuff in the chat, you could build up, like, more points faster. But... Okay. Sorry for camera adjusting time, but that's a little bit more zoomed in. At least you can see what's going on. So, what I'm doing right now... Oh, four and a half years if that person was a tier three sub? Oh, dang. Hey, well, look, guys, if you want to farm that portable, better give me $25 every month. <laughs> Actually, four and a half years at $25 a month. That's 12 times 25. I think that would be about the same cost as actually just buying a portable from me straight. <laughs> but hey, it's an option. It's different if one person absorbs a lot of the pool through predictions. Yeah. You definitely have to be a good gambler. But. Um, okay. So what we're doing right now is we're performing a relocation that uh, replaces U10. So the U10 chip on the Wii is uh, this weird chip that like has to be in place for the Wii to boot. But all it does is it sends like a, a quick 3.3 volt signal to the CPU or the GPU. Probably the GPU since it's up here. Um, and so you can replace that with something else. Uh, so like this... Uh, this uh, four layer tech board PMS light, it does that automatically. So if you just wire this spot to the U10 thing on here, it'll just work. So that's really convenient. Uh, I'm like 90% sure that's the U10 via. Hopefully I'm not wrong. So we're just gonna solder that in place. <laughs> Whenever someone does a prediction, I just vote for whatever has the highest return. Hey, that's the... That's the that's the uh, that's the right play right there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, what do I predict? Does the Wii trim work? I guess I could do that. Have you guys gamble on whether or not I've done this properly? Maybe MP3 has been watching and sees something I did wrong. But he's just not going to tell me, so he can win his points. Uh, I don't. I think Twitch has like channel points now. I think Stream Elements has some sort of like point system, but I don't have that enabled. I don't think. Okay, now voltage wires. Um, maximum risk for maximum reward. Yeah, it's as easy as that. But it's how you're supposed to gamble in real life too. Oh wait, I just life customs. I recognize that username. You do uh, GameCube controllers. I don't know if you're still in the chat, but I've seen your stuff. Your dyed stuff is really cool. 
Yeah, if you, as long as you've got some sort of soldering experience or are willing to w learn, you can definitely pull it off. It's uh, building a portable, we about a decade ago, or even like any sort of portable was extremely difficult. But uh, nowadays it's not nearly as hard. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen like dyed shells from you before. Um, those look really cool, especially the rainbow ones. Um, okay. So we're going to do a ground wire real quick. Because that's kind of important. Okay, good. I'm glad I've got the right person. I'm not just <laughs> accusing someone of making GameCube controllers. It's a heavy accusation to throw around. I would love to get good at like painting and dyeing stuff. Because that's a skill that I haven't developed. My paint job skills are basically, I apply too thick of a coat, I get mad, I don't feel like sanding it off, and I just give up. And it looks, it looks okay on camera, usually, but in person it's a little bit more rough. But... I would love to be able to paint well. Yeah, I guess it's kind of the same way with portables, or sometimes I'll mess something up and it's like, if it's one of my portables, it's like, ah, it'll be okay. But if it's like a portable I'm selling, then I, I have to fix it. I can't just, I can't just be like, ah, they won't notice that the A button doesn't work. Yeah, I don't even feel like I'm impatient. I just feel like it's like, oh, well, the entire console isn't, isn't painted black yet, so I need to put more paint on. And then it messes something up. But yeah. I can sand a 3D print okay. Mostly because you can't really over sand a 3D print. Like, it's just like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm not done sanding yet. I gotta keep going. But with painting, it's a lot more, uh, there's a, there's a thin line. Oh, good old Nutty, thanks for the sub. I guess you're trying to farm points for that free portable. Appreciate it. Yeah, I might reach out at some point. Dying... I haven't ever tried dying before, but that seems... That seems like, uh, like fun. Because I do love translucent cases. Uh, like I ordered... I just ordered a green... Translucent green case from PCB Way. But if I could do the dying in-house myself, I would... I'd be down to give it a shot. <laughs> Taking the badge and then I'm never subbing again. Ah, oh, you horrible human being. I don't know how many people get founders badges. Is there like a cap on that? Well, there is a cap on that. Was it like 50 or 20 or something? Yeah. All right, that's a someday thing. For now, I'll stick to mostly just 3D printing. Because if you can get a 3D printed case that looks pretty good, that's ah, probably fine for most cases. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've ever sanded a 3D print that wasn't for a portable. But I guess we were trying to get a pretty looking yarn bowl then. It makes sense. Oh, oh, that's right. There's a difference between tinting and dyeing. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I feel like most of the silver GameCube controllers I see online are in pretty beat up condition. Is there like a good spot for like third party shells that are good for tinting? Or do you just like have to get a hold of a first party one? Oh, uh, okay. Man, I feel like we're getting pretty close to 10 then. Gotcha. Suppose that makes sense. Um, okay, we got a ground wire. Oh, I forgot to forgot to turn everything back on. Uh, chat box. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Okay, 1.15 volts goes right here. So something like that. So there's some good options for third-party shells that feel pretty much perfect. 
Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm not... As far as controllers go, I'm not, like, a competitive player at all. I just like things that look pretty. I've got a, uh... A spicy frog controller with uh, Psyduck on it, and I really like that one. So I'm much more of a make it look pretty rather than make it feel perfect. But I could see how some people would uh, be able to tell the difference. Yeah, her stuff is crazy. Every time she like posts a drop, I'm like ah, oh, I could get another controller. But I never really need another controller. But maybe someday. Oh, I know the exact one you're talking about, I think. Those are... Those are very pretty looking. I don't have a pro controller shell from her yet, so I might pick one up at some point. Because right now mine is just... I need to open up my pro controller and clean it. Because it's got a nice buildup of gamer grime on it, on it, which is great and all, but uh, if I have a pretty shell on there, I need to take care of my controllers better. Yeah, her quality is crazy. I think I got one of her like B-grade shells because they were cheaper. Uh, but even then, it's like there's like a little bit of like flaking on like one part of the controller on the back. And that's like all that's wrong with it. It's. I understand why she says it's B grade, but for me, that's like, ah, I'm not looking at the back of the controller that much. I don't care. Oh. Yeah, her Pro Con shells look so good. How did. Did you at least get a refund on the Pro Controller you bought? Hopefully, you bought it from like Amazon or something. Um, okay, I'll solder up U10 really quick. Since we've got this wire just hanging out. Ugh, that's a pain. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. I've only ever, like, painted a portable that I sold once because the person who wanted it was willing to pay an insane amount of money for it. Uh, but the paint job was, I, I should have had someone else do it. Because it turned out, it was probably better than like uh, my usual paint jobs, but it wasn't, it certainly wasn't up to your guys' standards. But yeah, since then I have never done a paint job on a commission. You get a 3D printed shell. If you don't like it, you're welcome to hire someone else to paint it, but that's just not my expertise. You're quite certain it was on a truck that drove off a bridge? <laughs> what does that mean? Is there like a, an iconic bridge US USPS crash? Uh, Wingo Veningo, thanks for the sub. Appreciate it. Um. Okay, I need to get all the other voltages in place. Um, let's do one volt. Oh, I've got this baggie full of colorful wires. Yeah. When you do paint jobs, do you use like an airbrush setup? Because I've always just used like cans of spray paint. And I don't know if an airbrush is easier to use, if you get better quality stuff, but it takes a bit to learn. But that's one of those things I'd be I'd be open to giving a shot. Oh, I should not have cut this wire. That was a dumb idea. I need a long one for 3.3 volts. Uh, I don't think I called your name Crash Bash, but uh... I mean, while you're here, I don't have anything for you to do. Sorry. Yeah, I'd be open to trying to get an airbrush. I got this weird, like, cheapo one to try and apply. Oh, actually, hang on. Let me see if I can... One sec. Is it still over here? Here it is. So there was this coating I found online that was supposed to, like... You would like use an airbrush and then you'd apply like this like weird rainbow effect to like your parts and it looks super cool but I tried to use it and it just kind of like made the case all cracked and weird but I don't know maybe with a real airbrush I'd be able to get the right effect yeah yeah liquid crystal that's what it was 
I still have some of it. I tried using it in buttons. I think there's some sort of technique you gotta use for it. Cause I got, I got ugly results out of it. It did not turn out pretty like I've seen other people's stuff. But, oh, you were the first one to do a GC, a, a controller with it. Okay, that might've been where I first saw it then. Cause I remember seeing it on shells. And then I know some people have done it on buttons. Um, but I tried to do it on buttons and evidently it's a little, it's a little finicky. Took me a month of attempts to get it to come out good. Oh, all right. Well, then I feel less bad about uh, not getting it to work on my 3D print. But yeah, that stuff looks crazy good. Oh, okay. I know color and controls work. So, okay. Well, that's good to know. I also want to move somewhere where I can set up. I don't know if you have like an indoor painting booth at all, but I live in Utah and it's cold and snowy most months out of the year and so it's painting stuff is a pain so i'd like to have just like some sort of booth that i can hook up to like a ventilator or something um so that i can paint stuff year round rather than during the three months where the weather is good enough for it oh same nice then you know my pain yeah i think when i tried to like make buttons out of it i just kind of got this weird like greenish this greenish orange I don't even know how to describe the color it was not pretty I think I bought someone else's buttons that they use liquid crystal on but the buttons weren't they weren't great quality they had a lot of air bubbles and they were like varying thicknesses like I'm not super picky but it was bad enough that I could tell the difference so I haven't put them in any of my controller but I still got them um, okay, we'll use white wire for one volt. Yeah, they were definitely single part molds and not pressure cast. I don't have a pressure uh, box either, um, but I can usually get relatively bubble free clear buttons. There are a few tiny ones, but these had some significant ones in them. I was a bit bummed, but. I do want to get a hold of a pressure pot too, because that just seems that just seems like a game changer. But uh, alas, I only have so much space in my in my room. But uh, I will be moving. I'll be moving somewhere else in a few months because my landlord wants to raise my rent by fifty percent, which is. Uh, Psychotic, so uh, I'm looking for new places and I'd like to just get my own apartment because then I can have a couple different rooms and uh, That'll be nice All right, is this the last voltage? Oh No, I need to wire up 1.8 volts Yeah, TS light buttons are, they're pretty easy. You have to do two part molds on them, but uh, overall they're not that bad. I think I started with like uh, switch buttons, since you can do those with one part molds, unless you're going for like something super, uh, super tight, but yeah, DS light buttons are nice. Okay, and then 1.8 volts, I'm going to wire up with 30 gauge, which I think think should work fine. Um, I think the PMS only needs like a little bit of 1.8 volts. Um, where's the easiest spot? Right here. Oh, that's right. I think I remember seeing your uh, your casting attempts. Were you using like some sort of weird resin? Because I use, I think I use Epoxy Cast 690. And I really like that stuff. That stuff, it's pretty bubble free even without a pressure pot. And it's super clear too. Although I think there are better resins than even that. But 
That's what I've been using for the last couple of years or so. Um, where is 1.8 volts? Alright, I think at this point we're almost ready to test the Wii. Um, all I've got left is to wire up the button oh, oops. to wire up the button to this board to turn it on and off. And then I need to wire up a, uh, a video connector. So we'll do that real quick. Oh, where is it? Oh, here it is. So I've got just like a, uh, a Wii composite. Oh, no. My wire finally broke. I've been using this this like wire on here for probably like three years. But one of them finally snapped. We're gonna have to replace it. Okay. Oh, that's right. Forgot you're in Poland. That will make it difficult. 690 is the best water clear for non-pressure pots by far. Okay, that's good to know. figured as much because I used to use I've still got it sitting on the shelf art and glow resin but it was it like moves like sludge it is really difficult to work with and it's like oh no is that a is that a classic mistake uh but yeah it would be all sludge like and then when it was mixed together it'd be like a yellowish clear it was not a pretty clear art resins are terrible yep that makes sense Oh, yeah, Piotrf, you're probably using, if your internet's still up, you're probably using art-based resin, too. Which, yeah, from my experience, it is not great. It is kind of usable if you have very low expectations, but now that I've used 690, I don't think I could ever go back. Oh, yeah, PS2 cable worked great, too. Let's see, I'll use two different colors of the wire this time. Because I always, I always get a little bit confused as to which one is composite and which one is ground. Because they're both just red wires. Oh, interesting. I don't know if the plastic deformation point was ever an issue for me. Like, I don't know if I ever experienced that. But I'd imagine if you put them in a controller and then use that controller for years, that would probably be an issue. But, yeah, my resin setup is actually just back there. I don't know if you can see all the molds and such, but that's my mixing corner. I'll, like, cast a bunch of buttons for, like, two weeks in a year, and then I'll get kind of tired of it, and I'll stop. But it can be fun. I tried putting, like, a bunch of different, like, candy in buttons a few months ago, and I got some pretty good results. So I want to do like a candy shop themed Wii Portable at some point. Actually, I printed out a case for it. Got this like pink and white case that I think would look pretty good for it, but I recognize those smooth on yellow blue caps from a mile away. Yep. I think I've got two bottles of it right now. I've got some really old stuff that doesn't, uh, it doesn't harden as quickly. So I bought some new stuff. I should probably just throw out the old stuff, but I'm hanging on to it for now at least. Okay. Now I have a fresh AV cable. I'm glad you like the idea. Trins. I don't know. Trinsia ac ac arachnophobia. Is that your name? That's a mouthful right there. But. Yeah, coming up with uh, with fun button combinations is one of my favorite parts about building portables. Uh, this song is, I think, Undertale? Death by Glamour? Yes. That's what it's from. Uh, moisture contamination? That would make sense. Technically good, but it will cure more cloudy and take longer. Okay, 
So if I'm using it for like solid colored stuff, it probably shouldn't be a big deal. That's good to know. Okay, now that my AV port is usable again. You want to get into building a Wii Portable? Uh, yeah, if you want to do that, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but uh, definitely check out the BitBuilt forums and check out, uh, once you understand how to build a portable uh, and like what all the parts and stuff are involved, then uh, check out the four layer tech store because uh, they've got boards and such that are uh, pretty much essential if you want to build a portable right now. Unless you've got like a lot of technical background and are good at designing like custom circuit boards. Um, which of these? I think this one is composite. Oh wait, I think if I didn't cut out the V. Uh, uh, no, that looks a little sketchy. Hang on, I'm gonna pull up the, uh, the Wii video spreadsheet real quick. You have soldering skills, but not much else. Honestly, if you've got soldering skills, that's like what most people have an issue with. Because the soldering stuff is, uh, it's difficult to learn, especially when you're doing like fine stuff on a Wii. Uh, but if you've done it before and you're pretty good at it, then uh, you can probably build a portable Wii without too much issue. Um, but yeah, there are good guides. I'm hopeful that this video will help people who want to build a portable Wii. Uh, I'm trying to like walk through absolutely everything. But yeah, okay, let's see. Composite, okay, it is that one. My memory is correct. It's been like three months since I built a Wii portable. So I am a little bit rusty. Hey there, DK. Uh, I'm doing pretty well. Build is going well so far. Although we haven't really done anything yet, aside from like trimming the Wii. So if this Wii trim works, then it'll be going really well. And if this Wii trim doesn't work, then uh, it won't be going very well. So uh, we'll find that out in like 10 minutes. Okay. Got that in place. Should be good. Um, I think I've got a button. All right. I've just got a random tack switch that I'll use as the power button. Oh, yeah, if your scale isn't uh, measuring your resin amounts, then uh, that is a that is a problem. It accidentally like zeroed out my scale before I could remember what the, the amount I'd poured was. And <laughs> that was a bit of a pain to figure out what it was. I just had to like pour it into a new cup or something because I was out of like the specific cup that I'd poured it into. run through a checklist. We've got all of our voltages and ground going between the Wii and the PMS. We've got our U10 connected. We've got a power button connected. I should be able to just drop in batteries and it should just work. So let's do that. You've gotten a different news article every day for the past week about my fake GameCube portable. It has gotten a lot of uh, news article stuff, which is cool. Most of them get at least a couple of the details wrong, but that's okay. Um, all right, battery. 
battery in place. All right, we're gonna hit the power button and we're gonna see what happens. If that screen turns black, then I'll be happy. Uh-oh. Hang on, let me grab my multimeter. Let's make sure the, uh, the PMS is outputting voltage and stuff. Um, okay, we got 3.3 volts. We've got one volt. We've got 1.15 volts. We've got 1.8 volts. Okay, so the voltages are all good. Hmm. Okay, yeah, the Wii is definitely heating up. Okay, I'm gonna power it off. And then, oh, I'm dumb. The battery voltage is good. I, I just remembered what the problem is. So you remember earlier when uh, I cut a little bit too close up here and I severed a couple of the NAND lines? Uh, I need to fix those, or else the Wii definitely won't boot. Um, it, I think I only knocked off one of them, but uh, all right, let's fix that real quick. Let me just uh, see how many I need to redo. Okay, this one. Am I measuring the wrong one? Surely I didn't lose four of them. Oh, I might have lost four of them. Oh dear. All right, so I chopped off three NAND lines, which I'm gonna fix by soldering wires directly from the NAND to the vias that they're supposed to go to. Uh, it's not too bad, it's just, it's a dumb mistake. I should not have cut as aggressively as I did. Um, I think all of them mentioned that it was a Wii Portable. They at least got that much right. Most of them were pretty nice about it. They were at least nicer about it than the YouTube comments. YouTube comments lit me up for uh, for using a Wii instead of a GameCube, but uh, that's how it goes. But there were also a lot of really nice comments, so it balances out. I just joined the stream to see Ginger's head on camera. What did I break? Uh, I forgot that I, I cut off some of the NAND lines, so I gotta fix those really quick. But not a big deal. I did NAND re relocations back in the day when you didn't have a board to do all the hard work for you. You had to wire up, up all the wires by hand and it was miserable. Very grateful that we now have uh, the wonderful NAND relocation board. Um. Perfect. Oh, that reminds me, I need to set up, now that I'm using stream elements, I think there's like an exclamation mark song command. I probably have to do something to get it set up, but if I set that up, that might be useful. Uh, it's not, it's a kind of tricky fix because I have to solder directly to the NAND, but um, I've soldered to the NAND quite a bit in the past, so I can do it. But if you're just starting out trimming Wii's, it's a, uh, or just starting out soldering, then it's a pain. Yeah, better to be able to fix it than uh, for it to be completely botched, for sure. All right, we're going to put down some flux to help make this easier. Okay, there's one. I need to, I need to figure out how to film without getting my head in the camera. Or I just need like those like dentist glasses where you flip them down and magnify in. Those would be helpful, but uh, 
Yeah, you know what? I guess my hair is part of my brand, so it's a good thing. It's getting a lot of screen time. I might have shorted a couple of them together. Uh, maybe. Might be able to fix that with a bit of tweezers. Those legs look annoying to solder to. Yeah, they are They are tightly pitched. They do have to solder to two of the legs on these guys. But uh, no, it didn't work because I forgot that I severed some of the NAND lines. Uh, so we're fixing that real quick. But uh, then we'll try it again. But I'd much rather have a, uh, an issue that I know what it is rather than a Wii that just mysteriously won't boot. Come on. Ah. All right, well, I got one wire on and then desoldered one of the other wires. A dry gas blanket like extend it from smooth on. Huh, okay, that's good to know. I'll look into that because I don't I don't use resin very quickly. Like I I buy a bottle and it'll probably last me a year. So that would be good to have on hand. That one's on there solidly. One more. Yeah. I've never done like a big cartridge relocation or solder job before. That's one of the things about doing an N64 portal. It just kind of looks like a headache, but. Just so many wires where if even one of them comes loose, it's gonna be a pain to figure that out. Oh, okay, the third one went on nice and easy. Um, okay, let me do some cleanup real quick to make sure they're in there solidly and aren't going to fall off. Right. It's going to be on there solidly. Um, I might put a dab of hot glue down just to help hold them in place. Let me go figure out where that is real quick. toothpaste uh well the Wii already has a lot of cavities like this one this is a big cavity right here and this one so his teeth are helpless i don't know what to do all right um while i wait for that to dry what else can i do i think i have a trigger i need to clean up a little bit so the triggers for the project are 3d printed they're kind of a weird shape to try and resin cast, but I could do that at some point. Um, these traces, yeah, you can just follow them visually. They, they just go straight from here to here. Um, I've also done a lot of work on like the Wii's NAND before, so I'm pretty familiar with where the traces go and stuff. But yeah, for this fix, you could also just look at like another Wii and see where you're supposed to wire to. Thankfully, it's not too bad. Okay. All right, that trigger should be good for later on. Check. I don't need a wire for the fourth one. 
Yeah, I don't know them by heart. Like, I can't tell you exactly which one of these vias goes to exactly which one of these, but... That's what the multimeter's for. One, two, three, four. Okay. Let me actually plug in the hot glue gun. Oh, nice. We haven't even dropped any frames. That makes me happy. Oh, dear. Let's not tear our composite port off. Generally speaking, you don't want to use hot glue on, like, your actual solder joints. When uh, you've got a fix like this, you just want to put it on the wire a little bit further up. So that way, if the joint does still come loose somehow, uh, you can identify that and fix it. Okay. It's long here. And then I'm trying to make these wires about the same length as the actual traces. Because uh, you don't want them to be too much longer or shorter. Or else uh, you'll have impedance issues. Which I don't think the NAND is super particular on. But I'm at least going to try to eyeball it. Time to fill the case up. Oh, that reminds me. I was looking at pictures of the Waluigi the other day. That was a, that was an instance of filled up with hot glue. And you know what? It didn't work out too well in the end for me there. All right, perfect. Yeah, if you can get, I mean, if you can get just like a standard trim working first. Then I'd say you can go for the NAND, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't do a NAND relocation on your first trim, because that's just another layer of something that could go wrong. But hey, if you want to go for it, it's up to you. But it's pain. in these wires. Oh, and I'm using 34 gauge wire um, on pretty much anything that's super like uh, thin like this. It's a good size for that sort of stuff. Uh, okay, so this wire goes good you ever considered rebuilding the waluigi but like good um so i do actually really want to rebuild the original waluigi with like better internals uh because it's the only portable of mine that i don't or the only original portable of mine that i don't still have i've still got the original waker of the wind the original louie the original wee boy color i've got all of those still but I don't have the Waluigi anymore. And so I want to do a video where I like show off, hey, look, this was my first portable Wii. It was really bad. Here's why it didn't work. Here's how you build a portable Wii without these issues. Um, so I'll probably do that one soon. Um, and then I don't know if you've seen the work log for it. I started a work log a long time ago for the Waluigi 2.0. Um, the idea was that it would be kind of like a Wave Rider, uh, Shock Slayer's portable. Um, and I actually modeled uh, a lot of the Wave Bird. And I got it pretty close, on the front half at least. Back half was a bit rough. But uh, I never went back and finished it. But now that Wesk has like his 3D scanner, and he's just doing all of that stuff, um, I could like model it off of, the actu off, off of an actual Wave Bird shell, um, which would probably be a lot easier. So, I will probably do that at some point as well. Though that might be a future project. Yeah, I've got an 888D. I've been using this one for like four years now. It's a really nice soldering iron. Very happy with it. I might upgrade at some point. Just to like experience a better iron. I used a... Uh, 
What's the other Hakko one? Is it a 9112 or 912? Is that what it is? But uh, I used one of those at MGC and I couldn't really tell a difference between it and the 888. But it might just also be one of those things where I only used it for a few hours, so I didn't get to experience its good stuff, but... Nine five one, that's what it is. Mm, okay. I think we've got solid joints down on all of those. Let me just do a quick check with the meter. Alright, see you up here, Treff. Thanks for stopping by. Hope your internet gets better. To scrape at it a little bit. Sometimes flux residues kind of block the good connection. Alright, that one's good. That one's good. That one's good. Okay. So in theory, it should boot now. Or at least I've resolved what I think the issue is for it not booting. So we'll flip it back around. Turn on the monitor again. Plug in video cord. And battery. Where did I put my battery? Hopefully this is my battery. Also, when you're putting in your batteries, every single time, double check that you're putting it in the right way. This way is positive. This way is negative. Uh, because if you do put a battery in the wrong way, uh, you're going to... Uh, actually, the PMSs might have protection against it. But most of the time, you'll just blow up a chip and be very sad. Um, okay, round two. Oh! Hey! I don't know if you could see it. Oh, give me your camera. It's all tangled up. Ah. Well, you can... You can kind of see it. There's some text on the screen. But uh, that's what we want. So, the Wii boots now. Which means that our trim works. Uh, which means that I didn't just waste... How long have I been streaming? Three hours? I don't even know. But, alright. So that is wonderful news. So, at this point, we get to actually start assembling the portable. So, I usually start with the back half of the portable. Uh, because that's the part of the portable that just takes a lot of work. Uh, so I like to do that first. And then the front half is just like a nice... Well, breeze might be a bit of a stretch. But... It's a lot less, a uh, lot less fine soldering. So, oh wait, hang on. I wanna, ah, we'll do it later. I wanna put down a drop of hot glue on the NAND lines so that way they uh, stay a bit more secure. Um, okay. Let me. I'm just gonna throw on a paper towel real quick because a white 3D printed case can pick up stains pretty easily. And this mat isn't super clean, unfortunately. So, alrighty. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the triggers set up. So the Louie uses 3D printed triggers that, I'm missing one of them. Where'd the other trigger go? Hang on.
Oh, yeah, I guess I haven't showed off the portable in a while. But, yeah, we're going for a SNES theme. So, we got the gray and purple here. Oh, there's a spot on my camera, isn't there? Okay, you can only really see it on white background. I'll look into that later. But, yeah, Super Nintendo themed. I've got, like, the red, yellow, green, blue buttons. Uh, but, yeah, should be pretty nice. Yeah, I guess... I don't really know... I know the controllers, I think, were different between SNES and Super Famicom. I don't really know if much else was different. So, it's got elements from both. Hey, you know what? Combine the best of both worlds. So, these are dual tacked buttons. I think to play, the place to buy them right now is Electron Shepard. Uh, they have some, like, Wii-based modding stuff, and they sell the dual tacks. So, these mount just right... There's a two specific holes for them and they just slide right into place. Um, so all I do is I take just a bit of super glue. And when I say just a bit, I mean just a bit, like a teeny, teeny, tiny amount. And, oh, that's, oh, that's like a, hang on. It's got like a super glue burt booger in there. And like drop them onto both of like the little nubs that stick out. And then just slide it into place. And I'll just hold it there for a few seconds. Five gallons of super glue. I remember one time, MGC 2019, I think, when uh we had to like redo like one of the tacks in the GUE like four times because we kept putting too much super glue on it and it wouldn't work. All right, that should be pretty much in place. And then we'll just do the same thing with the other one. I went ahead and preemptively soldered wires to these buttons uh, to save some time because I wanted to start streaming at like 10 a.m. this morning, uh, but I had to redo some parts of the case and had to start later. But you solder three wires on. I'm pretty sure Electron Shepard has a diagram for which pins are which. Okay. That should be all good. Just bend these wires back so they're out of the way. Um, next up is to mount like the actual buttons themselves. So these just kind of slide into place. Oh, whoops. Okay, note to self, let the buttons dry for a little bit longer. Uh, more super glue. Hold up. Why is this Toho music? Uh, I have music from a lot of video games on here. I've never played Toho. But, uh, it, Toho does seem like a Crash Bash sort of game. Oh, I've got super glue on my finger. Don't touch the case. He is a huge weeb. You know what? I did watch Attack on Titan the first two seasons three years ago. And I watched some Hunter Hunter with XQC. And uh, that's my... Uh, that is my anime history right there. I think Attack on Titan actually got like its final season recently. Maybe I'll go back and finish it at some point. But I do not consume much anime. Okay, uh, we're going to let that dry for a bit. Uh, we'll get started on battery stuff. So, probably the worst part about the Louie, and the reason I wouldn't recommend it over something like a G-Boy or a Nishida. Oh, sorry, my throat is starting to die. Um, is because you actually have to solder to the batteries. Um, which is safe-ish. Like, I, in all my years, I've been on BitBuilt for like five years. We used to solder to batteries all the time. And, uh, no one has ever, like, managed to blow up an 18650, as far as I know. Um, soldering to them, it lowers their capacity a little bit. They won't have quite as much charge, but it's usually by a pretty unnoticeable amount, as far as I know. Um, but, yeah, that is one reason. If you aren't great at soldering, 
soldering to batteries is a huge pain. Um, the Ashida and the G-Boy and pretty much all of my portables since uh, the Louie have used battery clips. And it is, it is a much better life to live, I will say. 220 BPM migraine music. I don't think I've got anything uh, that fast paced in this playlist, but uh, <laughs> Crash Bash, didn't you have like two songs in your playlist when you get when you and uh, Crazy Gadget did the G Boy stream? I remember coming back and hearing the same thing over and over again. But uh, so for these batteries, I should explain what I'm doing. Uh, you have to cut off just a little bit of the ground side of the battery. Like the cover here on the top, you just have to cut out like a little bit of it. <laughs> Thanks for adding that as a permitted term, good old nutty. <laughs> Shuffle was just rude to you that day. Happens. I don't know what Don Maku is. Is that like a Toho thing or is that like a different, is that a different game? I am not well versed in that world of, of games. All right. So once you've cut off uh, that little piece there, you want to scuff up the battery just a bit with an X-Acto knife. Uh, it's not nothing too much to it. Just take it, scrape along. You want to get it nice and scratched. It'll help solder stick to it better rather than just like a perfectly smooth face. Bullet hell genre that Toho is part of? Ah, okay, gotcha. And then you want to do the same to the positive side of the battery. Okay, that looks good. Then we'll do the same to this battery real quick. But yeah, it's just kind of a world of jank that you can avoid just by using battery clips which I would alter the Louie to use battery clips, uh, but there isn't space for them. Like these batteries are pressed up right up against the bottom of the case and the triggers, so. Okay, top of the button. All right, so I actually did, I guess I should show this. So before stream, I did solder a pair of the batteries together already. So we only need to do it to one pair, um, but it's pretty much the same process. Let's see, case, bring the case back in. Zoom out a bit. So you need to have the part of the battery that we like cut the tab off for. Those need to be oriented towards the uh, like up towards you uh, because if you solder too low on here uh, then your batteries uh, the battery like wiring point will get stuck against the triggers and they won't be able to go all the way up and down <laughs> cheater this isn't the new game plus category I did think about putting splits on but I ran out of time I didn't get those set up um Whoa, just got back after seeing the board. You could say I'm now shell-shocked. Yep. I don't know if you were here for it, but we did get the trim booting. So we're moving on to assembling the bottom half of the case. All right. And I'm just going to mark with my fingernail where I need to strip. So the way I like to solder the two batteries together is to have one wire that goes across the, uh, the ground side. And so what you could do is you could just strip from like a large section of the wire and then just strip like a couple millimeters off like that. And then you could trim off as much of the uh, coating as you stripped. And then just one more time, you strip off the end and then you've got a nice wire that can be soldered at three points rather than two. Ah. It helps make it so we have to solder to the batteries as little as possible. Wait, is the music gone? Uh, is, can you not hear the music? It's a little bit quiet right now because of the song.
Music is still there. The song is just quiet. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So that's what I'll do on the ground wires. On the power wires, it doesn't work quite as well. You kind of have to do two separate wires for each battery. But. Okay. So now we've got a wire that looks like this. We'll pop our batteries out of the case. Oh, man. It is a very tight fit for the batteries. Like, they are friction fit into place. Which is nice, because it means they won't pop out on accident. But not the best way to do things. Oh, whoops. That cloth is for the case. Okay. So for soldering to batteries, my soldering iron is usually at about 350C. Um, that's actually what I solder everything at. But you just put a bit of solder on the iron, press it to the battery, throw some more on there, and you get a nice joint. Uh, it takes some practice. Um, sometimes it just doesn't work, but usually I can get it to work pretty consistently. But yeah, when you're soldering to batteries, you only want to hold the iron to the battery for a couple of seconds. Uh, you want to damage the battery as little as possible. So just keep that in mind. If the solder isn't sticking, take it off, wait, give it like 20 seconds to cool down, and then go in for it again. Um, now, positive side. So one of these batteries only needs one blob. Uh, the other one needs two because two wires are going to be connected to it. Perfect. All right, that was easy enough. So now we can attach our ground wire, which should be pretty much the right uh, length, because I measured it earlier. Yeah, you can buy, I think they're called tabs on the batteries. Like you can buy them with pre-soldered tabs. And I think those will fit in the Louie. I've never used those batteries before, so I don't know for sure. But uh, yeah, if you can get a hold of those, um, I'd recommend them. This seems... Okay, I'm a little bit worried that this might be too short. myself as much space as I can. Also, probably, I probably should have soldered this wire down here before I soldered to the plus side of the battery at all. Because when they're flat, it's a lot easier to do this, but now they kind of wobble back and forth, which is a bit of a pain. Oh, okay, actually this should be fine. Oh, I didn't realize that was one of your puns. But yeah, no, that's... There are actually batteries you could buy with tabs on them. Um, depending on how the tabs are shaped, they might be too big for the Louie. But I'd say they'd at least be worth a shot. Okay, so now we need a red wire to indicate scary. Because the positive end of the battery wire is the one thing that can actually... Uh, can actually, like, sh kill things. When, uh, well, not people. But like kill boards in a portable so thanks James yeah the shell is I'm pretty happy with how it turned out uh, I'm having a lot of fun with like the uh, 3d printing different colors into the case you get all sorts of cool stuff although I don't think I think Majora's mask is as is as intense of a design as I'll ever try I don't, uh, that was way too many colors. It was a real pain. Okay. All right, so this wire should be about the right length. Um, so this shell will be, I'll post the 3D files on the Bitbuilt forums. Uh, so that way you can print out the case and modify it, build your own portable, do whatever you want with it. Um, 
The case files for this already exist on the forums, but uh, they're pretty old and they're meant for using uh, like different power boards. And so they don't work very well today, but probably upload them there. That's my next steps with my shells. Yeah, it's, it's well worth the effort. I think all my favorite portables are the ones that I've printed designs into. I think the toad one is still my favorite. That one was, uh, that one was a lot of fun. I might also make the PS2 Eclipse files available at some point. Uh, the only issue is that those files rely on the PS2 PMS, which uh, doesn't exist anymore. You can't buy one. Uh, but if it ever comes back in a different size, then I'll modify the case and uh, make it so those files are public. Donkey Kong theme when? I do want to do a Donkey Kong themed portable. I don't know. I don't know what I would do for it. I don't have any like big ideas, but Donkey Kong is fun. My favorite design, uh, it's either, if you're talking about like theming or actual like portable design. Um, as far as theming goes, it's either Majora's Mask or the Toad Portable. I love the buttons on the Toad Portable. Those were, those turned out really well. And uh, I want to do another Toad Portable at some point. Usually I like to do unique stuff, but I might do like a blue Toad Portable. Um, as far as like actual portable though, oh, you meant theme? Okay. Yeah, Majora's Mask was, it turned out really good and it was a lot of work. So I love it in that regard, but Toad is also just, it's Toad. Let's go. Oh, whoops. Okay, so now we're just gonna do one long red wire. Um, oh, another important thing to point out that a lot of people sometimes miss is when you're using like a, a Wii PMS or RVL PMS, I think they're called now, um, make sure that you connect all the positives of your batteries together and all the negatives of your batteries together. Don't try to connect some positive to negatives and so forth, uh, or else you'll make a battery pack that's in series instead of in parallel, and then you'll just kill the, uh, you'll kill your PMS, which uh, you don't want to do because I think those cost like 70 bucks right now. They're pricey. So uh, keep that in mind if you do build a portable. Follow all the diagrams very closely. So I don't know, I don't know how many uh, Wii PMSs have died from people putting in batteries backwards or feeding it too much voltage, but there's a few at least. Oh, that's out. Um All right, so this should be, all right, battery wires look solid. Don't let the positive end of the battery and the negative end of the battery touch. You'll get a spark and a lot of heat. You won't blow anything up, but uh, it will startle you. I've, uh, I've done that a couple times. It's never, it's never an exciting thing when your portable starts flashing colors from a place other than the screen. And the LED, I guess. But all right, so we're gonna set the batteries in. Is this slot to? There we go. Okay. Well, these batteries are in place. Um, we're gonna wait to put these guys in place until these boards are in. Uh, it'll make it a little easier. 
I do want to do DK Bongo themed, a themed project at some point. Uh, I grew up with, uh, with Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, so that game holds a special place in my heart. Oh, okay. Don't put the batteries in before you put the triggers in, because the triggers... I might be able to make this work. Hang on. No. Alright, we're going to take the batteries out one more time. Uh, we'll get the triggers set up now. Trying to get the batteries out without obliterating my wires. Maybe it will fit. Oh, there's one. Come on. There's two. Okay. So to get the triggers to fit, you sometimes have to do... Oh, actually, that seems to be fitting nicely. You sometimes have to do a little bit of, like, uh, scraping or sanding around this hole uh, because, like, the 3D print will leave, like, little bits behind. I'll go ahead and preemptively scrape those out just in case. <laughs> Banana-themed Wii phone. You know what? That is an idea right there. A barrel-style shell? That would be cool. It would probably take, like, a custom paint job, though. Because it would be kind of difficult. Because, like, you'd want the barrel design to go, like, all up and down the shell. But when I 3D print like this, I could pretty much only print directly into the bottom of the case. Uh, printing stuff into the sides doesn't really work. Unless I get, like, an actual, like, multi-extruder printer. Which would be cool, but those are pricey. And I don't think I'd use it enough to justify the price. Whoops. Stabbed myself there. Let's not do that. And it truly is the concept that never dies. Yeah, I do think I could build like a portable out of bongos. Um, let's see, no one's allowed to steal this idea. I was thinking of like projects for like DK bongos. And then I came up with the idea of making a Donkey Kong pinball machine that you like control with actual bongos. And I think that would be a lot of fun. So someday when I've got time to figure out how pinball machines work, I might just build one of those. <laughs> this song is quite fitting. Hey, look, you call his name and he shall come. King of the Kongs. But yeah, I've actually got a pair. Oh, it's not up there anymore. I had a pair of DK bongos just sitting on the shelf. But there's a... Uh... There's a thrift shop for like video games near me and they just have this like top shelf that has like at least 20 sets of DK bongos. They have so many of them, but they're all really dusty and in pretty crummy shape, but someday I'll, I'll grab some of those and do something crazy. I'm thinking the mold style they use to make the bit don't Bongo controllers make resin printed just flattened in an axis? I guess so, yeah. Really? JLC offers full color printing now? How long have they been doing that for? Because I know they were doing like white and something else, but if they're doing full color stuff, I might I might have to get in on that. Because uh, PCB way is great and all, but they are pricey for uh, for cases. Okay, so this should just lock into place. So this little piece is just kind of what holds the trigger into place, but um, the G-Boy will return in some form. Um, I know G-Man, he altered the G-Boy design to fit uh, four layer tech boards. Um, but he just hasn't had time to like refine them and get them uploaded. So someday I think G-Boys will be a thing again. Um, so I would just wait, I don't know how long it'll be, 
It's kind of, it could be next week, could be in six months, could be never, but the Chi Boy will return in some shape. Feel free to use the barrel design. I'll be generous with my royalty contract. Uh, I see we've got a businessman in chat. I do really like the barrel idea, though. I may, I may use that at some point. All right, so the trigger wasn't quite... It fits in properly, but it was scraping against the ed edge of the case. So... Um, hollowing out a bit of the upper part of the case because I think that's where it was snagging. Want to build, want to get a clear shell printed? So clean. Yeah. Did you get, you didn't get a hold of, G-Man ran like a, a uh, what do you call it? A fire sale or something on G-Boy kits a few months back because he just had a bunch of them sitting around. If you got a hold of one of those, then you could definitely do that. But if not, then you might have to wait a bit. Yeah, I gotta beat the competition. Exactly. Oh, gee, this isn't... I need, like, an automatic camera system that, feel, that figures out where I'm working on and points the camera at my hands. That would, uh... So I'm not good at thinking about, hmm, can the camera see this right now? Or am I just doing something off screen that no one can see? That is, that is not a skill of mine yet. <laughs> um, okay, that might be enough. It might be better to print out this part with supports. Um, I just don't because I've never done it. And why start? Why change? That's my mantra. Yeah, I'd imagine you could probably make a script like that or someone has one pretty easily. But it'd be a nice addition. still feels a little weird. Okay, I see where it's rubbing. I need to scrape out a little bit more along here. Yeah, I do love the G-Boy. I got a hold of one of the kits, so I will build it someday, but uh, I'll save it for, uh, for when I really want to do it. I think it would be fun to do like a week where I just build a new portable every day. Like G-Boy, Louie, Ashida, uh, Wee Boy Color, and I just do one a day. And just have a bunch of live streams all in one week. I think that might be fun. But that'd probably be something for the summer when I've actually got time. So I might save the G-Boy kit for that. We'll see. All right, let's see if that's enough. Um. Ah, okay, that feels, that feels better. So let me, let me actually screw this guy down. Make sure it still feels good when it's screwed into place. And then we can move on to the other trigger. Um, as far as screws go, 
So the Louie uses mostly M2 by four screws, which the four just means that they're four millimeters long. Um, and so that's what just about everything is mounted with. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions, like the Wii uses bigger or like longer screws. The actual shell of the case uses longer screws, but pretty much everything else is all M2 by fours. And you can get them on eBay. You can get a pack of like 50 or 100 for pretty cheap. And that's generally the way to go if you're just building a one or two portables. Uh, sites like uh, McMaster Car have a lot more. Okay, that feels pretty good. These, these trigger buttons have uh, less give to them. So you go from half press to full press pretty quickly. Uh, that's probably a good thing for most games though. Uh, because I think I, it's like Mario Sunshine and Melee. I like the only games that use it a ton. Maybe a Metal Gear game too. I feel like I've heard people say that. But I've never played it, so I don't know. Okay. I've got a little bit to scrape off of this one. And then I'll just shave out where it was hanging on the other one real quick. Since chances are it's going to be a similar issue. Um, but once we get the triggers in place, um, I'll put some of the batteries back in and then it'll mostly just be soldering from then on out. Should be less of the scraping and fitting because everything else should fit properly. I actually printed out this entire shell yesterday with the design and stuff and then I found out that some of my screw posts were way too tall and it wouldn't work. So I had to redo it, but it happens. Yeah, GC to Emote is a it is a wonderful tool. I was one of the first people that got to test it back when Aurelia made it, and uh, it was it was pretty buggy back then. But uh, nowadays it is it is so nice. I'm still really hoping that someday we get uh, like actual like motion control like accelerometers that we can like put in portables and then interface through Wii games. I don't know how useful it would actually be or how much I'd actually use it, but it would be a fun gimmick. But I don't think anyone's done it since Jackson S built an actual Wii remote into a portable. And I'm not willing to do that just yet. Yeah, I asked him about it a long time ago and it's one of those things that's on the list, but Aurelio's list is always growing. Oh, that feels really nice. That feels better than the other one. Oh, wait. Okay, this tact... Hmm, it might be gummed up with super glue. It's a lot quieter than the other one. Let's see if you can hear the difference. which might mean that something's in there messing it up, which is bad. Um, so I'm gonna test and make sure it's still working. Uh, let's grab a bit of solder. Press. 
time to scrap it all. Ah, you're right. What's even the point? Okay, so we're gonna test and make sure that the button still activates properly. Which is a bit of a pain. Because I just got these wires free floating. Okay, that one still works. And... Okay, so the button still works. I don't know why it... feels slightly different. I don't mind the feel as much as the difference in noise level. Um, let me try... Hang on, let me screw this guy down real quick so that way we're at least testing with them at the same, like, uh, rigidity or whatever. Is there a Wiimote board trim guide out there? I don't remember seeing that. Okay. That's such a difference in noise. Um, let me grab a trick that sometimes works because if you take like a little bit of paper and put it between the trigger and the button. That can sometimes dampen the sound a bit. So we'll give that a quick shot. Oh, really? Okay, that's good to know. I mean, I guess if anyone would post one, it would be him, but. Okay, that's a little bit more muted. Um, all right, let's put a drop. Does two pieces of paper make it sound better? Let me try two real quick, see if there's a difference. All right, we'll go with that. That sounds close enough. So at least not the difference between like a drum and a cymbal. Super glue. Here we are. Perfect. Okay. So batteries. Now is the right time to actually put them in because they aren't going to be in the way of anything. Great. Um, let's do, let's set up the cooling setup real quick. Um, let's see, I've got a heat sink and a fan around here somewhere. Here we are. All right, so the heat sink and fan that the Louis uses, you can get them online. I'll have links in there, um, for sure. Uh, probably in like an Excel sheet or something, but these are great. Um, you do have to get rid of this thermal pad on the heat sink. For the fan and the heat sink to sit at the same level in the Louis. But if you just scrape at a little corner of it, it should just peel right off. Um, usually when you put IR LEDs on a case like that, you want them at like the one-fourth and the three-fourths point. Uh, like on the screen, I think. 
I think that's the standard where it works the best. Um, but you can also like run some tests and see. I don't think I put IRLEDs in a portable. I think the Waker had them, technically. But uh, they didn't really work. Okay, and then for the fan, there's like this little connector here. You gotta clip that off. And then there's this weird like black like coating around the two wires. And so you just wanna run a knife along it and strip it off. Although you do have to be somewhat careful because sometimes the wires are like twisted inside of here. And so you can like actually cut through either the red wire or the blue wire, which uh, is a pain. So don't do that. So I usually cut a little bit and then peel a little bit and then cut a little bit and so on until it's uh, all off of there. So then the fan just sits in right here. Perfect. And then it should be perfectly level with the heat sink. And then you want to route these wires up here. Bit of a tight fit and then they'll wrap around kind of where the triggers are and then they'll solder over here eventually um so let's get those boards put in so the two boards uh that go here and here are the usb c pd board which i'm just going to go ahead and put my usb drive in now should i do that yeah putting it in now is fine um, and then the PMS light, which I had earlier. Oh, it's soldered to things over here. All right, we need to free it from these shackles. Alright, so that's all the wires off of it. So now we can screw it into place. So... One weird thing about the Louie is that there is a screw post. This top right screw, don't put a screw in it. Um, because the, uh, the 1.8 volt regulator on the Wii, this big thick guy, there's just enough space for it to like fit in this corner. But uh, if there's a screw in place, then uh, it doesn't fit anymore. There, there's too much height. So just leave that screw undone. It doesn't make a big deal or make a big difference. Three screws is plenty to hold a little board in place. Um, screwdriver. Right. So again, I think I mentioned it earlier, but the PMS light handles all the voltage regulator stuff. It handles all the battery charging stuff in a safe way. So that way you can just plug in a charger and you don't have to worry about batteries being overcharged or anything like that. Um, it has some like nice convenient features, like there's a thermistor in it that'll you'll con I'll connect it to the Wii in just a bit, but it tells you the exact temperature inside the portable, which uh, is good to know because sometimes I've forgotten to put like a piece or like forgot to put like thermal pads down, and then if your temperature starts going up a lot faster than it should, you can go oh, I forgot something, and fix it before your Wii just overheats. Um, it's got variable fan speeds, so the fan will run quiet when the Wii isn't very hot, and then it will run faster when the Wii needs to be cooled down. Uh, it's just got a whole bunch of like little things that are 
not necessary for a portable, but they help it feel a bit more uh, professional, less hacked together. Definitely worth it. These screw posts are a bit tight, so I need to put some pressure in to get them to start. Um, and then the USB-C board. Oh, before I put this in, there are a few custom buttons in the build. Uh, this power button is one of them. So you need to put this power button in before uh, you put the the uh, USB-C board in. Or else you'll have issues later trying to get back in. Oh, they're adding more stuff to it? I know, I think they're adding the ability to like change which color is which. On like the RGB LED, which is good. Because the one I'm using in here right now is uh, like red, blue, and green are like all different. From what the one they include has, so. Okay. I think this is good. So, we'll screw these down real quick. And so this board right here, uh, it handles USB-C charging, so you can charge with higher voltages, which is good, because if you try to charge at five volts, your portable will take forever to charge. Um, it lets you access the USB drive through the USB port, so you don't need to have like a big clunky drive sticking out of anything. Um, yeah, I think those are its two big things. I think it's like 20 bucks, so it's definitely worth the price. If you're using a PMS, you might as well use this thing too. Hmm, okay, this thing isn't screwing in very well. I might, this screw post isn't quiet. It isn't lined up nicely. So when I update the files, I will, I will move this screw post a little bit. There we go. All right, uh, now that it's screwed into place, pretty much all of these wires go from here to here. So, fan adjustment and a couple other things. Oh, nice. Uh, we're just gonna cut up a lot of small wires and start connecting. Um, we'll use, I don't think, I think everything works with 34 gauge. So I'm just going to use that for everything. Let's see, we need one, two, three, four, five wires. One. Two. Come on. Two. Three. Oh wait, are these my bad flush cutters? Oh, they are. We're not using those guys. I've got a pair of like flush cutters that are very beat up and a pair that are a little bit more new. So for cutting wires, I really like to use the new ones because the old ones are just too holy, which makes things tricky. Put these all in place.
four. All right. Perfect. And I cut this wire a bit short. It's a bit of a stretch. All right, that seems solid. Uh, all of these wires I'm soldering now. Um, they're mostly just there for USB-C charging to like send configuration information back and forth. I don't know what they all do, but you just connect them all together and they all work. Um, I think they changed the pinout of this board um, in like for like so newer ones have like the pads in different in a different order so uh, make sure you're putting them putting soldering each pad to like the right thing uh, if you're buying the boards uh, today or more recently because uh, when I was at MGC we built an, uh, an Ashita with these boards and I thought the pinout was the same, so I just soldered them all straight across. And uh, the portable didn't charge properly because that doesn't, that's not the right order anymore. So I'll be careful with that. from experience there yep and it was so sad you spent so long making incredibly long wires that were only going like an inch just for me to screw up and put them all in the wrong spot all right one more and then we're gonna use thicker wires for the, uh, the charge and the ground pads. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Right, make sure you're Generally make sure your solder joints are solid on everything, but uh, I do hate issues that uh, aren't consistent are the uh, the worst to troubleshoot. You are, I would agree with that. Okay, um, whatever. We'll use green wire for our uh, charge and ground pads. Get a little crazy. these like big fancy strippers that are nice for stripping uh, like 22 gauge wire um, 
but they don't work very well on like small bits of wire. So I gotta bust out the traditional strippers. <laughs> Fancy strippers. Hey look, I'm like a day's drive from Vegas. And always never have too many pairs. There we are. Oh. Yeah, it is. Sometimes like just a little bit of gunk on the wire also looks like uh, like it's been stripped. I've had that a couple times where I go, oh, this is this is properly done magnet wire and then it doesn't work and I have to double check. So yeah, I feel you there. Oh, these wires might be too small, I might have messed up. I do, need, I do need to get more like 22 gauge wire though because like all of my rolls of like I had a bunch of different colors and they're all empty and so I'm like relying off like a bag of nubs that I think I used as like a bit in my PS2 video. I think I like shook them out of a spaghetti box. Thankfully I saved those wires so they're coming in clutch today. Oops. Oh it was a bit of solder. I have I have a baggie full of pre-twisted wire somewhere. Let me see if I could find that real quick. Nope. 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 Oh wait. Aha! Here it is. All of these bags have a length on them. They're meant for uh, wires for Wee Boy colors, but most of those bags are empty and I haven't built a Wee Boy color in a while, so they're all pretty empty. Okay, so for the USB lines, you need to use twisted 34 gauge wire. Um, the USB signal is differential, which means that the two sides need to go together uh, or else they experience interference really easily. So. Uh, twisted wire works well. So I've got like this twisted, I don't even know if it shows up on camera. Nope. But there's an orange wire and a red wire twisted together. So it's easy to tell which is which. So we're going to solder. Uh, let's see. This much should be good. Oh. YouTube playlist time? Video pause, continue watching. Yes. But twisted wire I use for a bunch of different things. I use it on a couple of the audio signals for interference reasons. Um, I use it on the video signals for interference reasons. Um, and it can just be handy for keeping like pairs of wires that need to go to the same spot together. Come on, man. 
Uh, and then when you twist wires, you can do it with a drill pretty easily. You just put a... Uh, essentially just pinch two wires together and put them in a drill. And then it'll spin them around a lot. You can do the same thing with the Dremel. Although it's a little bit more volatile. It works though. I did that before I had like a powered drill. Uh, twisting them by hand works, but uh, it takes forever. And the wires don't get twisted nearly as tightly as a drill or a Dremel can do. So those methods are good for important wires like USB that absolutely have to be twisted. Okay, um, D plus is going to be the red wire and D minus is going to be the orange wire. I think that's how I usually do it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I won't forget which is which. So that's it. We won't have to solder to this board anymore. Um, so let's move on to getting the PMS all ready. Um, we can solder the fan down now. There's two fan pads right here. One of them is for fan plus, one of them is for fan minus. Uh, the red wire is fan plus and the blue wire is fan minus. And thankfully these fan wires are just long enough to uh, actually reach this board. Which is good, because if they were a little bit shorter, I'd have to do some sort of, like, jumper wire thing, which would be a bit of a pain. wires just a bit because there's a bit of slack but should work great okay um now that that's done so there's a five volt spot on this board but uh we don't actually need to use that for anything um because nothing in the Louie actually needs five volts so, we're just going to ignore it for now. Um, we are going to need wires for U10. Here, I'll steal the U10 wire from the Wii since we're going to have to redo that anyways. gonna cover any of this up.
Mm, yes. Okay. So we'll do those wires ahead of time as well. Okay, so SCW and SDW are uh, two wires that the PMS uses to communicate with the Wii. So it's what you like display information. It's what lets you display information on the screen and stuff. So those are important to have. Uh, not critical for testing whether or not a Wii boots, but uh, you'll want them for the final, uh, like the final portable build. So we'll go ahead and put wires in for those right now before I forget. W be red, CW be orange. Okay, great. Those are in place. Um, I'll twist them together just a little bit so I remember that they're a pair. Uh, you don't want to twist these wires together super tight, I'm pretty sure. I think that twisting these wires together can actually be bad. So don't uh, don't use super hard twisted wire on these. Just a nice light twisting should be fine though for organization. Um, okay, and then there's an A pad. Oh, I moved it out of the way again. There's an A pad and an L plus pad. I believe those are both for the LED. So let's use red wire and green wire. Here's green. That's 30 gauge red wire. I don't know where the... Alright, we'll turn up. Um, and then when you're cutting wires, uh, these wires have to go like all the way to the other half of the board. Uh, so I would cut them fairly long, so you've got some slack. Because redoing these wires later would be uh, pretty obnoxious. Where did I put the red wire? It's already six o'clock. Oh, geez. All right. Well, I'm still gonna try to get this all done today, but we might be going late. I'll probably take a break to go eat dinner in the next couple of hours. Because I'm not gonna make it through all this on an empty stomach. Um, let's have L be green. And A will be red. Perfect. And we'll twist these ones just a little bit as well. To remember that they're a pair. Oh, you're in London? Oh, it's like, what, 3 a.m. there then? Uh, late night for you then. Alright. Um, T plus. 
I'll deal with... Maybe it's T-minus. I'll deal with that later. Um, let's get the actual voltage wires going. So we'll take them off of the Wii for now. Just like that. We'll get rid of the composite for now too. Oh, shoot. It actually took off the entire composite capacitor. Oh. Hmm. Well, that capacitor is... It has returned to the wild. Um... Alright, well we aren't going to be able to test with composite video very easily anymore. So we might have to make the jump straight to VGA. Unless I harvest one from another Wii, which I might do. Oh, 21 past midnight? Oh, okay. Late night, early morning. True. Right. Midnight isn't too bad then. Oh, I think I'm thinking of Italy time zone. I think that one is a few more hours ahead. Or maybe just one or two. Man, that's a pain. Oh well. Um, real quick, while we've got the Wii in hand, I'll go ahead and attach the transistor. So this is the thing, or it's not transistor, thermistor. Uh, so it just kind of, it's this cool little shape. It attaches to this little guy and this little guy. And this little component on it right here is what uh, tells the temperature of the Wii. So, it's a really nice thing to have. I'm just going to attach it now before I forget. Because there have been a couple of times where I've built an entire portable and then gone, oh, I forgot the thermistor. But. Yeah, US time zones. There are a lot of them. I think there's five, maybe six. I don't know if Alaska and Hawaii are on the same one or not. Or if they're, no, they're definitely not on the same one. work. So we just put a solder blob here. And a solder blob here. Ish. Hmm. It's sticking to the thermistor thing, but not the uh, capacitor there. Should work. I think. And just make sure we're actually connected. Mm, maybe not. Oh yeah, we're not connected. Um, forgetting something, I mean, it happens probably, there we go, probably happens at least once on pretty much every build, but, uh, 
Sometimes it's like, oh, I just forgot this wire. I can add that very easily. Or sometimes it's like, oh, I forgot this thing that's underneath the Wii and the power boards. And so uh, you have to undo like the entire portable to get to it. And those are the worst. But yeah, I built a lot of portables, but still not great at remembers, remembering certain things. The thermistor is tricky because it's not essential for like booting. But it is important, and there's you usually can't tell immediately whether or not you've forgotten it. It's easier now because uh, our V loader has like a display for the temperature inside the portable. So if that display says like negative 600 or something, you can go, oh, I forgot the thermistor. But yeah, forgetting stuff happens. Okay, well, we got that installed. We put the Wii off to the side again. And let's finish up the PMS wires real quick. We need voltage wires and battery wires. And that's just about it. We're getting close. Um, okay. This wire is way too long. This one might be too short. This one looks to be a Goldilocks moment. I'm trying to think what other like dumb things I forgot in portables. I'll sometimes forget like a button. Uh, like if there's a certain tack switch in a weird spot, like the Louie has a Z button that isn't really attached to anything else. It's just kind of free floating. And there, I think one time I closed up a portable and went, oh, there's no button here. And I had to completely open it back up and install that, but most of the time it's a wire. All right, so 3.3 .3 volts, a snake, up and over here somewhere. Oh, we're also gonna want a battery voltage wire. That's important. Um, if you're trying to build a Louie and you're following this guide, pay attention. This wire is very important. If you forget it, you'll have a headache later. Um, you need to preemptively solder a battery uh, for the positive end of the wires right here. Um, and you'll just leave it free hanging for now. The problem is that the Wii, when it's installed, covers up the battery spot. Um, and so if you don't put this wire in now, you'll have to completely remove the Wii to install it. But uh, yeah, now you can forget about that wire until the build is finished. But I've forgotten that one before. It is a real pain. Um, got 3.3 volts. Let's grab 1.8 volts real quick. Oh, another important wire. Um, the audio amp can be a bit picky about what kind of ground it has. So you're gonna want to run just like a 30, ga or a 30 gauge ground wire um, off of the PMS, leave it free floating for now. Uh, but later on, come back to it and uh, attach it to the uh, audio amp. That's another important one. Um, there's a ground pad right here, that'll work. Same color as the 1.8 volt wire, so hopefully I don't get them mixed up. But this one I haven't stripped at all on the other end yet, so it should be should be distinct enough. Um Okay. Let's grab a ground wire. Um This one might be too short. Cut another one real quick.
Oh, I can use the uh, the fancy strippers now. Let's see. Uh, so these big things. You just put a wire in it, and it goes nom, and it's stripped. Very easy. Just like that. Oh, there's a... Oh, actually, we'll save that for something else. Okay. Now I just need two more voltages. We'll use white for 1.15 volts. I think I usually use blue, but I'm... Running low on blue wire, so. One volt is yellow. Hmm. Do I have no yellow wire? Oh, that's sad. Um, then we'll actually use use this right here. Uh, yes, this build does use the GUE fan and heatsink. It's the same one. Uh, it's a really nice cooling setup. Oh, which reminds me, I need to figure out where my copper plates are. I haven't used those in a while. But they're around here somewhere, I hope. Um, wire strippers. So that's all the voltages. Is there... You know, I want to get the copper plate down before we start putting the Wii or anything else in. Let me go find those real quick.
I've got a big baggie full of them somewhere, but I don't know where that is right now. But thankfully I have this one sitting loose in a box for some reason. So I'll use this one for now. Uh, yes, this portable uses the same 5-inch screen as the Ishida. Um, the voltage mod you have to do on it is pretty much the same. You have to remove a few more components for it to fit. But uh, yeah, same screen and all that. Um, I kind of went to school for electronics. Uh, I did electrical engineering in college for two years. Um, but I didn't enjoy it. And all the portable stuff I've learned, I've learned outside of college. Um, I didn't learn anything in any of my classes that would uh, super help me with portables, aside from like some programming stuff. But I've learned everything hands-on, and uh, it's, it's pretty reasonable to learn stuff that way. You don't need any technical knowledge, really, to understand how to build a portable. It's mostly just a connect A to B... C or A to A, B to B, C to C, and then learning how to use CAD and uh, circuit board design softwares. You can learn all that on your own really easily. So don't go to college if you want to learn how to build portables. Just uh, watch some YouTube videos to learn how to solder, read the guides on BitBuilt. But uh, yeah, college doesn't help much with that. Unless you take some really specific classes, but none of the ones I took were uh, of much use. Oh, uh, I just put down a little bit of thermal paste uh, for this thing to stick nicely. So, drop that in. Squish it on. Okay, perfect. All right, is there anything else? Oh, let's, uh... All right, so here's the other pair of batteries I soldered earlier. Um, Looks to be all good. So we're going to drop these in as well. Snaggle all these wires out of the way. We're not going to connect all the battery positives to each other yet. We'll do that at the very end. So I'm not going to put the batteries in super tight just yet. They're just going to kind of sit there for now. Oh, whoops. No, my school didn't have motherboard trimming 100, unfortunately. Or 101. I should petition for that. Hey, there we go. I don't need to get a job. I can just be a professor. Teach people how to cut up wheeze. Grade very harshly. Make students cry. It's a dream come true. But yeah, I get a lot of people to ask about, like... Oh, you must have gone to school for electrical engineering. I should have gone to school for that. It's like, ah, I won't help you much with portables. The, the technical knowledge is useful in some ways. And I do wish I knew how to program better. Because uh, programming lets you do... Uh, it gives you the ability to do some cool stuff. But you can, you can also just learn that stuff on your own. University and college doesn't help all that much. All right, hopefully that's uh, all good. I think it's wee time. System admin and education, learned it all on my own, no school. Yeah, if you can get away with that, it's good. Um, all right, we're gonna put in we're going to solder this. We need a wire to the thermistor right now before we forget about it. So I'm going to do that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to solder before I put the Wii in. Because putting the Wii in is kind of the, the big barrier to everything down here. Once it's in place, I can't mess with any of this without taking out the Wii. 
which is uh, a little bit scary. You're right, I can't teach on Twitch. Certifications are a lot cheaper on Twitch. Don't need a doctorate to teach. Okay. Um, and then when you mount the Wii in, you're gonna wanna put either thermal paste or thermal pads um, onto these two chips. Um, I'm feeling thermal pads. Those are less messy. Um, so I've just got like this sheet of like cheapo thermal pad. Uh, I've used it on a bunch of portables. I don't think it's the most high quality stuff, but the Wii doesn't generate like a ton of heat. So it's, it's never been an issue. But if you're just building one portable or you want to like be safe, well not safe, I guess you want to go like maximum cooling, then you can get some higher quality stuff. Um, I think these pads are between half a millimeter and a millimeter thick. Uh, you don't need thick ones for this. Uh, thermal paste will also work just fine. If that's all you've got. But I've been using thermal pads more and more on my portables and come to like them quite a bit. The only downside is that they are thicker, so if you're building like a super thin thing, then they probably aren't the pay. Okay. Um, before I do too much peeling, I want to put the thermistor wire into place. So I prefer to keep like all the voltage wires on this side of the board. Most people do them on the bottom side, but uh... If whenever I have to take, if I have to take the Wii out, when the wires are connected underneath, it's always a pain to like flip it out and do stuff, but that's just my personal preference. You can do it either way. Um, okay. Oh, and uh, you also need to take out this screw on the hinge or the, uh, the trigger because the Wii also uses this screw post, so we'll screw it back into place later on. Now though, let's just do a quick line up, make sure everything is all good. Alright, none of my wires are in the way. And uh, the wire from the thermistor goes to the T minus pad on the PMS, not T plus. I think T plus is just uh, 1.8 volts. So if you're using like some other thermistor setup, that isn't the one that's uh, bundled in with the, uh, the Wii PMS and you can do that. Okay. T minus. Perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna peel off the other, uh, the other piece of the thermal pads. Which is tricky. Sure, these thermal pads always reminds me of like fake cheese slices. 
slightly sticky, very floppy. Don't want to touch it. All right. And we're going to make sure the screw posts are all lined up before we really press down on it. Okay. All right, Phalange Cannon. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, glad you enjoyed the process. Yeah, have a good night. All right. So this is where we used eight millimeter screws, which I should have a baggie of. Actually, six millimeter will, will work fine for the Wii. Just want something a little deeper than the fours. fitting nicely and I don't know why. What about, I have some different screws that are a little pointier. They might be better for initially driving in. Let's see. There we go. I think when I designed this case, I designed it in inches. So some of the, uh, like, I think I, like for two millimeter screws, I just consistently use like 1.6 millimeters as like how big the hole should be for the screw to tap into. But I don't think I was as consistent back when I was using inches. Which I think is part of the issue. This will latch on nicely. Oh. There we are. <laughs> Imperial. Yeah. When I when I was first designing portables, um, I was using a, a caliper from my high school. That uh, it only did inches. And so uh, I didn't really have much of a choice. And so that's why my first couple portables are based in inches, but I have since shifted to millimeters. The world is much nicer through millimeters when it comes to portable cases. And also with the Louis, uh, make sure the triggers work whenever you uh, install like a bunch of stuff, uh, because sometimes the case will get like warped in a weird way because of how much pressure it takes on the batteries. I'm still here, YouTube. Um, but yeah, so just every so often give the triggers a quick clicking, make sure nothing's come unaligned, but okay. So now we need to start connecting all these wires. Um, we can start with this guy. So with the PMS light, uh, battery minus is just ground. So you could just connect the negative end of your batteries to any ground you've got. Um, if you're using like a full on PMS2, um, then it does actually matter uh, which pad you use as battery minus. Uh, I think ground will still work, but if they're not connected to battery minus, then you won't get the correct uh, like charge reading or like battery percentage. I guess it doesn't matter as much on the PMS light because it uses a different like uh, way of telling charge. <laughs> yeah. 
I guess I did change, but uh, I think changing from uh, inches to millimeters is, uh, you know, some, some changes need to be made, and that is one of them. I am surprised that uh, my camera hasn't uh, hasn't died on me yet uh, because I'm using an old Note 8 of mine. I used it for a while, then I upgraded to a new phone because the Note 8 kept just like randomly crashing, uh, and it would crash for several minutes at a time, which was a pain. So I upgraded, and so I'm using it as like a secondary webcam, and I expected it to crash every so often, but it hasn't crashed at all today. So maybe it's behaving again. Okay. Oh, I probably should have... Ah, that'll be fine. Okay, we're gonna solder the USB wires to the Wii now. Something's making flashing lights outside. Is the PMS light fused? I don't know. I only have one, and I just buried it under the Wii board. But yeah, it uses the voltage of the batteries to estimate the battery life, like Crash Bash said. Which I'm curious to see how accurate the percentage is, because the old version was just kind of like an LED that was green when it wasn't low and red when it was low. Which worked, but sometimes it just like wouldn't update like you'd have to like cycle through like the uh, the battery modes before it would update that the battery was low, uh, which was a bit of a pain. But it seems like the PMS2 is or the new version of the PMS is smarter in pretty much every way. So hopefully it'll be better. Untwist the wire finally. Trim it just a bit. Uh, the West Hall, thanks for subscribing. All right. Now we'll tin both of these wires. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna double check the Wii diagram real quick uh, because I'm pretty sure the uh, uh, USB, pretty sure the upper one is Oh, there's a picture missing. Hang on. Okay, so yeah, the one closer to the screw post is positive. Pretty sure D plus is positive. Or D plus is red. Uh, so the theme of this build is Super Nintendo. Let me flip it for you real quick. I don't want to flip it too much or else stuff might fall out. But the back is modeled to look like the uh, 
back of an SNES, and then the front just has some colored buttons like a Super Nintendo controller. This song is a weird one, let me see. I'll just link it in chat. It doesn't have a name, it's just a string of numbers. But it like pops up if you listen to enough video game OST. There we go. If I could fit the red wire in the via. Try not to melt our battery wire too much. All right, that looks solid. Oh, I linked the whole playlist? Whoops. Ah, that's all right. As long as the link works. Okay, I'm not super sure of that solder joint, but it'll be good enough for now. Actually, it's not. I'm going to fix it now before I forget. There we go. That's better. Um... Okay. USB is in place. Let's grab... Okay, this one's 1.8 volts. I could solder. I think there's a nice little pad right here. So, losing the composite capacitor is a bit of a pain. So I'm probably not going to test like whether or not this Wii installation works until after the entire front half is completed, which is not the right way to do things. Like once your Wii is mounted and all the voltages and stuff are in place, you should connect up the batteries and make sure it works. But uh, I, I don't feel like fishing for a new uh, resistor. So we're going to play it risky and wait. But uh, don't do that if you're building a portable for the first time. Um, oh. Can I cram this wire down here real quick? Oh, I can. All these big like gold circles on the Wii are ground. So it's a really nice and easy spot to attach uh, your big ground wire to. Ground. 
This, like, uh, array of nine vias right here is 3.3 volts. So I'm going to figure out where my X-Acto knife is. And then we're just going to scrape and kind of create a makeshift pad between four of them. And then that'll be a good solder point for 3.3 volts. Just like that. My desk is starting to look absolutely incoherent, which is about how it usually looks. I do try to clean it up occasionally. Let's go. Perfect. Okay, just two more voltages, 1.15 volts. This like grid of four vias right here is 1.15 volts. So we'll do the same thing we did for 3.3 volts. My desk was that clean right now. Ugh. Sounds like your standards are kind of low, Crash. Although, admittedly, this is that is probably slightly worse than normal. Are you, oh, what was, oh, I just dropped a bunch of screws in my lap. Oops. Usually, I at least keep all my tools back in the holders, but once it starts to get bad, it just spirals downwards very quickly. the U10 wire. Is it... Oh, I think it's this one. Okay, good. I know I didn't forget it, but it got mixed up with all the trigger wires. Let me solder this one down real quick before I forget about it. Let's go... That! Yeah, having... Like, I've got these shelves up here, which are really nice for storing stuff. I've got, like, cabinets below here that are nice for storing stuff. But you know what? No place... No place uh, fits quite as well as just somewhere random on the desk, you know? That's just where things belong. What is Open Tyco? Not familiar with that. Oh, are you trying to post spam in my chat? Can't believe it. Someone banned that guy. More horizontal surfaces to put stuff on is better. Yeah, I've got a desk right there that sole purpose is to put stuff on. 
I'll never use it for anything else. Then I've got a folding table right there for stuff. Flat surfaces are just the greatest. I want to shake the hand of whoever invented them. Oh, I forgot about this wire. We should put this one on. Okay, so 1.15 volts is the one kind of obnoxious part about putting the uh, voltage wires on the back side of the board. Um, but there's this row of three vias right here, which works for one volt. So that's where I'll usually put it. But it's kind of, it's the least stable spot because it's so thin. So I have to very, very carefully scratch off pretty much all of it without going into the ground plane. And then make sure that my actual solder joint is good. You know, I don't know what Taiko no Tatsujin is either, but is it just like some sort of rhythm, ga rhythm game? I'm guessing based on the fact that it's custom songs. Oh, it's the drumming one. Okay, I think I think I might have seen that one before. Is it like a little red drum, or is it a is it a different one? Although you said it's a clone, so it's probably some some other thing. But I think I at least know the uh, the original game you're talking about. Red and blue, yeah, okay. All right. Last voltage wire is... In place. All right. So I think we are very close to being done with back half assembly. Um, I think I'm gonna skip the MX relocation for now because it's already seven o'clock and that'll probably take maybe an hour to do considering, well, maybe not an hour, but it'll take a decent chunk of time and I wanna, I wanna be done with this before it gets too late. So I might do that off stream or I might do everything else and get it working today and then maybe tomorrow or in the next couple days I'll do another stream of actually testing it. Um, okay, so SCW and SDW need to go to some vias that are over here somewhere. I don't remember exactly where they are though, so I'm going to pull up the document real quick. Four layer tech. Four layer technologies. Let's go PMS lights. Documents. We board vias. Okay. I think yellow is CW, so we'll do that one first. See right there? Yeah. this orange wire is 38 gauge and I wouldn't recommend 38 gauge that's when things start to get so thin that it's just kind of annoying to actually work with ah just trying to slide this wire into the V is a pain 
Alright, I give up on getting it to fit in there. We're just going to use Flux and make our own pad. Ugly. Oh, thanks, the shadow. Shadow Eli, I think. What sort of co consoles do you repair? I'm not much of a console repairer. I'm more of a breaker, but that does sound like a nice skill to have. Trust that joint. Uh, a little more flex. Oh wow! So you've got a you got a full range there. Yeah, repair work is not not my thing. I hate taking apart anything that I haven't made myself. Because I can take things apart just fine. It's the uh, the putting things back together part that really gets me. That part isn't nearly as much fun. Oh, look at that. Three, four gauge wire goes in the hole. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Okay, so those are the wires that the PMS needs to communicate with the Wii. Um, what is this? Empty wire. Okay, perfect. I think we're running out of stuff I can do on the back side. I'll go ahead and attach the ground wires for the trigger buttons. Well, I've got this up. Being able to replicate good circumstances is a that's a good skill to have. There are pretty good uh, guides and stuff and pre-made cases. So if you're worried about having like design your own case, uh, you can build a portable without having to touch like CAD or any of that. Just get the case 3D printed from someone else and then attach point A to point B. It's that's pretty much what portable building is nowadays, unless you get really crazy. But it's not nearly as uh, daunting to get into as it once was. have ground uh, so this portable uses a few different buttons the triggers are 3d printed 
Um, there's some custom buttons along this like bottom part. That'll be 3D printed slash resin. Um, the buttons, here, I'll pull out the front real quick. Uh, these buttons are all Nintendo Switch buttons um, with Nintendo Switch Joy-Con joysticks. This is a weird like third party Nintendo Switch D-pad button that I need to switch to something out that's uh, easier to come by like a DS Lite or Nintendo Switch buttons because you can only like get this button if you buy like a third party set of Joy-Cons, which isn't an issue for me because I just resin cast my one D-pad and I'm good to go. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not a uh, user friendly. <laughs> All right, quit your Wii phone propaganda. The Wii phone is not cool. But uh, yeah, that is one of the downsides of this build. Um, but I might fix that before I release the files. We'll see. Um, there is not much else I can do right now. Um, oh, uh, another wire that I forget a lot is the mode wire. So, um, the Wii uses, when you like plug in a cable to the Wii, if you plug in a component uh, video cable, then one of the pins on like the AVE gets shorted to 3.3 volts. And so that tells the Wii, oh, okay, I need to output component video uh, versus composite. And it's very important to have that wire in place if you're using VGA on a portable uh, because you won't get any video output if you forget it. And it's, I forget that wire a lot. Um, so we're going to put it in now before I forget it. So that way I'm not stressed out later when I power on the portable and don't get any video out. Pretty sure that's the mode pin. Um, and then there's an easy 3.3 volt spot on this little capacitor. And that's what I'll normally use. Alright, I need to add more songs to the playlist after this. I think we're getting almost nothing but repeats at this point. God, there's a circuit board I need to assemble real quick. Let me go find that. face up. Is it this way? No. Okay. I think this is the right way. Oh, well, see you the new bug. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that is a common one where uh, people just don't know that you need it obvious in the trimming guide so it's uh understandable why people miss it i spent forever troubleshooting like vga on my uh ps2 portable because you have to like change the setting in like the ps2 menu to uh like get vga out for some reason uh, okay accidentally bent one of the legs that might be a pain all right so this is a very complex circuit board right here there's an awful lot going on um, I'll try to explain it in as simple terms as possible so that people watching can understand. But uh, there's three buttons, and uh, you just solder the buttons in. And uh, then you have screen control buttons and uh, volume buttons. 
Um, I'm sure that went over most of your heads, but uh, yeah, building a portable Wii is very tactical stuff. Oh, uh, I think I missed someone asking about the buttons. Um, the buttons, the triggers are FDM printed. Um, resin printing them would probably be better. Um, and then the buttons on the bottom are a little bit smaller and you can do them in FDM. Um, I'd recommend resin printing or resin casting them though, uh, because they're very small. So FDM prints, they won't look as good, but uh, they will be at least usable if that's your only option. And yeah, if you do want to mod the uh, the case to use DS buttons and uh, uh, D-pad, you can definitely do that. I think the I think the reason why this portable uses switch buttons instead of uh, uh, DS light buttons is because I didn't used to resin cast all my buttons. Uh, Mad Morta used to do that for me, and I think she had more uh, Nintendo Switch buttons than she did. Uh, DS light buttons. So I think that's why the case is designed this way, and I've never bothered to go, on, go back and change that. Okay. Right, we're gonna solder buttons into place. Oh, and I'm off off camera again, as usual. So this portable uses three custom circuit boards. There's this one, which is, I mean, it's just buttons. And then there's two more. One is for uh, like the right half of the controls and the other is for the left half of the controls. So the GC Plus mounts right onto one of them, uh, makes controller stuff a lot easier. And then they also work to help uh, hold the switch joysticks in place. And then real quick, quick, I'm gonna go along and just snip off any excess on the legs. Uh, it's a pretty tight fit between this board and the rest of the case, so I can't have any extra height here without running into issues later. Alright, that should be good. Let's see, did you get the song right? Yep, looks like it. Oh, all right. So now, where'd it go? Oh, it's blending in with my magnet wire. Now this just screws into place, the couple and two by fours. And then I've got some little resin printed buttons or resin cast buttons that will go between the, uh, the actual tack switch in the case. That way you can uh, use different colors if you want. Because uh, in the old Louie design, these like tacked buttons would like stick out of the case a little bit, but uh, then you could only ever have black buttons sticking out. Which I didn't like. Sometimes I wanted funny colors. <sighs> or better colors. That would match the design better. Um, where are my M2x4 screws? 
I have like two just lying here, but I don't know where the baggie full of them is. Um, all right. What else can I do on the bottom half? Not much. Oh, I could put the, uh, the video wires down preemptively. Uh, no, I'll do that later so I can at least estimate. Uh, how long they need to be because I don't know how long they are right now and if I cut those too short it'll be a pain same with the audio wires um, oh I guess we can move screen control wires around oh there's no there's no ground pad on this board I need to fix that shouldn't be an issue but it's a bit of a pain okay um Let's have down will be yellow wire. So one of the, uh, another awkward part about the Louie is that uh, I've doubled up on the screen control buttons and the volume control buttons. They're the same button. And so if you uh, crank up the volume or if you crank up like uh, the brightness of the screen, you're also going to uh, turn up the volume to max. So like 90% of the time, it's not a big deal because I don't change the screen settings too much, but uh, it can be a little bit obnoxious. But it's either that or have like five buttons all in a row. And five buttons is a lot. I'd rather just have the three. And just kind of deal with the, uh, the slight audio lowering and raising when I have to. Oh, this wire is too tall. Let me smush it a bit. That's better. Um, let's do a red wire for up. And a green wire for menu. wire in place and up wire in place oh. all right now it's in place all right so that's pretty much everything I can do on the bottom half right now I'll go ahead and get started on the screen half for a bit and then I'm gonna take a quick break and go grab dinner Where's the other half? Here it is. So, here, I'll zoom out a bit. This is the screen half of the build. Um, this half goes a lot quicker than the back half. There's a lot less technical stuff. I don't have to worry about trimming a Wii. You pretty much just drop everything in and go. So, I'm going to start. The order here matters. I'm trying to remember which way I have to do it. 
I think the screen has to go in first. Let me grab that real quick. I grabbed a couple other things while I was up. So the screen I use in the build, it's another four layer tech screen. Um, it's an IPS screen, which looks really good. Uh, the driver board is really easy to mod so that it can run off of 3.3 volts. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a banger screen. I haven't actually had a chance to use the IPS screen yet, but uh, I've seen screens like this on the Wee Boy Color, which has an IPS screen. So I'm really hoping for uh, similar results out of this guy. What's for dinner? Uh, I got some tamales the other day. So I think I'm going to heat up a couple of those and have myself a good dinner. What games am I into right now? Um, Play a decent amount of Overwatch. Although I'm, it is starting to wear on me. So I'm... Trying to find something else to fill that primal need to shoot things. Um, what else? Played Chrono Trigger recently. Played a bit of that and had fun with it. Um, I played through Final Fantasy VII Remake for the first time when it came out for PC a couple months ago. But... Uh, uh, I had a decent amount of fun with that, although it stretched, it went on for a bit long. They very clearly stretched it out quite a bit, but I enjoyed it. I like Final Fantasy VII, so it was fun to play through. Um, I feel like there's another game that I'm forgetting, but uh, I can't remember what it is, so it must not be very fun. Oh, Spelunky 2. I was trying really hard to uh, get to 7.99 in Spelunky 2, but... Uh, uh, I was trying for a long time and, uh, couldn't quite get there, but, uh, I'll go back to it at some point. I'm just kind of burnt out on it right now. I do love Spelunky too, though. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. We've been playing Minecraft recently. One of my friends set up a server, so, uh. It's that yearly get into Minecraft for a couple weeks and then get burnt out and don't play it for a year things. But uh, that's been fun. Better be red tamales? I actually messed up. I bought green tamales. Which uh, I've never had them before. They're okay. But uh, I definitely like the red ones better. Oh, uh, you don't think 12 tamales is the same as two? All right, so I'm putting uh, what's called captain tape on this side of the screen driver board uh, because this part of the screen is metal. And so if any of these stuff short out on each other, that'll be a pain. And so we're just gonna avoid that. Formal apology needed for that one. Do I have to go full cam? I don't wanna go full cam for an apology. That's a lot of work. And I don't have a cat, so it won't be very effective. Okay, well now that's just rude. Alright, that should be... Should be good. Not my finest Captain Tape job, but it'll do. So, one thing I can't show... Uh, since I actually don't have any more of these like unmodded driver boards... Usually there's a bunch of parts right here, and there are connectors along here. I've already removed all those. Um, I did all this with a hot air gun. You have to remove all this stuff for the 3.3 volt mod. And then... Uh, these connectors are just in the way, so you get rid of them. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to do, so hopefully it's not too confusing for anyone. I'm pretty sure I've done it in a past livestream. I don't know if I saved the VOD for it, though. But... Uh, 
yeah, I'll show that off at a different point in the future. But it's relatively straightforward. Um, I feel like this isn't sliding in enough. It's always hard to tell with these flex cables whether they're actually like in all the way or not. feel like that's all the way in but maybe it is all right well hopefully that's connected all the way it's uh it's hard to tell but we'll call that good enough for now. Okay, so then this little piece here is what like locks down the screen and the driver board. It's a, it's a very strange shape, but uh, it does the job. Oh, I always forget this, but not this time. I need to put this trigger in before uh, the screen holder or else there'll be issues later. Mm, okay, is it? I'm going to shave off just a little bit of this hole, just in case. Um, all right. Are there any lips in here? There are. Let me get rid of those real quick. You inspire me to do something with my life. Well, I'll be honest, my Wii Portable stuff is uh, its pretty straightforward as, long, as far as portable stuff goes. If you want to build portables, you can do it pretty easily. It's, uh, it takes a lot of time, and it's not something you could just pick up in a day. But, uh, I don't know, it's just like any other skill. Whether it's piano or basketball. It just takes time. A lot of... Uh, a lot of work, but uh, I would say uh, my you need very little tactical knowledge to build a portable. There are people out there who really know what they're doing, and I just kind of use their boards, and I come up with my own fun designs, but uh, there are levels to any hobby. Well, I already did the driver board modding, actually, which is a little awkward, because I wanted to do absolutely everything on stream, but... I don't have any unmodded driver boards anymore. But yeah, we're getting it all installed. And in place. Oh, I need to hollow this guy out a bit. Um, and I forgot to put the trick. After all that, I forgot to put the trigger in place. Uh, come back out. Alright. Slide that guy into place. Now slide this into place. Okay, perfect. Um, where are the four millimeter screws? Six millimeter, eight millimeter. Now I got the baggie of everything I need. But what about the other trigger? Uh, this one's only got a Z button because uh, GC Plus 1.0 didn't have two Z buttons. And so, uh, I put the LED in the way of uh, where a second trigger would go. And I'll be honest, I don't... I'm not too worried about not having that second trigger. 
It might be nice for like some Wii games, but GC Plus 2.0 I still don't think has any compatibility with it. But yeah. I'll be honest, the one thing I don't like about the Ishida's design is that it has that second Z trigger. Because uh, when I have to like resin cast my own buttons, that means I have to make two Z buttons. And like, I don't have very many Z button molds, so it's a bit of a pain. But that's alright. Aside from that, it is an incredible, incredible case. Um, alright. Alright, so the screen, oh, hang on. Z trigger feels a little bit tight. I might have to go in and do some more scraping later on, but I shouldn't need to take this, uh, ah, that's a problem for later. Okay, um, install the light pipe so this is just a little piece of plastic that like makes the LED less bright just kind of act as like a barrier between the LED and the actual uh, uh, like eyes oh uh, another thing I should mention when you're putting the screen in place there's like this little screen protector flap make sure like you like fold the screen protector flap back so that when you install the screen uh, the flap is sticks out and it's easy to like pull when you get ready to take it off. Um, or else like if it's like stuck tightly inside the case, you have to like try and take a knife in there and like, like lift it out and it's a scary process. So, uh, yeah, don't, uh, don't forget to just position that correctly early on. <laughs> Another feature is it's pretty easy to lose. Yeah, I have, an, I have a baggie full of like 50 of these light pipes because uh, I used to buy the exact amount I needed and then I'd lose one every single time. If I removed all the components needed to be removed uh, on the screen driver board, if that's what you're talking about, I believe so. It's pretty much just all this stuff here in the corner. Um, and you don't even need to remove them on a lot of portables. You only need to like lift a certain pad. Um, but I think for space reason, the Louis needs uh, them to be removed completely. But I could be completely wrong on that. Okay, and then we're gonna just put... We're just gonna put a drop of super glue down. Just uh, hold that guy in place, cause it's got a little bit of wiggle room. But uh, I shouldn't ever need to pull it out. So once it's in, it can stay in. Okay. Um. I. Th Let's install the U amp real quick. So the U amp is another four layer tech board. Um. It basically is just the audio amp. It does speakers, it does headphones, it does volume control. It's just a beautiful all-in-one solution that uh, didn't used to exist. And let me tell you, doing audio back then was a pain. So uh, this is one of those inventions I'm very glad modern portabilizers get to use. Because back in the day, having headphones on a portable wasn't a uh, wasn't a given. All right, so this board, it mounts right here. So one of the screw posts is on the screen thing. One of them is connected to the actual case. <laughs> yeah, that is, yeah, flick a, I need like a flick shield somewhere. Like just a bubble around my desk. That's something gets flicked like off of a pair of tweezers I can at least know where to search. 
Because it's not a big deal when it's like a, a part for like a board I'm assembling, but when it's like the uh, composite resistor on the Wii that I lost earlier, that's, uh, that's more of a headache to uh, replace. Okay. Headphone jack is all soldered on now. Okay, these screws aren't positioned perfectly. So I'll have to drive them in at an angle, but it should work. Um, it kind of uses Joy-Con breakout PCBs. I've actually got two PCBs for just all the controls. Um, and so there are Joy-Con connectors on those. Uh, but the original Louie just used, yeah, like standard Joy-Con breakout boards. I think I was, my, I was actually the first person to, uh, to make a Joy-Con breakout board. And like test them and make sure that they actually worked on portables. Which sounds impressive, but uh, I literally just bought a connector that I thought would fit and then connected them to a controller and they worked. But uh... That was, that was big news at the time. Because prior to that, everyone just used 3DS sliders. And 3DS sliders are great. I love 3DS sliders. But, uh... Sometimes normal, or well, normal-ish joysticks are just nicer. Man, I am struggling to figure out where this screw hole is. Let's try a pointier screw for to at least get it tapped. Um, would I be able to use those and tacks for controls? Um, if you're willing to have a bit of jankiness, then... Oh, wait, are you talking... Sorry. When you say those, are you talking about uh, Joy-Con breakout boards, or are you talking about uh, the PCBs I'm using here? Because the PCBs I'm using here are all open source. They'll be public along with the case. Uh, so that way it's easy to... Uh, have a consistent way to assemble it. If you're talking about Joy-Con breakout boards and just using like normal tack switches, um, you can make it work probably. You'll just have to do a bit of uh, a bit of modifications since uh, the case is explicitly designed around the custom circuit boards right now. You could definitely make it work. All right, uh, UAMP is all mounted. Um, how much are the custom PCBs? Um, shipping will probably cost more than the PCBs themselves. Um, I'll just open source the files so you can order them from like PCB Way or Oshpark or uh, JLC PCB. Um, and they'll probably like. 15 bucks for like all the boards you'll need. It's probably like five bucks for each type of board and there's three boards in the build. Um, I guess I could also just like order a bunch of them and sell them from the States. We'll see. That might be worth doing for people that only want like one set, which is probably most people. But yeah, the PCBs will be cheap and the parts that go on them are also very cheap. Okay, I think I'll go ahead and mount the GC Plus to this custom circuit board real quick. And then it's dinner time. <laughs> yeah, Osh, Osh Park is uh, fantastic when you've got those tiny boards. Because, uh, yeah, you literally can't beat their prices. I, they, they have to lose money on those. Like, shipping must cost more than 70 cents. But they are nice for those little things. Okay, so this is the GC Plus board. This is what acts as the controller for the build. Um, basically, you just hook it up and it's a GameCube controller. It's nice and easy. It's got all the inputs you need. You can configure pretty much any joysticks, any triggers to work with it. Uh, it's a wonderful piece of technology. Wait, 
This is it. Make sure you line this guy up perfectly or else you're gonna have a headache later. Okay, that looks good. And now you just jam some solder into each of these legs. Nice and easy. All right, MP3, thanks for hanging out for a while. Nice to hear from you. Hope you have a good night. Also, as a recommendation, don't put these tack switches on first, put this juicy plus board on first. It's easier to solder when it's perfectly level. I'm starving, so while I'm gone, I think I'm just gonna fire up the uh, live stream I did a couple weeks ago of playing through the uh, uh, the GameCube portable. Let's see, ginger pods. So that way, there's still something on the screen to entertain you. Um, but uh, and today, I just unless. You... All right, uh, I'll be back in like 20 minutes, probably. I'll try and be quick about it. Um, yeah, be back in just a bit. Let's see, let's get rid of that. If you want to do like sort of a, uh, what would you call it? Like some sort of streaming setup where you stream over like HDMI or something. Someone made like a cool box that just had like a wireless receiver in it and then you could plug the other side into just about anything and had a wireless controller. It was pretty slick, but definitely wasn't a true portable Xbox. I guess I didn't look into PlayStation stuff either, but I grew up like all Nintendo. So after building the PS2 portable, I don't have a whole lot of interest in getting into that stuff again, but maybe someday. Oh, um, so the Majora's Mask Louie, that one's got the updated files for the four layer text stuff. Um, I had a couple of issues that I needed to iron out with it. Like I just had a couple small things and I forgot to fix those when they were on my mind. So it's been like three months since then. Um, but this month I am going to build at least one Louie. So I'll figure out what the issues were, get them fixed. And then I'll upload the files. Um, I probably won't upload the Majora's Mask one because uh, it's a pain to print. I'll just upload like a generic version of the files. But uh, you should be able to edit any sort of uh, like pictures you want into it because I'll leave the uh, inventor files in it. Maybe the step file. Well, if you have the inventor files, you can get the step files. We'll see. No, no, you didn't miss it. Um. I don't know what the best way to see it will be. It'll be on the BitBuilt forums, for sure. Oh, shoot. No. Second place every time. <laughs> I know the uh, I know the Xbox sphere you're talking about. 
I feel like all the iconic renders come from uh, the future gen consoles video. That's where uh, I'm pretty sure that's where I first saw the render for this guy. That's a that is a classic video. But you know what? Maybe someone's still making the Xbox 720 out there. Um, all right. Do I play more Double Dash or do I switch it up? All right, Mitch. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, we'll switch, I guess. I don't remember what all I have on here, but uh, should have a fair number of options. Um. I did Thousand Year Door on my last stream, although that one did not go well. I think we can continue that. Um, oh, you know, we have to play Wind Waker. Yeah, I, I do always wonder what, like, the, uh, the motivation behind, uh, making those fake renders was i guess it's just to post something uh when i talked to the guy who made this he said he just made it for fun like he had learned how to make product rendering and he was like you know what i'm gonna make this and i'll upload it to the internet and see what people think and so that's what he did and uh people liked it <laughs> yeah um okay i don't know who alex is but apparently i have his save file um, uh, if I start a new one, we have to watch the cutscene. Whatever, I'll just jump into it, see if I can figure out. Oh, that's going to be in, like, Ganon's Tower. That one is also going to be in Ganon's Tower. All right, whatever, we'll start a new one. Yeah, Wii U and 3DS form, that's like, that's another pipe dream portable. Um, no one's put a whole lot of time into like figuring out what the Wii U can do portable wise. All the chips are like super spaced apart and there isn't like a nice, uh, what do you call it? Like a nice power consumption one where it uses less power. The Wii is nice because, I mean, I just have a couple of tiny batteries in here. Oh, they're actually right here. So the only batteries I could fit inside of this thing were uh, two of these guys. And so they power it for like an hour and a half. But a Wii U, I think it uses like triple, I think it uses three or four X the power of a Wii. And so that just, that gets gnarly real quick. <laughs> a purple PS2 in the right side had a giant red button marked do. I don't think I've seen that one before. That sounds that sounds like an odd one. Um, what else can I show while this cutscene loads? Um, I guess I can do another quick cycle around it. So this is the back of it. Oh, I should show the, uh, hang on, let me pull up uh, the original render. I need something to prop this guy up with to keep it from overheating. I don't think that's going to work. Um, yeah, whatever, we'll... There we go. Uh, let me find the, the other image I was talking about. Let's see. Is not showing up on Google. What if I look up portable GameCube and Wii replay? Oh, 
here we go, here we go. Browse, save, okay, perfect. So this is properties, browse. So this is the, uh, this is the old, or this is like the second image that goes along to it. Um, this one's interesting because apparently the top of it was supposed to just be like an mp3 player with like an entire second screen and buttons and a clock and it is a very bizarre design uh, especially considering that if you folded it up everything would be upside down uh, but I guess if it's closed it's fine but yeah there's also the memory card slot just below the disk the disk drive at least that's what I think that's supposed to be but I guess we'll never know. Yeah, this image, this one doesn't get shared nearly as much. Probably because it's uh, it's kind of weirdo. But uh, it's out there. But uh, yeah, I opted to just kind of uh, ignore it. Because it doesn't suit what I want to do very well. But uh, it is cool that it at least gets shared. Okay, let's go back. Right. Um... I looked into the disk drive a little bit. Um, the problem is that disk readers that slide in and take small disks don't really exist. So it'd be making my own disk drive, which I'm not much of an expert on. And then even then it would be a tight fit to even fit an entire disk in this thing with the mechanism to spin it and read it and all that. So games run off of USB. And there's a disk slot, which you can put a disk in for, like, pictures. But that's about it. But uh, maybe someday, if I get a big budget and a team of engineers, I'll make it happen. Oh, another interesting thing. I'll show it if there's, like, another long cutscene or something. Uh... Oh, I don't know how I'd find the picture. Um, but the image of Wind Waker that's in the render, uh, it's a little weird. Uh, once I'm like playing the game, you can see that the UI is different. Um, and the place in the picture doesn't look like it exists in the game, uh, which confused me for a while. Uh, but then I found out that uh, at E3 2002, uh, they did like a demo of Wind Waker. And so, for whatever reason, the picture in the render is one of those images that got distributed to the press. And it's like a weird, super brightened version of Forsaken Fortress. And so that's why I had such a hard time finding it. But, yeah. Yeah, for a one-person modder, I'm sure there are people out there who could do it. But I'm not one of those people, unfortunately. Hey there, Worm Arms. Doing pretty well. Happy to have this thing done. I've played through this intro a lot. Because when I was like four, I would go to my grandma's house and play this. And I think I made it past Forsaken Fortress once. But then every time I'd go back, I'd just restart the game for whatever reason. So, uh, I'm very familiar with the first 15 minutes. I think the last version of this I played was the HD version, which I think lets you, uh, mash through text a little bit better than this one. But that's alright. Computer drive, I don't know, because I think mini discs need their own, like, reader system because of the spacing and such. And Wii disk drives are cool because they're, like, built to take both big disks and little disks. And they do slide in through the front. Oh, laptop drive. Um, that would be closer, I guess. But I th I've never seen a laptop 
with like the uh, the disk eating mechanism, if that makes sense. Like most laptops just have like the uh, uh, the slot that you press the button, it goes and then you put the disk in. And I feel like that's how the disk slot on this was supposed to work, but that's a whole other mechanism. Uh, no, I haven't played the uh, any sort of triangle strategy demo. I played a lot of Octopath. I think I tried to get into it twice, and I played a bunch of hours in it, but I don't think it's my type of game. Not a huge JRPG guy. I think the only ones I've liked are like Final Fantasy VII, and I liked a couple Pokemon games, but that's about it. Oh, okay, MacBooks, that does ring a bell. I have seen MacBooks eat discs like that. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I could have looked into that. I never thought of MacBooks, but you know what? Maybe if I do a rev two of this at some point, I'll, I'll give a disk drive another try. The only issue is I really don't think I could fit a disk drive and batteries in this thing. It's already it's already very tight, and I don't want to put in less batteries. So it might be one of those things where it has to run off of like a battery bank. And I think I'd rather have internal batteries instead of a uh, disk drive. Uh, okay. Um, telescope. Host box. Where is it? There it is. Oh. There's the funny bird. Oh. <laughs> I forgot today was State of the Union. Well, my stream is more important. That's okay. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Oh, I can show off sound, I think. Assuming I haven't broken it. this is audible without being too loud okay, was, okay these are probably awful sounds to be trying to play <laughs> okay well the audio does work and that's what's important no the girl in the forest okay um, now I go get the sword All right. actually read what he's saying or else I forget what swing oh that wasn't it okay I don't think I use most of these moves when I'm playing the game I just kind of hold the trigger and the stick and the B button at enemies and it just kind of works Oh, I didn't know that Mac disk drives could uh, support right. these two games. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. All right. You have a good evening, Mr. President. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Okay. I'm back. Let's get this guy all finished up. <laughs> Pre-recorded stream reported. Yeah, my bad. 
There we go. All right, so hopefully to have this finished up in the next couple hours because I'm getting getting pretty tired, but I'll try to pound out the rest of this real quick. Um, let's see. We're not on the phone with anyone important, right? Oh, you know, it's just me and the president of the United States. No big deal. I told him I had to stream, though. This was more important. But uh, I'm sure I can get back to him later. No, Joe Biden does not endorse the Wii phone. He is a... Uh, he loves the GameCube portable. Um, alright, let's turn the music back on. There we go. Yeah, no one important. Just the president. Oh, that's right. We were assembling boards for the front of the case. We'll finish that off real quick. Um, so these orange buttons are, they don't really have an official name. We call them squishy tacks because they are tack squishes, switches that are squishy. And uh, yep, that's the whole thing. Um, and I've got a little pocket on them. The problem is these are a real pain to find. Like, uh, they aren't sold very much anymore. Um, which is a slight problem because a lot of portables use them. So I'm hopeful there's still a source out there. Um, but I'll have to do some research and figure that out. You do have to, like, uh, cut one of them, a corner off of one of them, though, to make it fit. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, I might have cut too much off. Uh, let's try that again. Okay, round two. Ah. Okay, that looks about right. Just drop it in. Oh, geez. Sometimes one of the legs gets bent and it's just a real pain. It's always this one too. Whenever you trim the leg off of one of these, it never goes into its hole like it should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I have, I don't know how many I have left. I think I bought like a pack of like 500 a few years ago. I don't know, I think Shanks got the real dragon sword. I think he got a couple thousand. But uh, I think you'd be more likely to uh, get me to part with some of my 500 than shank with some of his few thousand. But uh, yeah, I prefer to not be a distributor for them. Right, I give up. We're snipping off part of the leg. There we go. Oh! Okay. Can you spot what the problem was? Why wouldn't the leg go through the hole? It's because there's an entire board in the way. Alright, well, problem solved. I'm a genius. No one fixes problems quite like I can. Ginger scalping those orange squishies. Hey, you know what? I think a dollar a button is fair. That's just market value. Also, was Stone Edge already taken on Twitch? Or did you pick this out specifically?
because uh, there's another Ginger of Oz out there. I found this out the other day because I was trying to set up a TikTok to like post videos of some of my projects. Never got around to that. I only made the TikTok. Uh, but there's another Ginger of Oz on there. And I don't think they stole the name from me, as far as I know. They seem to be pretty independent. They're also on Twitter, but they don't have the handle Ginger of Oz because that account has been like permanently banned on Twitter. And nobody can claim that handle, which is really annoying. So, uh, maybe they got up to some uh, nefarious online activity. But, uh, that was, a, that was a slight annoyance. So I'm Ginger of Mods on TikTok. Okay, so the last thing that I need to solder is the uh, connector for the Joy-Cons. Which I've got a reel of them right here. And the easiest way to solder these is to solder down one of the uh, the big anchor pads. Oh, wait, I just realized the music might be too loud. Forgot that I raised the volume when I uh, left to go grab dinner. Okay. And once you've got one soldered into place, you can make sure that the legs are all lined up nice and straight. And it looks like they are. Hello, focus. Whatever. You'll have to take my word for it. And then you can anchor down the other side if you're 100% sure that the legs are lined up, which I am. And then just put down a little bit of flux onto the Joy-Con thing. Rub a little bit of solder onto each of the legs. Oh, that kind of been good. Yep, yeah, and then you've got a nice soldered connector. Might be a little bit too little solder, but I'd rather go back and put more on than try and fix a bridge later. So we're just going to leave that for now. And then the other board we've got, um, there's a little LED up here that I've already pre soldered because it's a pain to figure out which way is the right orientation. Uh, so that's already in place. Um, and then we need four more orange squishy tacks. Uh, these will let us, uh, these will act as the D-pad buttons, which are somewhat, oh, what the heck? Okay, I'll put that one off to the side. It's missing two legs, but I have a use for it. Okay, perfect. And now we solder all these into place. want to double check and make sure that they're all level because sometimes one of them will like fall out of place just a little bit and that'll cause issues later if I solder all the legs down and I can't really easily force them back into their place. Cut off the excess of the legs.
Alright. <clears throat> that should be good. Now we need to attach the other... I swear I grabbed two Joy-Con stick connectors. Um. Oh, there it is. Good. There's flux. Alright, so these boards have all the parts soldered onto them, so now they're actually usable. Alright, we'll bring the front of the case back over. Um, let's start... I think the D-pad board will be easier, so we'll start with that one. Um, where did I put my speakers? grab them and now they're probably sticking to something pain to figure out what they're sticking to though yeah I got no clue where they went I'm gonna go grab some more Thankfully, I've got a baggie full of speakers. One, two. All right, we're not going to lose these. And I think these boards, the speaker slots might be a little bit off. So I might have to wire these manually. We'll see. Um, okay. We need Joy-Con joysticks. I'll be using black ones for this portable. I'm hoping these, uh, oh. Okay, before I put the joysticks in, one handy thing to do if you're using uh, M2 screws which is what the rest of this portable uses, is you want to scrape out the inside of uh, the screw hole of the Joy-Con joystick just a little bit. Because they're a little bit too... The holes are a little bit too small for 2mm screws. But uh, if you just scratch away at the inner ring for a few seconds, make yourself a slightly bigger hole, and then it'll work great. Uh, I think this should be good. In place. Then I need more two by four screws. and 1.6M is what the WSP uses. That's probably smarter. Um, 
I've snapped like the little ring outside of the uh, like for the screw a couple times. Usually it still works fine because uh, it just like slides around the uh, upper part or it doesn't slide around the upper part of the screw so it still holds it in place. It just looks a little ugly. But uh, yeah, if you use 1.6 millimeters, that's probably the move. All right, come on. Even then, even with scraping them out, two millimeter screws are kind of kind of a tight fit. Did I get it? I don't know if I did. I wonder if these screw holes aren't lined up right. I don't think I've changed these since like the first Louie. They've always worked fine, so I don't know what the issue is. look to be level. I don't know what the issue is. Maybe a new screw will fix all my problems. Oh, there we go. I think that should be good enough. Okay, and then the D-pad, which is right here, should just drop into place and work. Fold this up, and then Okay, let's drop a couple screws in and then I'll check and see if the speaker is lined up properly or not. I should get a beep here. Oh, I do. Nice. Okay, so that speaker is lined up properly. Might have been the other side that I had to manually run wires on. Before I screw in too many screws, I should uh, make sure the D-pad feels good. Okay. Yeah, it feels fine. It feels a bit, a little bit tighter than I'm used to for Louis D-pads, but uh, feels even all the way around. Sweet. Then switch joystick. Let's make sure the FFC cable lines up. Oh, come on. Okay. 
There it is. Perfect. Okay, great. So now that that's all done. I'm gonna get this side installed, which is a little bit more of a pain because I need to test and make sure that uh, all the buttons actually feel good. Um, oh, I don't have a start button. Let me go grab one real quick. Alright, hopefully this one will work because it's the only one I've got. So, it's a bit thin on the bottom, so I might have to uh, puff it up a bit with uh, some paper, but we'll make it work. It does have a couple resin bubbles in spots where there shouldn't be resin, so I'm going to scrape those out real quick. Good enough. So I'm just dropping all of our buttons and do a quick test fit. I did a little bit of work on all the buttons yesterday, just preemptively, because it's really boring to watch. It's basically me just putting buttons in and then pressing them and being like, hmm, that feels bad. Or, ah, this feels good. Which uh, it's kind of hard to, uh, it's a bit like playing a rumble mini game. You, uh, it doesn't really hit. You're not playing the game. But I've at least got the buttons all down to the right height. I might have to do a bit of scraping to uh, clean them up a bit. Uh, I'm going to put the other joystick in first, actually. Because right now it's tilting to one side. And if I put the joystick in, it'll stop doing that. Uh, where's the knife? Ah, oh, here it is. Alright, we're going to spin out the little screw holes in it like we did with the other one. I might need to shave off a little bit around the joystick. I think that was one of the changes I meant to make after building the last Louie and I just forgot. It's a little bit too tight for the joystick to fit in nicely. Can't really try and force it in there. I'm going to snap the case if I push any harder. Okay. Well, we could fix this just by kind of scraping along here for a little while.
All right, I don't think that was enough, but I'll give it another shot. That exacto knife blade is getting really dull. I don't, oh wait. Oh, I do have more. Okay, hang on, let's speed this up just a bit. Oh, yeah, that's a lot better. All right. This won't be something you'll have to do on the final... Uh, when I release the files. Hopefully, I'll, I'll readjust this hole so it's the, uh, the proper size. Because I had to do this on a few Louis, and it's a pain. Cut through the case. Okay, is that enough for the joystick to fit? Oh, hey, okay. That's wonderful. Now let's not accidentally pop it out again. Um, okay, these screws don't wanna go in. Not being able to screw these in isn't really a big deal. Uh, because the circuit board that goes over the top of it is perfectly flush with the joystick. Uh, so these screws aren't really useful for anything, but I just feel better knowing that there's more than just the circuit board between uh, the joystick falling out. Oh, jeez. Alright. Yeah, these screw holes aren't lining up, so we're just going to stick to the circuit board for now. Oh, uh, let's check and see if I'm going to need to adjust the speaker at all. Hmm, maybe not. It's a bit sketch. I might be able to make it work. It's not making contact at all. I feel like this should be connecting at least a little bit. I guess not. Okay, so we're just gonna need to manually wire those. No big deal. Um, we'll do that now while the speaker is still exposed. Um, for speakers, you usually wanna use 30 gauge wire because um, they have a little bit more power going through them. Rev2 inbound. Yeah, I'm gonna need to update these circuit boards. Honestly, I just need to design these speaker pads to be bigger. Cause there have been multiple times where I just designed something that's just like slightly off and it doesn't work. But it's only ever with the speaker holes. It almost never happens with something else. Okay, RS plus, we'll have plus be red. And 
Minus B green. Oh, that hot glue gun is still hot. I don't want to unplug it though in case I need it for something. Now, soldering to speakers is always interesting because speakers are magnetic and the soldering iron is magnetic, so they like to stick sometimes. Which uh, startled me the first time it happened because I was soldering to a speaker and it just jumped up and got stuck to my soldering iron. Uh, was RS Plus the bottom one? Yes, okay. Okay, that should hold. All right. Now I can install that board and not have to worry about the speaker. Man, okay. There we go. A uh, start button is going to need a bunch of paper to get propped up to the right height. Let's figure that out now. Oh, well, that looks pretty good. lined up. All right, I need to put in a couple screws to get a feel for it. Or well, at least an accurate feel. These two should be enough. All right. A feels good. X feels good. B feels good. Y feels good. Now I'm going to try and press them from a bunch of weird angles to see if... Oh, okay, we've got some scraping on X if you push it from this way. Y has a bit of scraping in the bottom. Okay. And the start button needs to be boosted quite a bit. Okay. Ah, uh, unsubbed again? I don't know how I'm supposed to keep you, man. Okay. 
Well, it's nice that they already feel pretty good. Sometimes getting these to, to fit nicely is just a pain. But we'll do a bit of a bit of scraping on this guy. It was the bottom that was snagging a bit and pushed from a weird way. Scraping a bit. Good. Honestly, the A button is the only one that matters. You don't need any of the other buttons. That's why I bother fixing them. But I'm basically just scraping little bits of the button off to uh, help reduce some of the spots where it's rubbing along the case. DS light buttons tend to do this less than uh, switch buttons because DS light buttons have that nice like guide thing coming off of it which helps more than the weird I don't know ridges that switch buttons have got probably another reason why this portable would benefit from just switching to DS light buttons altogether okay and then let's try a little bit of paper. For the start button to boost it up a bit. be a bit much, but we'll give it a shot. Wait, what is... Oh, there's a screw. We should get that out of there. Try and not wear down the screw post too much. We'll use the other two screws from before. Oh, I actually need a six millimeter screw now. All right. I don't know if that really worked. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull that out and just use the other two again.
Okay. V buttons fixed. Y button good. Okay, I think we're all set. Oh wait, start button. Okay. Three, oh, maybe I should do one more because the start button can get stuck. Okay. I'm gonna apply a little bit more paper and then we're gonna super glue the buttons to the tacks. Uh, so that way they don't rotate. Because switch buttons tend to do that, which is annoying. Try to get five folds into this guy. Okay, one more time, and then we're screwing this board on for good. Okay, start button doesn't get stuck anymore. Buttons are all straight up and down. So we're going to very carefully gonna put a drop tiny tiny drop on each of these guys Okay, and now we screwed the board down for good and hope that we didn't mess up the buttons too much. So once they're super glued in place, it's, uh, it's a lot trickier to make any sort of adjustments. All right, that being said, I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to finish this portable tonight. I am, I'm getting real tired real quick. It's only 9 p.m., but I think I've been going for six or seven hours. I guess closer to six. But I'll try and get as much done as I can. 
If I can't finish it all tonight, I'll do another stream. Probably not tomorrow. Tuesday or... Definitely Wednesday. I could definitely do Wednesday. I don't have much going on. But during that stream, I'd finish it up. Do some play testing. Make sure it's all good. Fortunately, I don't have any coffee on deck. Feel scam, this isn't a single sitting. Yeah, I may have overpromised on that front. Thought I could do it, but I was initially planning to get started much earlier than I did. Uh, my 3D printer was having issues. I couldn't get some of the parts printed. But, oh well. Oh, that's my, remember to put out the trash today. Ah, uh, wires damaged and wind. I mean, are you sure Spectrum, Spectrum is telling the truth? From, my, from what I understand, them going down is just the norm. I think I'll probably try to get the front half all assembled. So when I get to the point where I would start connecting halves, I think that's where I'll, where I'll end. If I hadn't trimmed the Wii on stream, I probably could have finished it tonight, but I really wanted to do that. Um, so now we're connecting the speakers up to uh, the audio amp, which is pretty straightforward. Each speaker has a positive and a negative, um, so you just want to make sure you uh, solder those in the right order. You won't break a speaker uh, if you get the order mixed up, but... Uh, your audio will sound a little weird if they if both of your speakers aren't oriented properly. Oh geez. Yeah, 50 miles per hour is a lot. I think we had like 25 mile per hour winds here, and that was miserable. 50 is that is fast. Okay, right speaker is all attached. We'll do the left speaker now. 30 gauge wire again. is the green wire again. Uh, 
Oh, let me double check that the speaker is still lined up properly. Okay, good. Makes my life easy. All right, I might actually just call it here. I am, I am drained. Um, essentially, all that's left to do is to run a bunch of wires from over here to over here. Um, get the screen wires all connected, and then it'll mostly just be a matter of connecting the two halves together. So I think I'll do a second stream probably Wednesday. I've got classes on Tuesday. Um, so if I'm like full of energy Tuesday night, then I might do it then, or I might just do it Wednesday afternoon when I've got time. So sorry to anyone who came expecting to see the end tonight. I was hopeful to pull that off, but it's going to just be like three more hours of silence if I try to do that and I'd rather not do that. So, um, oh, actually before I end, let's get, let's get the batteries connected real quick. Actually, hmm. All right, the dilemma is that I'd like to charge the batteries. Ah, whatever. We'll just connect the batteries up for now. This way I can get them charging. And then when I do my stream on Wednesday, uh, once we get it all up and running and working and all that good stuff, uh, we can then just get into testing with some gameplay. So. That'll help it be more complete than just uh, more soldering. Although there will be more soldering next time. So usually I'll wait to solder the batteries together until uh, the very end. Because you don't want live power in anything while you're work soldering to a portable. You want to save that for last. So uh, before I get started next time, I'll be sure to uh, disconnect uh, power from the PMS light. And then we should be all good. Oops. 
Unless your name is DJ Mills, power all the things. He did have some power to him, that's for sure. Okay, that seems to be good. Uh, let's see, we won't trim this down for now. We'll just leave it at full length. Okay, that should be good enough for now. Watch out for the magic sparks. I'm trying to avoid the magic sparks if I can. All right. Oh, uh, here, let's try turning it on real quick. I won't be able to see much beyond the fan turning on, but... All right, I don't know if you can really see, but the fan is spinning, so that's good. That means that, at the very least, our power stuff is all connected properly. Um, so, at this point, I think I'm just going to get it charging. So, when I come back on Wednesday, batteries will be fully charged. We'll get the MX chip in, we'll get the controls wired, we'll get video and audio wired. Um, and then, yeah, we'll either do a live troubleshooting session or we'll do a live gameplay session. Hopefully the latter, but I'd say both are... Pretty likely. Um, let's see. And then USB-C charging. We'll just get it going. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Appreciate you guys coming by, watching, chatting. Helps make this more interesting. And uh, yeah, hope to see you back on Wednesday. See ya. All right. Should be live. Let's tell the people. Perfect. And then bang. All right. So didn't get this finished up on Sunday because I got tired and didn't feel like spending another two hours on it. Um, but off stream, I went ahead and I did a little bit of work on it. Um, I didn't do anything crazy. Uh, I just kind of did some general boring stuff that I'll point out so that if you're trying to follow this as like a guide, you can, uh, see what I did. So on the front piece here, um, I think all I added was these wires on the circuit boards. Um, these are just for controls. Uh, there's labels on the boards for what they do. You've got ground, you've got your stick and your D-pad. Uh, pretty straightforward. And then I'll show what I did to the back later. But, uh, yeah, shouldn't have missed much. Hey there, Apagamos. So, right now, I'm going to finish connecting up the controls to the other path. Um, and then we'll move on from there. So, I'll start with the voltage stuff. So the screen and the driver board, uh, or the driver board screen uses 3.3 volts in ground, and we also need that voltage for the GC Plus and the joysticks. 
Uh, so I'll point out a couple spots you can pull those from. Um, over here, the easiest ground pad is just this massive one right here. So uh, that's where I always connect up to. Hey there, Randy. But yeah, I think there's probably between two and three hours of work left. Um, it's mostly just connecting this stuff and then running video and audio and a couple other things between the halves. So it should be pretty quick. And then I got the batteries all charged up. So assuming nothing goes wrong, we should also be able to do some uh, testing. Should be fun. Just gotta wait for my iron to heat up. Just clean up a bit while I wait. Um, this one will go up for immediate sale. Uh, it no one's claimed it, or I have, no one uh, has commissioned it specifically. So I'll probably post it, if everything goes well today and I actually get it finished and all that, uh, I might get it posted either tomorrow or Friday, depending on when I have time to get good pictures of it. I usually like to go uh, like outside and get nice pictures, but it's been snowy and cold lately, so uh, most of my pictures I had to do on my light box, which is nice, but you don't get quite the same uh, range of pictures. Hey, MP3. How's it going? Oh, and off stream, on stream last time I accidentally broke uh, one of the capacitors on the Wii, which was important for outputting video. So I replaced that capacitor and uh, I ran a quick test and the back half is working. So the Wii boots up, the batteries provide power. Uh, so that's good. Uh, so we shouldn't have to spend too much time troubleshooting that, unless it broke in the last few minutes, but uh, let's hope not. Okay, and then for 3.3 volts on this driver board, let's see, I'll zoom in a bit if I can. So up here on this regulator, this top leg, there's a trace that kind of winds around here, connects to these pads, um, and that's the easy spot to wire 3.3 volts to. So I'm just going to connect... This 3.3 volt wire, wire right here, because that's the closest spot. And should keep it nice and easy. Hey there, Connor. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I haven't figured out much out. I haven't figured out a whole lot of things in regards to portabilizing. There's good guides out there, uh, forums. You're able to look at what other people have done. And so, uh, for the most part, I just follow what other people have done and then design my own cases and designs and just do that. All right, and then I've got another 3.3 volt wire over here. So I'm just gonna bring it around to the same spot or the same trace, but I'll connect it to where this capacitor was. Because doubling up two wires on one pad is a bit of a pain. So I'd like to avoid that if I can. Are these the bad clippers? Yes. Okay, let's not use these. I appreciate it, Connor. It's a lot of fun. Hey Shank, how's it going? Oh, sounds like you're staying busy. But uh, yeah, I started this Louis build on Sunday. I was gonna try to do it all in one day. I did the trim and everything on stream, which was nice. Uh, but then like seven hours in, I was just super tired. So uh, finishing it off today. Um, okay, I think one of these is a ground pad. Let me check it out. That audio amp is sexy? Yes, I, uh, I am a big fan of the U-amp. Okay. 
This third leg from the bottom is ground. There's probably other grounds littered in along here, but I'll save those in case I need them for video. Hey there, JP. Uh, yeah, I updated it like, I updated the Louie design like four months ago. I think back in like October. Um, but there were like a few issues with it and I forgot to like write down what I needed to change. And so a few months went by and I was like, oh, I never uploaded the files and I don't remember what I needed to fix. So rebuilding one now. I've got a few issues that I'm going to fix, but uh, yeah, then I'll re-upload the files. Uh, yeah, it's pretty clean. I really like these circuit boards since it can just interface with the GC Plus and the Switch joysticks. It's a lot easier than uh, trying to have 3D printed parts and mounting the orange tacks to them. Okay, so that's voltages for the control boards down. So now I just need to w route all the controller wires over here to the GC Plus. So all the controls are on this right side. So should be nice and easy. Uh, I tried to route the wires underneath the screen driver board cable just so that it hides most of the wire. Looks a little bit cleaner. But you can route them however you want if you're building your own. Okay. Oh, okay. So this one is SY, oh this wire is barely long enough, okay. Yeah, Bitbuilt is the place uh, where you can go to get all the resources for building portables. That's where I started, I think it was over five years ago at this point. Still the best place for that stuff. Hope so too. Thanks for stopping by, Shank. Oh, so are you trying to make like your own GameCube controller from scratch? Like the physical controller part or the uh, like the software side of it? Because if you're just trying to make like a custom uh, GameCube controller, then this board uh, is something you'll want called GC Plus 2.0 and uh, it's basically just a GameCube controller emulator uh, and something really small and easy to use. Uh, it's what I use in all my projects. If you're trying to build your own from like software um, then that'll be a little bit trickier but yes everything. Are you the same guy that was talking about that last time? I remember discussing GC Plus stuff last stream. I don't remember if that was you or someone else, but... Yeah, it should be, should be a fun project. Okay, this one is left. Um, I don't have, uh, like a public Discord. I've got a Discord where I post like updates about my projects to Patreon, um, but I don't really want to manage a public one. I've usually whenever I enter like a uh, a YouTuber based Discord server, uh, I don't know, it's not something I want to manage. But yes, there is a bit built Discord as well. Uh, so if you're looking for like general modding stuff. Uh, and if you just have like a quick question, that's a that's a good spot for that. Okay. Uh, 
All right, three more. Uh, this one is for the right D-pad button. Let's see if we can cut a little bit of it off. Oh, one other thing I need to fix with the D-pad. Um, usually a D-pad has like a little piece in the middle of it. Um, so that way you can't press like left and right at the same time. And I forgot that I need to like 3D print one of those for the D-pad. Uh, or else it feels a little bit weird. It feels okay. But uh, I think uh, when I upload the files, I'll add like a little nub you can print. That'll let you uh, raise the D-pad up just a bit. All right. Now onto the down wire. Okay, that wire looks to be about the right length. Oh, cool. I enjoy watching Melee. Um, but never been too motivated to actually pick it up and play it myself. I played a lot of Smash Ultimate when it came out, and I tried a little bit of like the competitive scene in my area, but not really for me. I avoid Twitter personally. Yeah, that's fair. This one's up, right? Yep. Learned enough about it to beat all my friends and then stopped. Yeah, that's about where I'm at. I like, I know how to air dodge. And I feel like that's uh, that's uh, when you're playing against people who don't play it much, that's about all you need to know, but yeah, I don't know enough to actually be good at the game. But I do enjoy playing Ultimate a lot. It is fun. Um, okay, so that's almost all the controller stuff. One last thing I need to do is put in the Z button. Um, and so this one uses an orange squishy tact. You need to cut the little legs off the bottom of it so that you only have two legs on one side. Um, and then you also need to take the other legs and then shorten them a lot. So that way you just have like a little bit left to solder to. Just something like that. And there should be just enough space between the button and the Z button for it to uh, just slide in here. Looks like we're good on. And then just press the button a few times. Make sure uh, the Z trigger is all good. Seems like it is. Melee is a blast to watch and I understand the tech, but no patience to learn how to do it. Yep, I'm the exact same way. Love watching top level Melee. Summit was sick. I guess that was a few months ago now. Ultimate Summon was Summit was a couple weeks ago. And that one was fun too, but yeah, seems like a lot to learn and I don't have any like close friends that are super into melee, so although it is cool that there's like a uh, slippy now, so if you want to get good at it, you actually have like a decent online thing to use because uh, I played Smash Ultimate online a lot. Like for the first year the game was out and then a couple weeks ago I tried to go like back and play some because I was like, ah. People complain about the online a lot, but it didn't really bug me, and I could tell. I could tell it was bad. It was rough. Oh, happy to hear you found me through the GameCube portable video. That one was very happy with how that video turned out. And next video should only be a couple months away. Hopeful to not have another six month to a year gap between a video. 
because the project is a little bit simpler, but uh, the video itself will be the hard part. We'll see. Melee net play is poggies. Yep, that's what I've heard. I think I've I think I've heard that uh, like it's better to play Smash Ultimate through an emulator and like connect over like Ryu Jinx. I think, which is crazy that that is somehow less latency than uh, trying to play Nintendo Zone online. But yeah, the video is doing really well. I was looking at the stats last night, and it's my best performing video, barely. Uh, the Wee Boy Color did about as well. Which is good, because the Wee Boy Color was a really successful video. Although, I rewatched it last night, and uh, I don't know. So, uh, the combination of my mic and the way I was talking was... That video could have been so much better. If I could go back and redo it, I would, but... That's all right. The video did what it needed to. It got a lot of views. I still get several DMs a day from people asking if they can buy a Wee Boy Color, which is unfortunate, but that's all right. Yeah, I watched that one too. I do like how my YouTube channel is a very good, uh, it's a good walkthrough of uh, how I've improved at making videos because each one is better, which is nice like to keep that up. Yeah, Switch Online servers are just rough. One of my friends got Mario Maker recently, so fired up the Switch for that as well, and it works. It works all right in Mario Maker. His internet isn't great, and so it lags a bit, but when you're just playing for fun, it's not a big deal. When I'm fighting a Lucas, though, and there's one stock left, and he's camping me out with PK Freeze, the lag tilts me a little bit more then. Alright, I'm glad the improvement was noticeable to people other than me. I did find a few more parts for a Wee Boy Color the other day. I don't really know what the story on it is. I just have like this yellow case with Wee Boy color parts in it. So I need to test and see if those boards work. Because if they do, uh, then I can probably build one more pretty easily. But if not, then it may be a long time before I can do another one. I've considered redesigning it to use four layer tech boards. Because if I can do that, um, then there's no reason why I couldn't keep building them. But the issue is that I need very skinny boards for the four layer, er, for the Wee Boy color. And so I'd have to like use LiPo batteries instead of 18650s. And then I'm a little bit worried about heat because I'd essentially have to put the PMS on top of the batteries, which is bad. So we'll see. Okay, so Z button's in place. I'm probably going to add some super glue to this later uh, just to be sure it holds on. Um, but for now we'll leave it loose because it's hard to tell if this tack switch is all the way in. There's like a little like a rivet for it and I can never remember if this is deep enough. And if it's not in that little dip, then it might uh, be too close to the batteries. So we'll check on that later. Um, let's see, is there anything else I can do on the front? Oh, we can back out a bit now. Um, we're going to wait for video. All right, I think we'll move to the back half for a minute. Um, so since last time I did a little bit of work, um, not much though. I fixed the capacitor that we lost last time. Um, I tested the Wii motherboard and it boots, which is good. That makes my life a lot easier. Um, I added a couple of wires. These are just for ground and 3.3 volts. Those will go to the screen. I added the controller data wire. Uh, that point is just up here. Oh, and I sanded down the MX chip board. So we will go ahead and install that. Um, yeah. 
So I'll start by putting down the wires for the MX chip goes. It's been a little while since I did this. Yeah, the same thing happened with my Nintendo Switch online subscription. I, uh, I think I played it at like Christmas and then I didn't touch it until like last month and it had expired between then. All right, I'm just loading up um, like the Wii trimming guide real quick. Because I don't remember exactly where the MX vias are. Or I think I remember where they are. But uh, I should probably just check to be safe. Okay, wait. There we go. Browser was lagging out. Okay, so the MX relocation is pretty easy. Uh, the tricky part is that there's just four vias you gotta solder to. Um, but it's not too bad. Okay, it is those. Alright, so we're gonna grab four wires. I play my custom firmware 3DS far more than my Switch. I I don't know. I've never been I've never used my 3DS much. I bought one. I actually traded a portable for one way back in the day. Um it was a broken-ish portable. They wanted it for parts. Um and then I modded it, put all sorts of stuff on it. And then I just didn't use it much. I tried playing uh Well, what was the Pikmin game for it? Was it like 321 Pikmin or something? With some weird name. Tried playing that, didn't really like it. Tried playing a Pokemon game, didn't really like it. Tried a few others, but I just use my Switch a lot more. Uh, software for circuit boards. Looks like MP3 might have answered you. I use Eagle. Um, but if you're just getting into it, I'd recommend KiCad. Um, it's a free software. You don't need to have like a student license for it. Um, it's about the same difficulty to learn and it's just got better options overall. Um, so yeah, if you want to learn circuit board design, I'd, uh, I'd pick up KiCad. That's a, that's a better one to use. How can I mod my 3DS to get games for it on the system? Um, I'm not sure what the methods for that look like nowadays. Um, I'd run some Google searches, uh, check for some YouTube videos. Uh, when I did it like four years ago, there were a lot of good guides on it. So I'd imagine uh, they'd be more help than I am. Yeah, Eagles, it's a uh, Autodesk product. Um, so they use, they have Inventor, Fusion 360. Um, I use Inventor quite a bit. Um, but Fusion 360 is one that's probably better to learn on. Okay. Pin 11 is right next to U10. Oops. Oh, yep, I do recognize 3ds.hacks.guide. Custom DS firmware lets you play all sorts of GBA and DS games. Oh, okay. Is, is 3ds able to play GBA games natively? Because I'm pretty sure it can do DS games natively. So I'd assume it's kind of like a Wii U, Wii GameCube situation where you can just run down the line of everything it's backwards compatible with. You know, I'm not going to try to pronounce that name because I've got no clue what that's supposed to be, but uh, thanks, man. What is Maya? I'm not familiar with that one. I only use Inventor, Fusion 360, and uh, Eagle from uh, Autodesk. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's kind of what I expected. 
Nintendo isn't very good at uh, putting entire libraries on the eShop. Okay. Let's have pin 12. Right, please. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, let's have pin 12 be green. So that way we're consistent. D modeling for video game assets oh okay so is it more akin to blender rather than like a uh professional well not professional i guess more like engineering e cad that sounds nice Got some flux residues blocking the via, so I'm trying to clear those out. Alright, I give up. Let's just put down some more flux and try to get a pad going. Alright, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'll, you can always trust Nintendo to release things in an odd way. Alright, so the wires for MX data are all in place. Um, oh, I should add voltage wires real quick. Um, I'm pretty sure you can use 34 gauge uh, wire for the MX chip power. It's it's a very low powered chip. So no need to use anything too thick. Um, oh, uh, I guess I should explain what the MX chip does. So the MX chip is just kind of an odd chip that just stores uh, like some weird font files. Uh, it acts as uh, it helps manage the clock of the Wii. So that way uh, it like maintains time even when the system is shut off. Um, and so if you want those functionalities uh, along with some uh, virtual console stuff requires the MX chip currently. So if you want any of that, then uh, you have to relocate the MX chip. So it's not a required relocation. You can run all GameCube and Wii games just fine uh, without it, except for like Animal Crossing. That won't really work without the MX chip because you'll need the clock. Um, but I'd say it's worth doing uh, most of the time. Some of the other relocations, uh, like Bluetooth, I never do Bluetooth anymore, um, unless someone specifically requests it. Um, Wi-Fi is pretty much never worth it, unless you've got a really specific game you want to play with it. SD card slot, I don't think anyone has put an SD card, uh, like the Wii's original SD card slot, on a portable in like four years. So, 
Most of those you don't need to worry about if you're looking at the guide and going, oh, that's a lot of stuff I need to relocate. Most of it is very optional uh, and not important. Oh, is it different? Oh yeah, I've got, I've got Slavin fashion art. Am I using like third party stuff? Shoot me like the, the link of the seller you used. If there's better stuff out there, then I'd love to use it. Cause I think I've been, I've been using the seller's stuff for as long as I've been using Flux. So if there's better stuff out there, I, uh, I'd love to have it. Alright, power wires for MX done. Okay, so now we need to do some prep work on this piece of the Wii that we cut out. Um, wait, are there, are there multiple spots on my camera now? Oh, okay. I'll have to, I'll have to figure out what's going on there. Pretty sure Blender has a different base modeling philosophy though. I don't like sculpting. Gotcha. That's interesting. I've never done any sort of like modeling in like that sector, but done a lot of CAD work. Oh yeah, thanks for the link. I'll check that out. Heard that someone could take a Nintendo Wii U controller and mod it so you can play all systems on it. Um, that's probably possible. Um you probably just need like receivers if you're using it on like old consoles. But I know there are adapters to get uh, like Xbox and PS4 controllers working on Wii U and Switch. So, not too surprising. Okay, so voltage on the MX chip is a little bit weird because it's got multiple 3.3 volt spots that aren't all connected together. Uh, so we need to connect those. Uh, the easiest way to do it is there's pin 24 and pin 25 which are the fourth and fifth one down from this line. And so if you connect those two together with a blob of solder, just kind of like that, hopefully that's visible. And then if you run a short wire to pin 27, which is the second one from the top up here, then that should connect all the 3.3 volt spots on the board together, so that you only need to run one wire. Um, which is nicer than trying to run like four wires up. Um, we'll bridge it with a bit of green real quick. So I made a PC client for the Wii U gamepad. Oh, I think I, I tried using that years and years ago when it was newer and I always had issues with it. Um, I think it was partially because I was living at my parents' house and our Wi-Fi router has like some weird like filtering stuff on it. And I think that was blocking like the connection or something. But I always wanted to try that, see if I could get it to work. Cause yeah, that would be an easy remote, like a uh, PC gaming thing that would be fun. Got to follow, I was following my old account. Hey there, Aaron. I think I recognize your name from the BitBuilt server. Cause since your name starts with an A, you're always at like the top of like the um, people list. So that's what I know you from. Hey there, Faye39. I guess that could be Iron39. I don't know which. Right? Is that the Iron? Or am I just way off? I haven't taken chemistry in four years? Five years? I did not do a good job of memorizing the, memorizing the uh, tables. Oh, I was right. Okay. Glad my memory is good for something, aside from vias on wheeze. Okay, so now I've got that little wire going. Oh, you can't even see it. Should have used red wire. Okay. 
Um, so now oh, I want to do this before I streamed. We need a coin cell. Let me go figure out where I've got one real quick. Here's one. So before you install the coin cell, you should run a quick check, make sure it's still got voltage. Uh, because sometimes they're completely dead. And they should be around the three volt mark. Um, they could be like 2.9, 2.8 volts and it should be fine. But, oh, I need to replace the battery in my multimeter. When my battery gets low, it reads voltages as higher than they are. So it's telling me that this battery is like three and a half volts, which it shouldn't be. But uh, hopefully it's just, it should just be off. I measured the batteries yesterday and it said they charged like four and a half volts, which isn't correct. Hey, you're welcome, Ryan. I know it's, I've been there. It is sometimes tough to uh, find modding stuff online if you don't know where to look. When I first tried to get into portables, I found like four like dead forums before I found one with that people actually on it. Okay, so then we need to solder to this cell, which is bad. What you really should do is you should use a connector. Um, there are like thin connectors that you can like slot one into and then they've got solder tabs on it. And that's the proper way to do it, but I don't have any of those on hand currently. So we're just gonna solder directly to it like a maniac. Uh, the battery gets really toasty when you solder to it. It's definitely not good for it. Uh, so when you do solder to it, solder to it briefly. If your joint doesn't stick, let it cool off for a while before you try again. Uh, because these things can blow up. Not in a, like, destroy property, like, blow up. But, uh, in a, the back cap will fly off. And, uh, startle you quite a bit. I've never done it, but uh, I know Crazy Gadget did it once, and the pictures look scary. So uh, just be, uh, be a little bit careful when soldering these. I do keyboard design stuff, so I've seen it interesting the parallels between the keyboard and portable community. Yeah, custom keyboards are really cool. I tried to get into it. Actually, I can show it real quick. One sec. to build my own keyboard last year I think might have been two years ago now and it didn't really turn out all that well um, but I went to the effort of modeling custom keycaps for every single cap and uh, they're cool keycaps uh, if you like leave your fingers on them for a while uh, they turn from pink to gold which is really cool um, but the switches are kind of cheap feeling I got some bad switches um, and I've just never bothered to uh, build another one that's higher quality. Thought about just commissioning one and having a nice one. Time for attempt two? Yeah, someday I'll, I'll give it another go. But part of the issue with my own keycaps is that they aren't super high quality either. Like they aren't a consistent fit on the caps and some of them uh, wobble a bit. So I need to get a hold of some better, uh, some better molds than the ones I made, but those just look like Gap Browns to me. By a kit, nice cap. So yeah, I think they're the cheapest Browns like out there. Like I bought the uh, the actual kit from some website. I can't remember the name of it. It was some Chinese website. It took like three months for anything to arrive because it was like beginning of COVID. So it was a bit tough, but it was a fun build. Soldering on it was nice and easy. Just had to solder a bunch of switches on. Oh, uh, what 3D printer do I use slash recommend? Um, so I'm a big fan of Prusa printers. 
Um, I used a Prusa 2.5S for a couple years. I upgraded to the 3S about a year ago. Um, and you can't go wrong with Prusa printers. They're really good, very consistent, easy to build. Only downside is that they're pretty expensive. Uh, I think the 3 is around $1,000. Um, so if you're doing a lot of 3D printing, highly recommend it. If you're just doing like a one-off, um, then you can get a, or you don't have a thousand dollars to spend. Um, Ender 3 is also a solid beginner printer. Um, it's not quite as smart as the Prusa. Uh, it doesn't have all the same features, uh, but you still get high quality prints off of it. Uh, as long as you're willing to put some work in. So, P yeah, P-R-U-S-A. And then the other one is Ender 3, spelled how you'd expect it to. Going to be doing a lot. Yeah, so if you can afford the Prusa, uh, just go for it. I That's what most portabilizers use. Uh, and I've never heard anyone complain about them. So they're very nice. And if you buy a Prusa, you get a pack of gummy bears with it. So something to sweeten the deal. What are your thoughts on JLC 3D printing? Been wanting to test it out for a couple projects. Um, I haven't used it personally yet. Um, I know a couple people have bought, uh, like portable cases, uh, with like, they're just base, like white model. And I think the results were decent. Um, I think some of them had, uh, some warping issues on thinner parts. Uh, but I think the quality was pretty good. Um, I definitely want to try it out at some point. Um, I'm hoping they add, like, color options, like PCBWay's got. Because, uh, I love the dyed PCBWay, uh, cases. But, uh, they are pricey. I ordered, or I need to order, uh, a case that the same, that's the same size as the project I'm working on now. And it's, I think it was, like, 230 bucks for, for it to be all clear and dyed. So, it's pricey, but looks so good. Literally just put my MK3 Plus last weekend. Nice. Was an Ender 3 owner before? Yeah. That seems to be the consensus for most people. I know some people who have like tuned their Ender 3s and like upgraded them a bit. And they're a really nice printer if, uh, if you're patient and willing to work with your tools. But, uh, I get frustrated when my 3D printer isn't working properly, and so I need I need to play on easy mode, or else I'll be frustrated and miserable. Okay, so I applied some Captain Tape around the battery, uh, because you don't want this just like free-floating giant thing of metal in the case. Um, so just make sure it's on there pretty tight. Uh, and so then we're going to solder the positive end of the battery to the underside here. There's a little test pad right here, and that's where battery plus goes. Um, hang on, I need to figure out I need to figure out the placement for this real quick. So I usually just mount the MX chip onto the back of the Wii motherboard. There's a nice flat-ish spot right here. So I'll usually put the MX chip right here and then drop the battery on right under that. Something like that. Um, and then if you orient the MX chip like this, so that uh, the chip is facing this way, um, then your data wires are just right up here at the top. So you're able to just bring them around and keep them nice and short. So that's what I'd recommend. Um, okay, so this, the positive battery wire can be really short because uh, it's just going right next to this thing. All right. Their PCBs have gotten better recently. Yeah, I haven't tried their uh, their purple solder mask yet. My experience with purple solder mask has been Oshpark, which uh, has been good for when I need tiny boards, but their quality is a bit a bit off if you're uh, trying to do a lot of stuff or some bigger stuff. But uh, they are nice for small stuff. I spent more time tinkering with my Ender than I did actually printing. Yeah, OSHA's pricing is is crazy. 
but I mean, they're US based, so I think that's where most of the price cost comes from. I don't think their shipping is super fast either, unless you pay a lot. Like, I think it's still quicker for me to order from PCBWay or JLC uh, than it is for me to use OSH most of the time. Yes, Prusa MK3S Plus. I think that's whatever the latest thing is. But, yeah, really good printer. Highly recommend. Okay, and then the other, the negative end of the battery just goes to ground. Um, I think these are ground pads. Yeah, this should be. This is where U10 was. So I'm just going to connect it up right here. Perfect. Yes, I would also second uh, the building it yourself thing. Um, Prusa is pretty easy to put together. Um, it's just a nice kit. They have really, really good instructions. Uh, it's essentially like building Legos, but uh, a bit more involved. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely worth the experience, I'd say. And it's quite a bit cheaper. Just don't put the extruder on backwards. Yes, make sure uh, make sure you don't do that. Okay, so we've got the battery soldered on, we've got the MX chip. So now we're gonna actually secure it to the back of the Wii. So I'm gonna plug in my hot glue gun since uh, uh, that's how we'll be attaching it. I have tinkered with uh, like pulling the components off of the MX chip board and just uh, putting them onto like a custom circuit board. But it's weirdly hit or miss, at least when I did it with the Wii Boy Color. Uh, Cause I made a custom MX chip board for that and sometimes it just doesn't work. And I'm not sure what the issue is there. I should probably chat with some people who know more about the MX chip and the Wii to figure that out. But yeah, so we'll just, so for most of my projects, I just use the original board and glue it onto the Wii. Oh, is it only 750 for a Prusa? That's not that's not as bad as I thought. I thought they were closer to a grand. Uh, Wii Boy Color Files are not open source. Um, just because the circuit boards I used were custom. And uh, the parts that you need to assemble them aren't available anymore because of the chip shortage. Um, if I ever redesigned the Wii Boy Color... Uh, to use like in stock stuff. I'll probably open source the files. Um, but yeah, right now they are. I can't even build Wee Boy colors. So, no point in releasing the files for now. Yeah, the culture around open source stuff. Uh, a lot of people open source their stuff. Uh, especially like, uh, like boards that are helpful. Like G Man has open sourced all of his Wii PMS stuff. Uh, Aurelio with GC Plus and RV Loader. People are usually pretty uh, open source friendly. Just uh, generally don't go on someone's thread and accuse them of uh, being mean for not sharing their uh, like 3D printable files. Those don't get shared a whole lot. Not so much out of like claiming the build, I would say more so because a lot of people's projects are just really hard to build. And then you get people who come in and are like, hey, I 3D printed a case for this really hard project. How do I build it? And so, but yeah, there's the GUI that's open source, the Louis, the G-Boy is kind of open source, but. Uh, four layer tech boards aren't open source. I think less so for money reasons and more so for uh, none of the parts are available right now because they got to jump on uh, ordering lots of uh, the voltage regulators and stuff. And now all those parts are out of stock for like the next two years. So yeah, those are all closed source as far as I'm aware. Um, but the old like UAMP and GC plus designs are still out there. Um, so you can always just use those as well. Uh, if you need something to model off of, 
Yeah, spoon feeding can be can be a little irritating. That's why bit built is nice. Uh, Cause we can route most people to that. And then you can tell pretty quickly if someone's like willing to put in the work to uh, like learn something that themselves or if they're uh, just looking to be spoon fed. But yeah, that's a part of, that's a part of being online. Yeah, I have seen, that does seem like a headache for controller stuff in Melee. Glad I don't have to deal with any of that. I ordered a, uh, a Panda controller when the Kickstart was up, because that looked really cool. But uh, they had to cancel that, unfortunately. So it's a bit of a bummer. Thankfully, I'm not too picky when it comes to my controllers. I just like them to be pretty. Okay, um, I don't want to start attaching wires until I glue it down. But, yeah, as far as positioning goes with this guy, make sure you don't cover up any of these vias over here. Uh, because we're going to need those for audio. And make sure you don't cover anything up that's up here. Uh, because we might need access to those later. But, uh, if you position it right about here, or even over here just a bit, you won't be blocking anything that you'll need later. Um, and yeah, I've already routed the USB wires over. Um, so those are going to be covered up a little bit, but I already tested and the USB relocation works. So I'm not too worried about that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was referencing MP3. Although that case is particularly, that's probably one of the hardest portable weeds out there to build just because you have to assemble that crazy circuit board yourself. Like, even I am a little bit daunted by that one. I'd be willing to give it a go, but I think most of the parts for it are out of stock, thanks to Chip Shortage Incorporated. But, yeah. Oh, uh, I'll connect the uh, ground wire for the screen control buttons real quick. Um, I messed up on this little board right here. Um, I forgot to add, like, a real ground pad to solder to. So uh, I had to connect it to like a weird spot. But uh, when I open source the files, there'll be a nice clearly labeled ground pad so that uh, other people won't have to deal with that. And then I'll just solder it to uh, the screw post down here. Yeah, true. I guess keyboards a little bit less uh, I don't know, it's weird to say that custom keyboards are less mainstream. Maybe they aren't. I guess I would... I don't know how to explain it. But, uh, yeah, you probably get fewer... Fewer people probably go down the, uh, the key custom keyboard rabbit hole than, like, watching portable Wii videos and going, Oh, I want to build one of those. Oh, I forgot about the Omega trim, too. Yeah, that's, that's brutal. I think after building the uh, Goom Waves, if you've heard of them, are ridiculously buggy. I've heard a little bit about them. Um, I think the guy who made them was actually on the BitBuilt forums for a bit. I remember seeing, I remember seeing him on there. So I recognized uh, Goom Waves when he released those. But yeah, I've heard, I have heard those are a bit of a mess. Yeah, oh, I don't think clamshell systems are as scary as people used to say they are. Um, you can literally take apart a DS hinge and understand how they work. I don't think I'd want to do one if I didn't have my own, like, 3D printer on site. Uh, just because there's a lot of, like, tweaking and stuff that you need to do to get the hinge working well. But if you've got your own 3D printer, it's not really any more complex than, like, a Louis Gui build. I think that difficulty was a little bit overhyped. And admittedly, I was part of the problem on uh, making it seem like clamshell systems were complicated. All right, so I'm just locking down the corners on this board. And then we'll add a bit, a little bit of glue 
Oh, I need another hot glue stick. Um, let me go find one real quick. Hey, I actually remembered where they were. All right. need to go too crazy with the hot glue just enough to hold everything in place a little bit oh oh well i've got this out um i'm gonna add just a tiny drop of it to these nand lines that i fixed last time and that should hold them in place in case i accidentally snag my tweezers along them or something What is the company on my GC Portal video that I recommended for professional 3D prints? Uh, that's PCBWay. So, full disclosure, I was sponsored by them. So, I was paid to say nice things. But genuinely, uh, if you want, like, painted cases and you don't feel like doing a paint job yourself, uh, they do a pretty good job. Um, as far as, like, something you can order from a company. Uh, their clear prints are really good. Their circuit boards are good. Um, so, yeah. They're, they're a solid company. I'm happy to recommend them. But uh, if you're getting your own 3D printer, uh, then yeah, you shouldn't need to use them too much. I think you attract a lot of people from Scott the Waz and other We Era YouTubers. Yeah, I think that's part of it. Um, I mean, that's part of the job. But... I mean, I'm a wee era child, so they are my people. Did you learn soldering and circuitry and stuff from college? No, I learned none of that from college. Uh, I did electrical engineering for two years in college, um, and I didn't really like it. Um, I really like building portables. Um, I like designing portables. I love all that. But uh, I don't, I don't love the technical stuff all that much. So, stop doing electrical engineering, and I'm doing marketing now. So, if you're interested in this stuff, don't go to college for it. Um, learn it on your own. Do your own hobby stuff. And if you really, really like it, and uh, the technical stuff interests you, then I'd say electrical engineering is something worth trying. But yeah, electrical engineering wasn't a good fit for me. But uh, I do love it as a hobby. No need for paint when clear is a superior console case. You have a point. Uh, clear cases are... They are very pretty. Uh, yeah, I've sold quite a few portables. A lot of Louis, a lot of Wee Boy colors. I'm trying to do less of it. Uh, just because it's kind of a pain. Uh, to like build them to order... And then uh, have to like repair them later if something does go wrong. Okay, hang on. I gotta open up the uh, the guide again to remember which is which. So it goes 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, let's see if I can remember that. Okay, so now we're gonna attach. I already forgot which one was 11. <laughs> Okay, right, one next to U10 is 11. So we're going to attach the MX data lines. And they just go... Oh, wait, I should start with 14 first. So this one... This one's 14. Okay. Do computer science. That's good if you like programming. I'm not a huge programming guy. Although it is something I'd like to know more of, because when it comes to like custom boards and stuff for portables, uh, coding is the big, the big jump. If you can code stuff, then you can do some pretty crazy stuff. So yeah, that is another really good skill to have. How much is a portable PS2? Uh, I don't sell portable PS2s. Uh, I don't know anyone who does really. I don't think G-Man is selling him right now. 
and I don't trust the China ones off of AliExpress. Those ones I've seen some issues with. I think they've made some improvements to them, but uh, those things are still a little risky. But yeah, I don't have any plans to sell PS2 portables uh, because a lot of the boards uh, that I used in the one I built for the video uh, aren't public or have some issues or aren't available for sale anymore. Uh, so, yeah, it'll probably be a while before I do anything PS2 related. The Wii is just, uh, it's a lot easier. And, uh, I didn't grow up with a PS2, so I'm not super motivated to do new stuff for it. But Wii and GameCube, uh, are close to my heart. So, I have to do a lot of stuff with them. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, that's right, MP3 remembers. Yes, yeah, so if you want to buy the PS2 Eclipse, you can do so for $1 million. Uh, yeah, I'll send you my cash app. We'll make it happen. But... Do I have any wild ideas in mind for the future? Um... Always. I'd like to put Wii Portables into various Wii accessories. I think that would be fun. Um, I'm particularly, I don't know if excited is the right word, but I think it would be very funny to put an entire like working Wii into a Wii Fit balance board and then put like the screen in between where your feet go and then just have a portable Wii Fit machine. That one, that's one that I'd like to do. Uh, not out of any sort of practicality, but just because I can. But I need to open up a Wii Fit board and uh, make sure that you can actually cut a hole there and not break anything. Remember when you said you were done with Wii Portables? Uh, I meant more so commissions on Wii Portables. I definitely still am going to build them, still do videos on them, but I'd like to work more into the uh, release a video, get a sponsor, and make money that way. Because I really enjoy the process of making a video, scripting a video, editing a video. It's a lot of fun. And the thing I got burnt out on with Wii Portables was just building them over and over and over again. Like, uh, here, let me send you a picture of what my life was like for about a year. Uh, gingerofmods.com. I took on about 25... Uh, why can't I, why can't I save this image? That's annoying. Here, I'll just, oh, I can just do this. Okay, so this is what my life looked like for about a year. This is 3, 6, 9, 12. This is 15 Wee Boy colors. There are about 10 that aren't shown on the picture. And I had to put those all together at once. This is what the circuit boards look like. And uh, it was miserable. Uh, I hated it. I hated building Wii portables. I had to assemble so many circuit boards, troubleshoot so many Wiis. Uh, it was bad. So that is why... Oh, not that one. This one. So that's why I try not to do commissions anymore. I like doing pre-builds better. Like this one I'll sell. Uh, but with the pre-built, I get to choose the theme of it. I get to work at my own pace. When it's done, I get all the money for it immediately. So, um, it's a much, it's a much nicer arrangement. And thankfully I've got enough people interested in buying them that I can put one up for sale and they sell very quickly. So I don't feel motivated to have to like accept every time someone wants to take a commission. Um, and I get to make pretty portables, which I really like because the Wee Boy colors, Every single person wanted white. All white. Not every single person. But more than half of the ones I built were all white. And it looks really good. I can't argue with that. But it gets really boring. So I get to do Super Nintendo theme. I get to do Majora's Mask now. It's a lot more fun. Yeah, Mega Burnout was what I hit. Like, there were periods of, like, months where I just didn't work on the commissions at all. Uh, it's kind of a bummer, because I wish I would have started, like, YouTube stuff more than, but, well, that's okay. You live and learn. 
now I understand. Uh, I understand the pain of commissions more. So I try to be nice when I'm commissioning stuff from other people. But yeah. How much was I, was I charging per commission? Uh, I think I was charging $12.50. Uh, like $1,250 for a Wee Boy color. Um, so I made decent money, but it also took me about a year to do all of those. So I probably could have worked a minimum wage job and <laughs> made about as much money, but that's all right. It was certainly cushier than being a janitor. What do my parents think of building portables? Um, I mean, when I first got into it, they didn't really understand what I was doing or what it was, but they were like, ah, whatever, he's, he's learning something. So they were pretty chill with it. And now I've turned it into a job of sorts. So they're supportive, they're good parents. I appreciate them, but yeah. Thankfully, they weren't uh, uh, particularly controlling or being like, oh, that's weird. Shouldn't do that. Oh, okay. Bridged a couple pins together. I'm trying to fix that. I remember seeing that one dude in all your socials comment sections acting for your GameCube portable. Yeah, that happens sometimes. But... People really like them. And you know what? If I could sell, if I could sell portables at a consistent rate and be happy with it, I would. But I cannot. All right. I think is this the last wire for MX? Oh, so there's two spots right here for ground and 3.3 volts. Let me make sure I've got the right ones. Before I kill something. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Anything that's repetitive should be manufactured? Yeah. What are all the laws surrounding this? So, I think MP3 basically nailed it. Um, it's a bit of a gray area, because realistically, if Nintendo sends me a cease and desist letter, like, what am I going to do? Hire a lawyer? I can't, I can't really fight back. Um, but so long as I don't sell portables with ROMs already installed on them, it's almost entirely legal. Um, it is technically illegal to sell consoles that have been modified uh, to run games off of like a USB drive instead of like stock firmware. But as far as I know, no one has ever been like sued or cease and desisted for that. Um, on consoles that weren't current gen. Like Nintendo did it with the Wii a lot back in like 20, 2009. Uh, they like raided homes of like uh, modders who were doing it. I think, I don't know if anyone actually got jail time or just cease and desisted and whatnot, but uh, I'm more scared for my YouTube channel than I am losing the ability to scare or er, to sell portables because there is certainly a world where Nintendo goes, yeah, we don't like that, and just shuts shuts down portable YouTube channels. But they raided homes, or, well, not Nintendo specifically, but I think there were a couple FBI raids related to, like, people modding Wiis. Um, I think they did it with Switch stuff in a couple places. I don't think SWAT teams, okay, maybe it wasn't, like, full-on raids, but it was... Government officials did search houses in some fashion. Nintendo is the mafia. In some ways, yeah, it's crazy. Like, uh, there was a really big Nintendo leak a couple years ago, and they had, like, documents of, like, how they, like, tracked, uh, like, modders of their consoles. Like, they had, like, one guy, I think he was doing, like, DS mods, and they, like followed him around, stalked his, like, address and stuff, like, planned to, like, send people to talk to him and, like, threaten him to stop. Like, threaten legal action, not, like, <laughs> break your knees action. But, yeah, it's crazy. They're, they're very serious about that stuff. They've never touched anything related to portables in, like, the 20 years that it's been a hobby. So, hopefully, it's things stay that way, but it's Nintendo. You never know. Um... 
Okay, I think that's that's like that's I think it's time to put the halves together. Um, there's not much left. I'm glad TX got shut down. They were a super sketchy company. Yeah, that's a fair take. I uh Yeah. I saw some of the stuff they did, and I was just like, ah. Modding is cool and all. Making products specifically for piracy reasons and marketing them for piracy reasons and making money off of that is that's pretty scummy. But, yeah. Weren't they using... I don't remember how much of their own stuff they developed and how much of it was open source. But I know they were, like, yoinking some open source stuff and marketing it as their own, which is... Uh, pretty lame. Not defending that at all. Yeah, luckily third-party controllers are illegal. Yeah, I don't think Nintendo's looking to shut down GameCube controllers anytime soon. Yeah, no, Nintendo does not play. They are very serious about their stuff. Um, yeah, they should hire those people, Not just not be bad that some random guy does it better than them. Uh, if Nintendo hired me, I would not be of much use to them. <laughs> There's a big difference between making something for the mass market and making something for a funny YouTube channel or to sell a couple of. Like, uh, I mean, it would be cool to try and go and design like an official portable Wii, but Nintendo doesn't want to have another portable console alongside the Switch. Uh, they want they want the Switch to be their main thing. So for now, I will just hope that I never speak to Nintendo. That is probably the best timeline for me. Barring some sudden uh, turn of uh, I don't even know what it, what it's called. Customs fraud is kind of lame. Is there a reason you solder directly to the batteries and only use a battery housing or something? Um, so I talked about it a little bit last stream, but if you are designing your own portable, use battery clips. Design them to use battery clips and all that uh, every single time. Um, the reason I don't is because I designed this case to be too narrow. So there's literally no space for battery clips at all. Like the triggers push down pretty close to the battery. Oh, that one's, I guess it's better to show on this one. The trigger pushes down almost into the battery and then you go straight into screw post. So there's no space for a clip here. Uh, back when I designed this, it was pretty standard stuff. It was like standard uh, like uh, method to just solder directly to batteries. And it's not dangerous, I would say. Uh, no one, as far as I know, has ever blown up an 18650 by soldering to it in the portabilizing scene. And trust me, there have been some bad soldering jobs. Um, you can damage them, you can lower the capacity a bit. Um, but it's not... It's bad practice, but it's not a dangerous practice, if that makes sense. But yeah, every portable I've designed since has used battery clips. Uh, they're way easier to work with, less sketchy. All that good stuff. Um, okay, let's actually do... I'm going to solder down the video wires now. Um, so we're going to start with the H-Sync and V-Sync lines for VGA. And so these are the hardest solder joints um, in a standard portable Wii. Um, because you have to solder directly to this video chip. I guess we can zoom back in. So this video chip has lots of little legs, and you have to solder directly to two of them. There's no other point you can solder to. So, uh, this soldering isn't required to build a portable Wii, um, but VGA video is the best video to work with on portable Wiis. It's the same quality as component, but component video doesn't work on very many screens, uh, or on very many like little monitor screens, like the ones we use in portables. So... Uh, that's why we stick to VGA most of the time. And you can also just use composite, which is just one wire. But composite looks, it looks rough. So I definitely attempt VGA at least, if you're building your own portable for the first time. But if you can do this soldering, then everything else is relatively easy by comparison. All right, that's the H-Sync wire. Um, we'll use green wire for V-Sync. 
Yes, and also, you're correct that soldering to batteries is a pain to replace. Um, one of the downsides to the old Louis is that they use an old power board that drains the batteries really slowly over time if you don't, like, charge the device and use it at least once every few months. And so I've had to replace the batteries on several Louis, and having to re-solder the battery pack every time is a nightmare. I hate it. But, yeah. That doesn't happen anymore with the new PMS. Uh, it doesn't drain the batteries slowly, and it'll cut off if, like, the batteries are way too low. So I should never need to do that again on any Louis going forward, which is nice. Let's hope all Luigi will be a fighter in the next Smash Bros. We can pray, but Sakurai is a, is a difficult god to work with. Fine pitch stuff is always annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I th you, you know the strat. Drown in flux, reflow and pray. What I usually do on stuff like this is I leave like no solder on my iron, just use like a bunch of flux, and then just kind of squish the wire to the leg and hope that it sticks. And it works a decent amount of the time. Because uh, putting on too much solder is always more of a pain than putting on not enough solder. Okay. Well, I think I got the joints pretty solidly on here. So I'm just going to carefully bend these wires just a bit around here. And then I'm going to clean off this spot real quick because there's some leftover flux. But yeah, it was a charge circuit issue. Do I play Smash competitively? Uh, not really. Uh, actually, okay, I guess I can tell my my competitive Smash story. So I got in, I started like watching competitive Smash uh, right around the time Ultimate came out because I was having a lot of fun with it. I was playing it online, found out there were tournaments, and I watched I think the first Genesis for Ultimate. Uh, and so I live in a college town, so inevitably there's a Smash scene, and so I looked around, I found the group. And then they were having like a bigger tournament coming up. Uh, so packed up my stuff and went to that. And uh, at the time I was a Rob main uh, because I'd played a little bit of Rob. And he, Rob is a very easy character in Smash Ultimate and he's pretty good. And so I was playing him and I had joined the Discord server for it. And there were some, there were some strange personalities in there, which I mean, yeah, you got a smash scene at a, in a college town. That's bound to happen. Um, and I had to play one of those people in my first round of, like, pools. And I destroyed the guy. I thought he was really good at the game. He was very bad at the game. Uh, but he was he was a big shit talker. He was... Uh, <laughs> he liked to talk a lot. And he was very obnoxious. And he was in a bit of a huff after that. And then I kept playing for a while. I made it pretty deep into bracket. Um, it was a bigger tournament, so there were a lot of people like me who had never played before. So I think I got somewhat lucky. Uh, yeah, but then later on, after I got knocked out, there was a guy there who played all random. And he happened to roll uh, like the exact, exact Rob skin I was using. And uh, the guy I beat earlier said some, <laughs> said some uh, unkind things about my Rob because he thought I was the one playing. And at that point I was just like, I'm, I'm not dealing with this. This isn't worth five bucks a week. I'm out. So didn't have a great experience. I'm sure it's better most places. I think the scene in the place I live is just kind of whack, but yeah, it just wasn't for me. Even if that guy hadn't been there, I don't know that I still would have gone, but yeah, that was my experience. Um, oh, I missed a lot. Let's see. Yeah, that's my strat for wires. Yep. And just stab it really quick. Yep. How to do that for my headphones when switching wires. Oh, I'm glad I haven't had to like fix any of my headphone wires. It's consistently worked. I've got a friend with headphone issues and that just sounds like a pain. Okay. So we got H-Sync and V-Sync soldered, which is good. So now we need to bring in the top half and then... Uh, VGA needs essentially five wires, um, but three of them need to be shielded. 
um, or else uh, you'll get video interference issues. And so the way I shield wires isn't great. You essentially twist, uh, it's not showing up. You can twist two wires together, one of them's ground, and it works all right. It's not the optimal way to uh, uh, shield wires, but it works well enough. Um, so we're just gonna estimate the length here. Around, okay. So something like this. All right, this should be good. What am I going to school to be? Um, right now I'm in marketing. Um, because I've enjoyed like the social media marketing that I've done for like YouTube and stuff. And I think I'm more of a creative person than a technical person. At least that's the stuff I have fun with. Um, so I've taken a few marketing classes. I'm enjoying it. Um, don't know exactly what I'll do with that degree. Um, advertising agencies seem kind of interesting, uh, cause I like the, the concept of coming up with an ad and then figuring out how to implement it, but that's where I'm at currently. Have you had mixed experiences with people in the Smash community? Yeah. It seems like one of those things where most people are nice and like regular human beings who just enjoy Smash Bros. And then there's some people who are in there because they've never grown up and are still enjoying Smash Bros. like a child, but I don't know. How old were you when you made your first portable? Uh, I was 16 when I built my first one. Uh, it was a very bad portable. Um, but uh, it kind of worked. And uh, I used what I learned from that one to make a good portable that actually worked and was playable and stuff. But yeah, don't let being too young like stop you from trying it. I think the big barrier to entry is just that portables are pretty expensive. And so I had like a job working at a grocery store. So I was able to at least uh, pay for parts and stuff. But yeah, I was able to do it at 16. Uh, some people have done it super young. Like G-Man, I think, was like 13 or 14 when he was building his first portables. But, yeah. Oh, that sequence? That sequence, I wish I could redo it. Because when I did that sequence, I didn't understand, like, lighting or anything. It actually wasn't that bad to film. It was essentially just boot up a game, don't touch the Wii Boy Color and then just get it to like different games and keep the camera in the same spot. But it was a good idea for an intro. I just wish I had better lighting uh, slash camera for that because that could have looked way sicker than it actually did. But that's all right. Okay, so we don't need the front half for a little bit anymore. Oh, I'm, I need to remember to zoom this camera out. If I'm ever doing something that you can't see, like just call it out. I promise I'm not doing it because I don't want you to see or that I'm too lazy to change the camera. I just forget. Okay. Um. Sorry to the wrong side of the Sisters. Oh, come on. Alright. So this should be our red wire in place. Perfect. Yeah, it would be nice if the portable community was bigger. It's always been pretty small. I don't know if it'll ever... It's just one of those things that people assume is like super, super technical. And so I think that's why we don't get as many uh, like fresh faces. But the people who build portables usually stick around for a long time. But yeah, if it was bigger, there'd be all sorts of crazy stuff going on. 
Um, do I have any? Oh, wait, this might work. I'm looking through a baggie for twisted wire. Unfortunately, it's just kind of a rat's nest of a bunch of different colors. I try to use different colors on the video line so that way I can easily tell them apart without having to like poke around with the multimeter to figure out which is which. Yeah, I have seen I have seen that stuff in the uh, the keyboard community. Has anyone done a CNC aluminum portable yet? Uh, actually, yes, kind of. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if anyone's actually done it. Oh no, I guess Stone Edge. Uh, if you look up, I don't remember if the final one was made with it, but uh, he made the WSP. I don't remember the exact spelling on it. There's been a lot of different WSPs over the years. Um. But he worked with a guy with a CNC aluminum router, and they've done a few different projects together. Um, they did a really cool Raspberry Pi portable that was aluminum milled. Uh, the CNC guy made like a handheld PC thing that was super cool. Um, but yeah, it's not super common, but people have done it. Think it'll grow some more melee people probably interested yeah i've talked with a couple of uh custom controller people and uh that's something right up their alley but at the same time like shanks had some videos go super big i've had some videos go really big i wonder how many like people out there still haven't that would be interested in building a portable still haven't seen it because the youtube algorithm is pretty smart but who knows I will be curious to see how much, like, more young blood... Oh, uh, whoops. Accidentally cut that wire where I didn't want to. How much more young blood, like, uh, in, like legitimately, like, teenagers, the portabilizing community gets. Because we're reaching that point where, like, most pe people are returning, like, 13, 14, 15, going online. They probably didn't grow up with the Wii or the GameCube as much. Not to say that they aren't out there, but... Probably getting more towards Wii U. And like in five years, you're gonna have kids coming onto the forums being like, oh, my first Ford, my first handheld was the Nintendo Switch. So I wonder if, uh, if that passion is still gonna be there. But when I mean, you look at something like Melee and that's 20 years old and nobody who grew up with that is probably looking to get into Melee, but it's still growing. So hopefully it's a similar situation. The Ashida and printed purple was very nice. Yeah, I think Shank has one of those. It was a pretty case. Um, yeah, a niche of a niche is a, is a good way of putting it. Which is nice in some ways. It's kind of cool to have like a small tight-knit community where I can read all the messages in the Discord server every day. But there are advantages to being larger. Okay, that's green wire. Um, now we need a blue wire. People still play chess? That's a fair point. I do wonder. I don't know. Esports are really interesting to me. I do wonder how long like games last. Because I feel like Melee is one of the oldest running like competitive games out there. Like... I can't really think of one that's run longer. It's probably some, like, strange one, but... Will we able still be playing it in 30 years? 50 years? Who knows? Maybe someday I'll be, like, 50 with kids and, like, be a melee tournament on TV and I'll be like, Oh, I remember that! Alright. Those are some nice video wires. Um, I kind of want to put down just a bit of glue real quick just a quick drop hey life how's it going we were just talking about a uh, GameCube controller stuff I don't know if you were here for that all right that should be good 
as a reminder, don't put hot glue directly over the uh, the points you've soldered to. If you're using hot glue to like hold some wires in place, uh, put the glue just a little bit down where the wires connect to. Uh, that way, if these joints do come loose for some reason, you can still uh, realize it and fix them without having to smudge off a bunch of glue. But yeah, a kit, the G Boy kit was already a very reasonable reasonable price. Uh, I don't think it would ever get much cheaper than that. Um, I don't have a public Discord server uh, because I don't want to manage one. Um, if you're looking for like a modding Discord server, uh, check out the BitBuilt forums. There's a link to the Discord server on there for BitBuilt related stuff. Uh, that's a good spot to be. Just, uh, you know, be respectful of people's time. Be nice when uh, people offer advice. And yeah. Don't make me regret sending you there. <laughs> Darn, missed the one thing you know about? Ah, uh, that's alright. Topic will come up again at some point. Basketball has been around for a hundred years? Yeah, but physical sports... It kind of makes sense that they last so long. Um, because they have such general broad appeal, but... I feel like video games tend to be more of a... A flash compared to uh, mainline sports, but who knows? Um, okay, what now? We've got video lines, we can do audio lines. So there are four audio lines that need to go from the Wii to the audio amp. I oh, remember to zoom out this time, I'm crazy. Um, and one of those lines should be shielded. Uh, it's the line labeled MC, which stands for Master Clock. And sometimes if that one isn't shielded, you'll get like weird interference issues. So I just want to double check it. Yeah, you understand proper internet etiquette. Am I familiar with the keyboard group by model, by the way? Um, I'm not. Uh, I'll make a note of that and check it out. What do they do that's different? All right, here's the mess of wires. Trying to find an end that sticks out enough for me to do something with it. I don't know, man. You know what? We're cutting our own wire. One thing about esports compared to traditional sports is the fact that games in our series. Yeah, that's that's the big thing. But, I mean, also something like CSGO used to be really big. And I think it's still somewhat big. But uh, even just, like, competing, like, shooter games can outclass it. Like, Valorant, I think, has exploded. Because uh, Riot understands how to market a game. Overwatch is a fascinating disaster of an eSport. I've been watching videos and, like, looking at the history of it. And it is, it is crazy. Uh, like what they've done and then like how little benefit they've gotten out of it it's uh it's interesting to see but yeah they're just talking about group buys oh okay I thought you were talking about like a specific site yeah okay I have seen that before where someone will make like a custom keycaps design that is a cool uh, a cool thing to do it's nice that you can do it in like relatively small quantities too. Because like uh, we thought about doing like within the portabilizing community, like uh, if we could get our hands on like, uh, I'm, I'm missing the word, injection molded stuff. Like if we could injection mold like portable cases, you could go crazy with that. But the cost is just so high and there aren't nearly enough people interested in it to fund it. But Maybe someday. You love CSGO? I've played very little CSGO. Essentially my experience with it is playing like gun game with my friends. Uh, the only shooter I've spent much time in is, in is Overwatch, but it would be fun to try like a more tactical shooter. Because Overwatch is generally run it down mid, shoot people, flame the healers, call today. 
It seems like CSGO and Valorant are meant more for strategizing and, I don't know, maybe people also still just run it down mid and flame the healers, but... Who knows? Okay. Yeah, I have seen that a lot of pros have switched to Valorant. Although, CSGO is a... it's a Valve product, right? I know Valve isn't great. Or is... is CSGO? Might be thinking of TF2. Maybe they own both, but... Seems like they aren't great at keeping their games alive. They tend to make something cool and then kind of leave it. It is Valve? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, I think when I was really young, like I would have been probably between 10 and 12. Uh, <laughs> I completely forgot about this, uh, but I would play Roblox and Roblox had like CSGO-esque lobbies. And I remember trying to play that with like friends and I didn't understand what was going on because I didn't know what CSGO was, but it just clicked for me that the whole bomb terrorist shooting game on Roblox was probably just a ripoff of CSGO. Everyone loves a good pocket healer. They are the best. Okay, I need to look up which one of the pins on the Wii is MC. Let me check that real quick. Four layer tech. You amp. Oh. Documents. It is pink. Which is the third one over. Alright. Alright, so this is, in theory, the last shielded wire I should need for this portable. After this, it'll be all basic wires, which is nice, but what game have I played the most? Uh, it has to be Minecraft, because I played so much Minecraft in middle school, and then like every couple years or every year, like inevitably one of my friends will set up a server and we'll get back into it for a couple weeks and then abandon it because everyone gets bored, but... I don't know if Minecraft keeps like a, a tally of all your hours played, but yeah, it's, I don't think anything I've played even comes close to Minecraft. Oh yeah, uh, so I used, I talked about it a little bit earlier. I use Eagle, um, but I would recommend KiCad over Eagle uh, if you're like trying to learn it or trying to just use a CAD design software because Eagle is a bit it's a bit iffy but okay CAD is pretty solid and it's completely free so you don't need to worry about like a student license expiring or something Roblox is insane yeah me and my friends went on there a few months ago just because we were bored and we like explored all the games we played like when we were really young. And uh, I mean, it was a shocker. Most of them weren't very good, but it was something. Trials Fusion or Trackmania might be pretty close. I've never played Trackmania at all. I've seen a little bit of it. Like it gets recommended in my YouTube all the time. Uh. But I've never never tried it. Not a big racing games guy. I'm a I'm a Mario Kart player and then nothing past that. So is Minecraft a game or a toy? I don't know. It was crazy to think that like cuz I didn't start playing Minecraft until I was like 10 or 12, but nowadays it's just so common for like that's a lot of people's like first game. Or like one of them. I guess it's probably harder than Mario Bros to pick up if you're 4. But it's pretty crazy. There we go. I think I finally got the wire to slip in. Oh, and it bounced right back out. All right. Um, ooh, that's a nice joint. 
Eagle libraries are pretty miserable. I, uh, I would agree with that. I'm really bad at like keeping my libraries organized. So it's all just kind of a mess of... Oh, okay, here's library four, which has parts to two different projects. But I haven't used KiCat at all, so I'm not super familiar with what their library system is like, but I can't imagine it's any worse. What is my current favorite game? That is a good question. Um, I've been playing Chrono Trigger for the first time recently, I'm having fun with it. Um, I've played a lot of Spelunky 2 recently. I really love Spelunky 2. That might be my favorite right now, but I'm taking a break from it because uh, it was uh, it was getting depressing. But I really like roguelikes. Um, loved Hades. Haven't played that in a while. But that one was super fun. Uh, Hollow Knight. I played last year. Did absolutely everything in it. Loved it. Um, yeah, anything in that sort of genre hits pretty hard for me. Did I get the itch.io Ukraine thing? Uh, I saw that. Um, there were a couple games that looked interesting in it, but I didn't pull the trigger on it. It's kind of like Legos with crafting. I suppose so. ROR2. Uh, Risk of Rain 2? I think that's what that stands for. I haven't played Risk of Rain. I've heard of it. I've heard it's good. Uh, but I've never tried it. Okay. Uh, let's do the other audio wires. I think I have pre-cut wires for them, actually. Yeah, these guys. Also, need to see someone use a soldering station instead of a pencil. Yeah, if you're trying to build a portable, don't use a... Uh, uh, oh, direct wall plugger ones. Those ones are miserable. Get yourself a Weller, a Hacko, or something decent. Because uh, I built my first portable on a a bad soldering iron, and it was it was tough. It is it is well worth the forty bucks or the hundred bucks or however much you want to spend. But Nebs and Debs is so good. What is Nebs and Debs? I never heard of that one. I do like really hard platformers. Uh, Spelunky 2, uh, Celeste. I don't know how hard you mean like by like really hard there. Are we talking like bocce or? Oh, they've gotten a lot better? Okay. Uh, everyone I've ever used has been pretty bad. But generally, people aren't going out and buying brand new pencils. Usually, they're ones that have been in the garage for the last decade or something. So I guess it makes sense that technology would improve and they wouldn't be as garbage. I don't, I don't think that connection is good. It's an NES homebrew. Okay. Okay, let's try the other wires real quick and then we'll come back. Fine 64. $30 has USB C PD. Oh, yeah, I've heard of like the USB C ones. I didn't know that those were actually good. But that is interesting. Have you used it at all for like micro soldering stuff or just like keyboard stuff? Because keyboard stuff, I, I'm sure you could do that pretty easily with a, an okay iron. But if you've done micro stuff with it, then that's good to know. Yeah, I've used them at conventions. I remember one MGC, someone brought one. And that one was a lifesaver because you could just bring it up directly to the project and not have to wrangle an entire iron. Oh, come on. Hmm. 
Pine Sill is basically the TS-100 V2. Okay. Okay, if you can do USB-C ports, then that's, that's pretty good. Alright, well that's good to know. I might, I might pick one up then. Because uh, we always need irons at MGC, but it's kind of a pain to pack up the entire station. But... Yeah. MGC, what convention is that? Uh, the Midwest Gaming Classic. So, it's essentially just a big retro gaming uh, expo. It's usually in the springtime. I think it's May like 5th and 6th this year. Uh, it's in Wisconsin. Um, if you're big into retro games, then I think it's a really good one to go to. Uh, this is about as... Wii and GameCube is about as close to retro as I usually get. Outside of like the NES games that I grew up with as a kid. So most of the convention isn't really all that exciting for me. Uh, I just go because all the portabilizers are there and it'll be a good time. But yeah, if you're in the area, it's a cool one to check out for a day or two. But uh, probably not worth uh, traveling a really long distance to unless that's really your, your thing. Oh, there we go. Alright. So, audio stuff is good. I'll make it at some point. Looks like a ton of fun. Yeah, it is. I'd say it's worth going to one. Especially if you're going to just hang out in the portabilizing room all weekend. That's what I do. I, like, go to the vendor hall once. I go, wow, this stuff is really expensive. And then build an Ashida with everyone else for the rest of the time. Okay, we got audio, we got video. I think I'm just going to start around here and just start connecting wires. I don't... I'm trying to think if there's like anything I'm going to cover up if I do that, but... I don't think there is. Alright, so this is the ground wire. Um, for the wire going between like the two halves for ground, you can get away with 30 gauge. So this is 30 gauge magnet wire. Uh, I really like 30 gauge magnet wire. It's like a nice sort of in-between wire. Um, but you can also just use like normal, like strippable wire as opposed to magnet. But the Wisconsin Madison logo is kind of stretched. Yeah, I don't maintain that website at all. But yeah. let's see. There we go. But yeah, I think MGC is supposed to be uh, bigger this year than it has been in the past. Like, we usually get two floors of the convention center, and apparently this year there's going to be three. I'm not going to be able to make it, though, because uh, MGC weekend is the exact weekend of my finals. So, can't really go without, uh, without just going to MGC to study for my finals, which uh, doesn't sound super fun. So, I'll probably have to miss out on this year's. But uh, we've also been, there might be another like uh, big portabilizing convention or a big convention that portabilizers go to at some point. We'll see. MGC is just great because uh, there's quite a few people who live in that area. So everyone can just kind of congregate in that one spot. There we go. Um, there's a lot of ground pads pretty close to uh, where this wire goes. Um, I'm just using one of the ones over here. Uh, there are two ground pads right here, so I'm just using one of those. Uh, this wire is 3.3 volts, so we're going to have to route it pretty far to get to the screen. Um, but that's why you leave the wire so long, just in case you need to trim it a bit. But 3.3 volts and ground are the only voltage wires you have to run between the two halves. Oh wait, no, that's a lie. Uh, you need 1.8 volts for the audio amp. Um, 
So you only need 3.3 volts ground and 1.8 volts, but 1.8 volts goes directly uh, to the audio amp. Uh, some screens need 5 volts, uh, but the one in the Louie is not one of them. So actually nothing in this portable runs off of the, uh, the 5 volt line on the PMS. Okay. Let's go. There's a 3.3 volt spot right here. So I'm just going to use this one. Oh. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure Noah has at least a box or two full of these shirts. Um. But yeah, good luck. Good luck getting a hold of one. Okay, I'm gonna go quick dash, refill my water, wet my sponge a bit. I'll be back in like a minute. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not too shocked. I don't think Noah ever actually blocked me. He just stopped responding to anything I sent him. Uh, but yeah, the old guy who used to run the BitBuilt site, uh, I think he got overwhelmed uh, with just like live stuff and he took on a bunch of orders uh, because he used to run a store uh, that sold like portable products. And he took on a bunch of orders, and then he didn't ship anything for like six months. And then he announced that he was like leaving the site. And I think he ended up refunding everything eventually. Uh, but a lot of people placed orders for stuff that they wanted and then never got it. And then got refunded like six months, nine months later. It was a big headache. But uh, yeah, now the store is run by three people uh, who... I would not expect them to go rogue. They're very, they're very level-headed people, so and they're doing a better job of running the store than Noah was. But yeah, at least he had the decency to refund. Yes, uh, he was he was kind enough to do that. But it was a whole it was a whole thing. But yeah. Okay. Um. Why am I running 1.8 volts now? I had something else I was going to do. Oh, okay. So, yesterday I mentioned that we were going to use a, gr a separate ground wire from our other ones for the audio amp. So, that's this wire that I soldered yesterday that goes directly to the PMS. So, I'm going to connect this to the audio amp. Um, I've had issues, uh, like, with ground signals carrying interference sometimes uh, for the audio amp. So this might not be necessary on every Louie, but I'm just doing it because it's a lot easier to do now than later. 
Okay, we'll do something like this. <laughs> and keyboards to summon exit scams, they're out. Yep, that is uh, a reasonable, reasonable response. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think he was ever intending to scam. I think it was just uh, so got bit off more than he could chew and didn't feel like following through. When did I start making portable Wii's? Um, I started making them when I was fifth or sixteen, so that would have been twenty seventeen. Was when I really got into it. But uh, building portable Wii's has changed a lot since then. Three uh, D printing is super common now. There are nice custom boards for everything. Um, it's a lot easier to get into than it used to be. So if you're looking to get into it, highly recommend. <laughs> yeah, that does sound, that does sound like Noah. How many units do I think I've sold? Um, I think I've sold like 60 something, like low 60s. Uh, every portable I sell, I include like a stand with it, and I'll put the number of the unit on the stand. So whenever I go to print out the stand for this guy, I'll update the number and see what it is. But somewhere around there. I don't know if I'll ever hit triple digits. We'll see. But that's where I'm at right now. Okay. Um, so these are the LED wires that go from the PMS to the LED. Um, we gotta route these pretty far. The two pads for the LED are over here on this board. So, you got a ways to go. So I just give yourself a long wire if you're uh, cutting that one. And we'll route it through here. Wait, you sell the portable Wii's? Uh, yes. Like this one will go up for sale. Um, I do occasional sales um, whenever I need money to pay rent or something, um, but I don't do commissions, so I don't do them to order. Uh, I just build ones that I want to build, and then I put them up for sale. So if you're following me on Instagram or Twitter, uh, then you'll see when I post about it. Uh, usually I'll like put a comment on that it says, hey, it's this much, all the info is here. And then if you don't see that comment, then it means it already sold. But yeah. Oh. Sub 100 is a very reasonable number. Yeah, I... I think I've built more portable Wii's than anyone except G-Man. I think G-Man has me uh, beat by a significant margin. But, that's alright. Might be someone else out there who's built more than me. Like a, like an old portableizer who isn't around anymore. Like I know Shock Slayer did a bunch of commissions, but I don't know how many he did over the, I don't know, 15 years he built portables for. Okay, there we go. The wires routed. Over. Surprised you don't Vickery one-offs? Hang on, Google search time. Oh, it's an auction. Oh, I see. 
Hey, you know, that's a decent idea. Um, I could do auctions on them. Um, but I'd have to do it through, like, eBay or something. And I haven't sold stuff through eBay before. And I've also heard nightmare scenarios of people, like, selling portables through eBay. And then, like, the person who buys it doesn't understand, like, how to use it. Or, like, breaks it immediately. So, I prefer to just talk to the person first. Like, I'll post it and then they'll DM me and say, hey, I want it. And I'll be like, alright, here's, here's how you use it. Here are the flaws about it. Does that all make sense to you? And then once they once they understand what they're what they're buying, then I can sell it to them and I've had pretty good success with that. I haven't had anyone try to like back charge or accuse me of scamming, but eBay opens you up to a world of uh interesting people who are not wonderful to do business with. Alright, those are some nice LED wires. We'll route these wires a bit nicer when it gets closer to closing it up. Yeah, that makes sense. How long during a week do I say I spent spending on portabilizing? Uh, varies wildly from week to week. I'm doing college full time, so if it's like a busy week, then I probably spend like eight hours maybe. Uh, but if it's an open week, like during the summer, I'm probably full-time jobbing or more, depending. I'm not always doing, like, soldering, portabilizing stuff directly. Sometimes it's, like, YouTube channel or something along those lines, but it, uh, takes up a decent amount of my time. But if you're just learning it, then obviously you can spend as much time as you want on it. I think posting Wii Portable on Twitter is just free likes. It is also that. I gotta build my portfolio somehow. Let's see. Okay, so this is the GameCube controller data line. It's an important one. Uh, so the data spot is just over here. I've left a via on for it. You can also just solder it. Oh, actually, oh, you can also just solder it right here, which is honestly probably easier. So I'm just going to do that. But there is a pad on the uh, right here if you really want to use it. And I have heard that some people have needed to shield uh, the controller data line to get it to work properly. I've never had to do that. Uh, usually when I've had a controller data issue, it was something else and not shielding. But uh, that's something to be aware of. If you're just having consistent controller issues, it might be worth uh, shielding the wire and giving it another go. Yeah, but also annoying DMs. Oh, my DMs are... It has been a year since I, like, cleaned out my DMs of, like, people requesting portables. And so there are, there are just hundreds of them just sitting in there. And I just need to go through and delete all of them. Which, it is my fault, because on the Wii Boy Color video, I literally said, Hey, if you want a portable Wii, just DM me and we can talk about it. Which was great, and then I got 2,000 messages asking about a Wii Boy Color in, like, four days, five days. And, uh, that was... That was a mistake. So then I set up a website about, like, portable commissions and pricing and all that. And that's helped some. But sometimes people will find my stuff through Instagram and Twitter, so they DM me, which makes sense. You don't know to look for a website, but yeah. Any recommendations for where I want to start looking if I wanted to make a portable Wii? Uh, Bitbuilt forums. Uh, if you just run a search for Bitbuilt, um, you'll find a nice forums. And it's got guides, it's got work logs of my projects, other people's projects. It's, uh, it's the Portabilizing Information Hub. It's really, really good. Oh, did you make a Twitter account yesterday, MP3? Is that what you mean? Because uh, 
Yeah, people, hey, if you just want to farm some likes, people love Wii Portables. I'm surprised 50 people found it, though. That's that's a lot if it's like a day-old uh, Twitter account. Um. Oh, right. I was working data. No, I got the data line done. Okay. Uh, we can do trigger wires now. So the triggers in this portable are dual tacked, which means that there are two buttons essentially uh, for each trigger. One of them represents like an analog press. The other represents a digital press. It's nice for games like Mario Sunshine. Uh, so that's why we're running two wires off of this button all the way to the GC plus. Yeah, that's fair. Twitter is good for posting stuff. Good for, uh, if you've got a sick project that you want to go viral, Twitter is probably the easiest place to do that. But yeah, as far as a site that actually, to actually like interact with people and use, ah, eh, yeah, it's not, not my first choice. Although I'm not a, I'm not a huge social media guy. I think I used Facebook when I was like 14 and 15 and then since then I haven't used it for anything outside of portables. Uh, okay, righty, left. That's the right trigger. So... Uh, I might redo the layout of this board. I don't understand why I put the vias here of all places. Like, it's just easier to run wires straight across like this. But, all right, I'll probably, I'll probably update that before I release the files. I've been thinking about making my own portable Wii, but only have a small screen which I haven't tried to turn on yet because I found it in a bin. Yeah, usually, I'll just warn you now, usually like small screens from like other devices, like an MP3 player or a DS or something, don't really work for portables um, because you need a screen that can take like standard inputs like composite and BGA. And oftentimes those screens run off of like proprietary stuff. So you need like a special driver board to interface with it and like a Wii. Um, but yeah, if you want to get into it, check out the BitBuilt forums. Um, be prepared to buy a new screen because uh, a lot of one of the things people commonly struggle with is that they really want to use like some weird parts that they already have on hand. But oftentimes it's cheaper and easier and just better to buy new parts and uh, start from scratch. But who knows? Maybe you do have a small screen that works. It is possible. I use Insta and Discord for my projects. Yeah, I do like Instagram, especially for just like, yeah, I'm sure it's the same thing for you with keyboards. Just like, oh, I can post a, a nice picture. I've just got a wall of pictures. And people tend to spam Instagram a lot less than like Twitter. Sometimes I'll follow someone on Twitter because be like, oh, this person does cool stuff. And then it's just like 50 tweets from them about miscellaneous topics that I don't really care about. And like, I get it. You don't have to use your like Twitter solely for like business stuff. But it is a small pet peeve of mine when I see someone's stuff that I really like. But they're just, they're a talkative Twitter user. Curious, how did the portable community take to the Linus Tech Tips video on the G-Boy? Um, I mean, it is cool that we got a video on Linus Tech Tips. And uh, is Anthony, is that the other, is that one of the people on Linus Tech Tips? who actually built it. And uh, I think he did a really good job. It's been a long time since I watched that video, but he did a good job of explaining it and showing it being built. Uh, Linus's part in the video is, it is a bit of a meme because he opens it up, starts playing Super Mario World on a portable Wii, and then complains about like latency because he's playing an SNES emulator. But yeah, it's a cool video. It's cool that we got the recognition on that. Um, but yes, there are certainly some parts in it that are, uh, that are kind of funny, but. Uh, 
Yeah. I think they also... I think they also were like, wow, it's getting really hot. Why is it getting so hot? And then they had, like, put tape over, like, the uh, the exhaust vent. <laughs> to, like, uh, I, don't, I don't even remember why they did that. But, like, for some reason, they had, like, mounted it to something. And then, like, put tape over the vent on accident. But thankfully they realized that. So, uh, they were able to call it out. But, yes, definitely, definitely some funny moments in there. Okay. Left trigger. Yeah, portable Wii's can be a little bit weird to use with the sensor bar because you have to like prop up the portable and include some IR LEDs. I did it on a couple of my old projects, but uh, I just never used the feature at all. So I've just kind of dropped it. I don't really use Wii remotes anymore. Um, there are mods. Uh, well, there's one called GC to Wiimote, and, uh, it basically lets you use a GameCube controller to emulate a Wii remote, and, uh, it's not perfect. It can't do, like, specific motion stuff. It's not compatible with all games, uh, but I've used it quite a bit, and it's pretty good. Um, if you're just trying to play, like, Mario Galaxy or, like, other simple-ish Wii games that aren't, like, motion control based... Highly recommend, if you're going to build a portable. Really aren't any games that work well portably that need the sensor bar? Yeah, that's kind of my feeling on it, too. Like, yeah, Skyward Sword would be nice, but am I really going to set up, like, my portable on a stand and then point a Wii remote at it, or am I just going to play something else? And I'm generally a play something else kind of guy. All right, well, we're getting there. I think we should have it done probably within an hour at most. We'll be ready to connect the battery wire up and see if it actually works. I'd really like this for this to turn into a gameplay stream and not a uh, troubleshooting stream, but we'll see what the gods have in store. Wii portables to scratch the itch that nine-year-old me had for a Wii laptop. Uh, I do remember the old videos of the Wii laptop. I think the most viewed portable Wii video out there is like a Wii laptop video from like 2008. It's like the only portable Wii video that's higher than the Wii Boy Color. Perhaps someday I will dethrone the king, but or I'll just make another project that's better and gets more views. But those were cool. Um, okay. Triggers are in place. Oh, uh, before I forget, let me do 1.8 volts to the audio amp. <laughs> You'll dethrone it with the Wii Phone video. You know what? If the Wii Phone can do that for me, then I just might build it. Stupid Wii Phone. Still getting comments about the Wii Phone. <laughs> People love it so much. There we go. Um, we'll do 30 gauge wire for 1.8 volts. You could probably get away with uh, uh, 34 gauge. But just to be safe, I'll give it a bit more. Is it really that close? I thought it had like uh, four million views. All right, well then never mind. I'll just I'll just ride the Wee Boy color to victory. Canceling the Wii Phone. Never building that. Sorry, folks. Okay. I'll be honest, this wiring job isn't great. It's kind of messy. We've got some, like, all of this around here. It would look better if I didn't have the NAND lines 
the NAND line fix going there, but... Yeah, you can spend as much time as you'd like on making wires neat. You will get brownie points on the BitBuilt forums if your wiring is particularly pretty. And uh, don't let your wiring be a disaster on a project. Even if it's your first one, um, keep things somewhat organized. Because uh, when something goes wrong, it's so much easier to tell just like what's going on when wires are at least somewhat neat. Probably would be better if I was 100% focused on wiring. Well, see, if I wasn't streaming, I'd probably just be watching another stream and just be distracted by that. So it's a nice thought, but generally, unless it's like the original of a project, I don't go, I don't go 100% on keeping the wires neat. On the first one I do, because I'm gonna post lots of pictures of the internals and stuff. But after that, as long as it's pretty good and I can tell what's going on, I don't, I don't spend a whole lot of time getting perfect 90 degree angles on everything. <laughs> yeah, cable management? I am particularly bad at cable management IRL though. I, well, I think you can see some of it back there. It's, uh, it's pretty bad, but, uh, yeah. It's just, the problem is, for like my computer and stuff, I always move it around sometimes. Now, actually, I have to, I have to move it a lot less now. I used to have to move like my main PC uh, in between like my workshop room and my bedroom if I wanted to stream uh, because I don't have like long enough wires and anything to stretch it. And so I just had to undo the wires every couple of months. So there wasn't any point in making them look neat. But I got another, a different PC recently that I can use solely for streaming and recording, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. I just have to move the mic back and forth, which is much less of a headache. So now I have no excuse. It's just that I'm lazy. Okay. Um, that's 1.8 volts. Oh, so on the UAMP, I think it says like DP for the 1.8 volt line. Um, that's the voltage uh, the Wii side of the audio amp needs. Okay. I think we're getting real close now. It's just, I need to route these wires over to the screen and the audio amp, but also matters a lot more in a clear case. That is true. When I'm doing a clear case, I do go 100% on the wires. Because uh, I've never had an issue getting a portable Wii through TSA. Uh, but... Wiring should be particularly neat on those. So you can literally just see it. I probably won't buy the Ford Bolt because I could use Dolphin on my Steam Deck that comes soon. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that is a very fair take. Um, I haven't seen much like on how Dolphin, how well Dolphin runs on the Steam Deck, but it sounds like it'll be decent at the very least. And Dolphin is good. It is a very good emulator. But portables like this are nice if you just want flawless experience every time. But I did order, or not order a Steam Deck, but I got on the wait list for it. But I did that like a month ago. So I don't think I get mine until like end of this year, maybe. But... Easiest way to manage cables is to just have less cables. That is a fair point. Um, hang on, let me grab another screen driver board. So for the screen controls, there's essentially three uh, buttons that you need to have installed for it to be like usable to navigate through the settings and stuff. So I'm pulling up another driver board to see which ones you need. So you need menu, you need plus, 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 and you need minus, 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 minus. Uh, that gives you the menu button, the up button, and the down button. Um, so 
That's what these three buttons right here are for. And they'll also double up for screen controls. Uh, er, sorry, not screen controls, volume controls. So I need to carefully route some of these wires. All right, so menu is one, two, three, four, five, six. Or fifth from the top. If you don't have uh, like a second driver board on hand, be sure to take a picture of it, of the bottom of it before uh, you mount it. So that way you can at least reference that if you need to know what the pins are for anything. It's very useful to have. Oh yeah, I'm sure there are people out there who would trade a portable for a, for a really nice keyboard. Uh, I chatted with one guy who does custom keyboards. I think it was going to be like six or seven hundred bucks for like the full package. And I've seen his work before and it looks like he does really nice stuff. Um, but didn't really want to pay that right now. Oh, and I also want, I want a hundred percent keyboard. And at the time, I guess parts were really expensive for those for whatever reason compared to how they usually are. I don't know if that's changed since then or if that's just like a part shortage thing, but it is always an option. Okay, that was menu. Let's do up next. Just right here. Up goes just below that. Steam Deck is gigantic. Didn't realize how big it was until he posted next to the Ashita. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that big either. Like I thought, I figured it was going to be like similar in size to the Ashita. Just from like the pictures and how it looks in people's hands, but that is a large handheld. Uh, Pirate BT, yeah, he's, he's a newer portabilizing guy. Uh, but yeah, he does really good cable management, built a couple of she does. Uh, yeah. His profile picture on Discord is like a skull and cro crossbones, if that, uh, if that's where you might have known him. Okay. So now that we've got our wire connected here, we're going to route it over to volume plus on the UAMP. Oh, keyboard guy I reached out to? Uh, I think it was something. Oh, uh, I think it was Milk Tea. Something along those lines. I think he built a couple keyboards for like streamers I watch. And so they apparently like his stuff. So I reached out to get a quote. Okay, so we're gonna do the same with minus. The one downside to doubling up on the uh, volume up and down buttons is uh, uh, whenever I change the screen controls, I'm also going to change the volume, which could be a bit of a headache, but generally you don't have to mess with the screen settings too much, so it's not the end of the world. Okay, there we go.
Yeah, my current keyboard is just like some sort of steel series thing. It's got red switches on it. I think I like red switches. I like linear ones. Um, also a little bit quieter, which I like. But there's also like a whole world of rainbow switches out there. So might try out some other stuff. My little brother is uh, really big into key custom keyboard stuff. He helped me with my other one like recommending parts and such. So I'll see if he, he has any switch recommendations. I think he built a new keyboard pretty recently too. Okay. So we've got screen controls and audio controls. I think it might literally just be video and audio left. Um, let's start with video. So, let's see. Shoot, which one of these is, which one of these is B? Uh... Alright, well, time to tin the wire and find out. More boards are not about upgrading or replacing. They're about variety, like swapping pens. Hey, that's what portables are like. <laughs> They're for adding to the shelf and then never touching. Okay, it's got some weird mess at the end. figure out this is why I like to use different colors for all the wires because then I can easily tell when they're all kind of close together which one is which without having to like check with the multimeter but I don't have any red twisted wire right now so I had to double up I refuse to get sucked into another expensive hobby yeah that's that is one reason why I haven't gotten Super into keyboards. Okay, this one's red. Which means... Let's see, let's fold it back so I don't get them mixed up again. That means that this one is blue. Oh, it's already tinned at the end. Wonderful. Much prefer watching portable stuff because I'm too lazy to design from scratch. Yeah... If you don't want to, if like just the building part of it interests you and not the designing part, uh, there's the Ashida, there's the Jiwi. There are like uh, pre-made designs out there uh, with decent parts lists uh, that you could always do. But recently paid my truck off, so I've been into modding. Hey, look, I'd rather I'd rather spend stuff on money than or yeah, spend stuff on money. Rather spend stuff on modding than pay off a car. That's for sure. But yeah, depending on which rabbit hole you go down and how deep into it you go, it does get pricey. Thankfully the tools for portabilizing aren't super expensive once you've got them. Like I haven't bought a tool in over a year probably, but the actual parts themselves to build one are still pretty pricey. Ah, cycling, eh? I've never been a big bicycle guy. I didn't learn to ride one until I was like eight. Because I just didn't want to as a kid until my mom made me. And then I almost never used it. But I can see how that could get expensive pretty quick. Okay, so fourth one down is B in. So let's cut it... I 
think my mom was into like uh, biking for a bit. I remember she was like looking to road bikes and mountain bikes and all sorts of like different kinds of bikes. Cause she's into big into like outdoors stuff. She loves hiking and backpacking. I don't know if she ever did much with that. I think she might've just like borrowed a bicycle for whatever trip she was doing. But yeah, backpacking is another hobby that gets real expensive real quick. Cause it's a fun game of spend more money and your stuff gets lighter. But. Oh, come on. I've almost got you. There it is. Um, and then with the shielded wire. So these are two wires twisted together. And we're going to solder one of these ends to ground on this side. Um, you don't want to solder both ends of the red wire to ground because that can cause like ground loops and I don't really understand what that means or how that affects stuff but it is something I have been told so just ground one side of the wire it'll act as good shielding and you won't risk ground loops okay B and G, G and G, R and G Okay, that's uh, one video wire. Now we'll do G. All right, we're down to like five wires left. And then we can close it up and test. Oh, also I should say this. Um, if you're building a portable for the first time, uh, you should be testing far more often than I am. Um, like if I was if I was building a portable for the first time, I'd recommend that you start when you're connecting the two halves together. Uh, start by connecting the video wires and the power wires first, so that way you can turn it on and make sure your screen works. And then I would connect the triggers and controller data, and make sure all of that works. Um, and then I do audio and make sure it all works. Uh, that way you're testing piece by piece. So that way if something breaks, you don't go uh. What's well, not working? Is it the video that made it stop working? Is it, did I wire up something wrong with audio? Uh, that, that, is the, that is the correct way to do things. I'm doing it all at once because I'm pretty sure I won't break anything. I've done this a lot, but uh, it is not the smart way to do it. I'm doing the speed run strat. Okay, we can trim it. What is backpacking? Uh, backpacking is when you go hiking, but you go hiking for multiple days at a time and you carry all your stuff, your backpack, your sleeping bag, your food on your back, like in a backpack. So you're essentially carrying around, depending on uh, like how big you are and how much you eat and all that, 20 to 40 pounds of stuff on your back. Uh, so it's, it's pretty intense. I was in Boy Scouts uh, when I was a kid. So I did a 50 miler one time where we hiked 50 miles in five days. And uh, not for me, I will say, which may shock you. I mean, I know I seem incredibly muscular, incredibly fit, uh, just a guy who loves getting sunshine and seeing the outdoors. But uh, yeah, backpacking didn't click with me. And ever since that 50 miler, sometimes one of my knees just hurts like an old man. So I don't know what happened there. But yeah, it's pretty extreme. Gravel, ma gravel and mountain biking are your thing? Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, $200 on this chain, my bike will weigh 14 grams less. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the same thing with backpacking. Or you can spend like <laughs> hundreds of dollars and your sleeping bag will condense a little bit more and be a couple degrees warmer at night. Just uh, min-maxing of sorts. 
<laughs> yeah, so this fort can be used to start a fire, hunt a deer, and signal for GPS tracking. Yeah, she's got a couple of those. Okay, so now last video wire. Oh, wait, no, we still have... Okay, there's a couple more than five wires left. I forgot about the uh, H-Sync and V-Sync. Just FYI, your Insta hyperlink is dead. Um, are you talking about the one I have linked on Twitch? Or the, I tried to set up like a weird, like Instagram bubble thing on the about page. But if the hyperlink is dead, I'll I'll check it out, figure out what's up with that. If you're looking for my Instagram, it's just uh, Ginger of Oz. Same spelling as on Twitch. I'm Ginger of Oz on half of the sites and Ginger of Mods on the other half. Because there's another Ginger of Oz out there that yoinks the username. Yeah, the Twitch one? Okay, I'll check that out. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. Oh, a bike packing trip. Never heard of bike packing, but that phrase makes sense. Dang, 450 miles in three days? That is, that's a lot. Isn't the biking portion of a marathon like 120 miles or something? That is a lot. Oh, it's just Ginger of Moz instead of Ginger of Oz. Oh, okay. That's probably because I got the Ginger of Oz username on Instagram. I switched off of uh, Ginger of Mods. Oh, that might mean the link is broken in other places too. That's a pain. Oh, uh, is does that account just not exist? Because if it doesn't, then I might just throw up a quick account and be like, hey, you're looking for Ginger of Oz. I think I meant to do that and just forgot. Something like that in a full Iron Man? Okay, yeah. Uh, I grew up in California. Um, and there was a triathlon called Vine Man there. Uh, that my dad was always the... Uh, he would run the photography crew for it. And uh, be in charge of like a big slideshow for the event. So I think I was actually wearing one of the shirts on stream last time. I have a bunch of Vine Man merch. And I get people who are like, wow, did you really swim three miles, bike 122, and then run a marathon? It's like, oh, no, I just, nope, that was not me. But that's the only reason I'm familiar with that number. Okay, finally untwisted. All this might fit better in Makers and Crafting instead of just chatting. I can never remember what Makers and Crafting is called, but yeah, th that's probably a better fit for the stream, but I'll just hang out and just chatting because I can remember what that's called and find it easier whenever I'm streaming. And at the end of the day, we are just chatting with a little bit of gameplay go or a little bit of uh, modding going on as well. Okay. Let's see. So H is next. And that's our little red wire. What part of Cali? Uh, I grew up in Santa Rosa. So it's northern-ish California. But uh, that's where I was born. And I lived there up until I was around five. I think glitch hunting is semi-appropriate. Oh, what about masculine? You don't think masculine's appropriate? Huh? Ginger's voice makes this an ASMR stream. I can start like, well, probably not scratching the soldering iron up against the mic. That would, that would probably be a one-time thing.
Hey there, Chris. I guess I could add the ASMR tag, but uh, I don't think I'm intentionally ASMR. Okay. Also, I think there are some screens out there that we use in portables. Um, and some of them have like the H and V lines flipped on the screen for some reason. Like they're labeled incorrectly. It's a consistent thing. Like a lot of them have this and I don't know why. Uh, but I'm pretty sure this screen has them uh, labeled correctly. So you shouldn't have to worry about that. But if you're using like the uh, five inch four by three screen, that one's flipped. I think the three and a half inch IPS one might also be flipped. It's a really strange issue. I don't know. I don't know how that got past like quality control on like multiple different screens, but do I do any speed running? Uh, well, I do hold the world record in um, the uh, Wee Boy Color battery depletion speed run, the PS2 Eclipse battery depletion speed run. And the Nintendo Fate Cube uh, battery depletion speedrun. Um, there's not a whole lot of con competition in those categories. Um, but I am the world record holder. But uh, no, as far as traditional speedrunning goes, I've never given it uh, much of a shot. Um, I tried to learn Super Mario Sunshine speedrun like years and years ago. Like I found like guys and started trying to learn it. But like it's such a massive time investment. And I'm not naturally good at, like, picking up movement on video games. Like, I've watched some people, like, pick up a game speedrun and they're just... <laughs> it, like, clicks for them really quickly. I am not like that. So, I've opted to spend my time elsewhere. But I do love watching speedrunning. Speedrunning is one of my, uh, my favorite content pieces. Especially when uh, it's a speedrun that changes a lot. Like, I've been watching Wind Waker speedruns for, like, five years. And the run has changed so much in that time. It's crazy. But, yeah. I think if I were to get into, like, speedrunning games, it would probably be, like, 2D platformers. Like, I really like Super Mario Bros. 3. And the speedrun for that seems relatively straightforward. To just, like, get decent at. Not world record. That seems awful. But, yeah. Oh, this will be the last message since I don't have a 180 IQ. Well, that is a bummer, but I appreciate you staying quiet so that the intellectuals can talk. Okay, so now video wires are done. Um, I'm trying to think if there's... Anything else audio related I still need to do besides just the data lines? Oh, 3.3 volts. Let's do that now. Um, in some instance, if you're still having like screen or not screen audio issues, then it might be worth connecting your 3.3 volt line directly to uh, the Wii PMS. I've never had to do that before, but that is a possibility. Yeah, that is one of the things with speedruns, where it's like any game that uh, has like a community around it, there are going to be people who are crazy good at it. A couple of my friends uh, really wanted a speedrun world record, and uh, one of them is very into Lego Batman as a kid. So uh, they speedran Lego Batman 2 100% co-op or something. And uh, there weren't any other run submissions, so they got the world record. So they are officially world record holders for a video game. But I don't know if there are any like games I had as a kid that like no one else did. Like I grew up with pretty pretty mainline games. So I don't have a funny niche that I could just crush in. Is that a 3.3 volt spot? Yes, okay. <laughs> if 
Funny to say I hold the deck of sports lose all sports record. That one does sound like a, like a competitive one. I think I'm using just about every single 3.3 volt spot on this driver board. Perfect. Okay. I think it's just audio lines and then we run it and test and see if I have ruined everything. All right, so we'll start with the MC line, which is the one we shielded earlier. <laughs> Wipe out the game has a leaderboard? I had that one as a kid. I don't think it was all that great, but it was Wipe out the game. What about it was a fun show though? I remember going over to Oh, okay, that wire just came out of place. I remember going over to my friend's house and watching it as a kid. So it was one of those shows you'd watch, you'd be like, oh, I want to do that. I'd be so good at that. But I don't know if 10-year-old me would have been that good at that. Or 21-year-old me for that matter. Okay, don't come loose. <laughs> yeah, it is a good, it is a good with friends game. Oh, that reminds me, me and my, last night my friend was in a very uh, game show mood. And so uh, we legally backed up our copies of uh, Deal or No Deal for the Wii. <laughs> and we played that for like an hour. We played like three rounds both like all three times we or two of the three times we did like terribly we came out of it with like 50 bucks uh and then on the last one i hit the million dollars i won it all so i should have been recording i could have gotten like who wants to be or deal or no deal million millionaire percent but unfortunately the cameras were all off so i have no evidence to prove that i pulled it off yeah, Dolphin Netplay is so good. It's, uh, it's a good one for when uh, the friends want to play something. Something new, but uh, you don't really want to go on Steam and buy something. This is the last wire I've split, thankfully. Okay, this should be good enough. Let's go. And then we're also grounding uh, the MC line to the U amp and not the Wii. Just to help keep that uh, clean ground signal that we've got going. Okay, three wires left. Let's do C next. 
Only 20 more minutes and work is over for me? Oh, come on. Watching my stream isn't work. What are you talking about? I don't pay you to be here. Alright. C is green. Far left. <laughs> nice hair, bro. Uh, I gotta... Gotta zoom out. Um, okay. So it's this one. Perfect. Yeah, this is way too long. Let's trim it a bit. Come on. These like wire holders are convenient, but uh, once there's like six wires going through them, it comes a pain to like jam a new one in. Come on. Here we go. Yeah, the cable raceways were a lot more useful. Um, in a previous version of this design, the uh, the controller board was mounted like right here instead of right here. Um, and so you had to like run a bunch of wires from over here to like right here and a bunch of wires from over here to right here. Now they don't get used nearly as much because like all the wires for this half just go from right here to right here because of the circuit board. So, I'm probably gonna get rid of at least these like five because they're pretty useless. And you also have to trim, you, uh, you might have to trim. I'll have to check and see. In, uh, in the previous version, you had to trim uh, the wire guides off at the end and like just add a thin layer of hot glue because they'd press up against the batteries and uh, be too tight of a fit, which was unfortunate. Okay. So I should just tin these real quick. T, D, W, S. Oh, and the Louie, uh, the headphone jack is soldered directly to the UAMP board. Uh, so you don't have to worry about running wires for any of the headphone stuff. It's all just already connected, which is really nice. The, uh, the old version didn't have that. So it was a bit of a headache to, uh, on everything properly especially because headphone wires are like crazy bad about picking up interference and I had to route them like around the fan because the fan it generates a lot of a lot of noise that the headphones pick up and it's not pleasant let's see next up is D which is red. Okay, so third one over. That is, oh, it's a red wire, convenient. Preparing an action, a DS action replay the other day. Fixing the actual cartridge. Oh, virtual machine time, my favorite. I had to set up a Linux virtual machine to uh, mod like one of the uh, Mario uh, like Game & Watch systems for someone. And starting off the virtual sh machine itself actually wasn't that bad, but using Linux was pretty brutal. <laughs> Where did... How old was like the software? Did like no one else notice? But they had an A instead of an F? That just seems like such a strange issue. Although I guess DS action replay cards probably aren't probably aren't the most popular mod people are using, but Oh, you're telling me you're cheating in Charlotte's web? That's that's not cool, bro. 
Charlotte's Web is a game of integrity and respect. If you cheat the game, you're not really playing it. Oh, the software was from 2010? That is old. I don't know. I feel like some of the Wii modding softwares I use are pretty old. Like, there's the, like, THP file converter. It still works in Windows 10, thankfully. But... It is definitely old. Okay. Last wire of the build? Potentially? Well, I guess I also decided the battery wire. But... I think this is the last one. Let me just double check. This is WS. So I'm not. Alright, it is. We're good. go run and use the bathroom real quick but when I come back we'll solder up the battery wire and then we'll see if I'm a legend who gets everything working first try or uh, chances are there'll be at least a little bit of troubleshooting but you're right back Doing one last, one last look. All right, can't think of anything. 
So this wire right here is the battery wire that goes from the PMS to the batteries. So if I connect this up to a battery, I should be able to just press the power button and have a working portable Wii. So let's see. This wire is always a little bit tricky uh, because I have like three wires going to the same battery, which is a bit of a mess. And I need to also not burn uh, the case at all. But I can make it happen. Okay. That should work. Set the battery into place. Did your first Wii Charm work or did it take you a few tries to get one cut that works? Um, I guess that depends what you define as my first Wii Trim. I tried doing a Wii Trim back when I knew almost nothing. I'll tell the story of that in just a sec, but let's, let's hit the power button and see what happens. Okay. Hey! Okay. So the screen works. It's outputting power, or it's outputting video. So that is good news. Uh, you notice that the colors are all messed up. Um, you notice that there's no red on the screen, which means that my red line on the Wii, something's up with it. It might have come unsoldered at some point. So we'll inspect that. Um, okay, we've got basic controller working. Let's... Uh, if you go to the settings tab, the sticks aren't properly calibrated yet. We'll do that later. If you go to the settings tab and you go to controller, there's a buttons tester. So real quick, A, B, Y, X, start, C stick. Okay, main stick isn't working. We'll take a look at that. Right trigger works. Uh, oh dear. Left trigger works, Z button works, D-pad works. Okay, so there's something up with the left stick. So we'll take a look at that. Um, okay, let's power it off. All right, that is good news. My trick is to put 240 feed test suite on the SD card and then use the icon on the home screen to check the VGA lines. That's probably a good play way to do it. I usually just go, hmm, what color is in here? And that's usually enough to tell. Okay. So, red line. It looks like it's soldered properly over here. And then, oh, okay, I see what the issue is. Um, I accidentally flipped the ground wire and the red wire when I soldered it to the screen. So that is an easy fix. Uh, generally speaking, you shouldn't solder to stuff inside the portable when like the batteries are like physically connected to the PMS. It's a little bit risky because if it accidentally turns on, uh, then you're soldering to a live circuit and that can cause bad things. So if you're being dumb like me, be very careful that you don't mess anything up. Um, yeah. Oh, so going back to did my first Wii Trim work. So my first Wii Trim was on a six layer Wii motherboard. Um, and it didn't work, but I didn't know how to test it properly. I was trying to test it wrong. So I never like, how do I phrase it? Like I never really, uh, got it working properly. Um, but it was, the trim itself might have actually worked. I just wasn't testing it right. And so I was never able to figure out if it worked or not. Um, when I did another trim, like a year later, I did it on a four layer board. And I'm pretty sure I got that trim working first try. Um, generally, as long as you follow the trim lines properly, you sand it really well. Uh, you put tape over the chips before you, uh, 
uh, do any cutting, you can pretty consistently get Wii's to boot. Um, just make sure you understand how to connect it up to power afterwards to test it. And uh, make sure you're ready to do the U10 relocation. If you can do that, then uh, you can get a trim working first try most of the time. Okay, so that should fix the red video issue. Now we need to figure out what's up with the control stick. So the control stick wasn't working in X or Y, which means we're likely missing a voltage thing on the joystick connector. Uh, I probably didn't solder it quite right. So we're gonna take a multimeter and we're gonna check just all the pins, make sure they're connected properly. So one of these should be ground. Okay, ground is connected. Let's check for 3.3 volts. Huh? Hang on. Something seems weird. Three point three volts is what? Okay. Hmm. All right, that's really confusing. There, my multimeter is telling me that there's a short between 3.3 .3 volts and ground, which doesn't make any sense because if there was a short between 3.3 .3 volts and ground, this thing wouldn't turn on at all. Uh, okay, you know what? This might be, the batteries are low in my multimeter, which might be part of the issue. Uh, let's do a quick battery replacement on my multimeter because I sincerely doubt that 3.3 .3 volts in ground are actually shorted. All right, let's open up the old multimeter. Oh, you're more than welcome to talk. I don't expect uh, I don't expect the chat to help troubleshoot. Except maybe MP3. MP3's built a few portables. He knows what he's talking about. But uh, let's see. I guess the Phoenix Wright song does kind of fit troubleshooting a portable in a way. All right. Um, get rid of the old nine volt battery. I'll go grab a new one real quick. Thankfully, I actually know where my 9 volt batteries are because I had to find them for a part of the, uh, the GameCube portable. When you press the left trigger, it looked like the joystick input was being actuated. Maybe a pad is bridged? Uh, that's a good theory. Uh, and you're right, that could be the case. Um, also, for some reason, when a joystick isn't connected at all, uh, the trigger inputs will sometimes activate the joysticks. So I suspect that, oh no, we lost this, oh, I found it. So what's probably happening is that either the ground line or the 3.3 volt line isn't properly connected to the joystick. So the GC plus isn't reading it as connected at all. So that's probably the issue. Um, I don't think the trigger pads and the joystick pads would be shorted at all. Uh, because it's enhance. So over here, this is where the main control stick data lines are. And this is where the left trigger data lines are. And there's nowhere that they would really connect. But yeah. So I'm hoping it's just like I haven't soldered down uh, one of the lines on this properly. because uh, the solder job here is a little bit light. Uh, you can't even see it. The solder job on this connector is a little bit light uh, because I hate putting on too much solder and then having to try to unbridge them. But a uh, good call on the pad being bridged. That, I have had that be an issue before. Okay. Let's check. Ground and 3.3 .3 volts now. 
What? Does like the U amp have like low resistance or something? Hang on, let's make sure it still works. Okay, so 3.3 volts in ground very clearly aren't shorted. Oh, and you can see we've got red now. So that did fix the R line. Um. Okay. So I'm just gonna assume something weird is going on and that one of the boards I haven't used very much is causing there to be low resistance between 3.3 volts and ground. Cause I've never seen that before. Um. Let me grab... Yeah. Okay, let's do a quick check. Which one of these pads is 3.3 volts? It is the one far left. Okay. Three point three volts should be connected to this pin. Oh, it might not be. Okay. So this pin on the far left isn't being isn't connected to 3.3 volts. So I'm gonna reflow this and add just a little bit more solder. Okay, that looks better. Let's check now. Ah, uh, all right, so we have a solid connection there. Ground has a solid connection. I'll check the other lines just to be safe. SY and SX. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that was our issue. Um, let me, let me clean. I'm just gonna do a quick scrubbing of some of the boards real quick, cause I've got some flux residues. Um. And then we'll do another preliminary test real quick. Um, where else? All on there. All right, we'll give that a minute to dry. That ground issue is super weird. Yeah, I don't know. It's got to be that like the U amp. Or the GC Plus, maybe MX? Has like really low resistance to ground, but I've never seen that before. So that's a little strange. But I'm not too worried because the Wii is booting and seems to be working fine. But uh, I mean, when we play test it for a while, if, if something really isn't right, then we'll notice it. Oh, and also one last thing we still need to put in. So I've got three little buttons that go right here. Uh, do they not fit? Oh, they don't fit. Um, okay, that's awkward. We might have to do some emergency sanding on these guys. Oh, wait, are these? Oh. I might have accidentally resin cast the wrong buttons. I think these might be meant for a different portable. 
Uh, I think these are Ashida buttons and not Louie buttons. Whoops. I think... Oh, will they still fit properly or are they... Are the dimensions too off? <gasps> oh, wait. Oh, no, I think I know what the issue is. Hang on. Yeah, I knew it. <sighs> okay. We might have to do a little bit more work before we can close it up, but it's a relatively easy issue to fix. So I used the wrong switches on these. I got some switches that have like really short actuators and some that have a little bit longer actuators. And the long ones are too long, so I bought these short ones. And these ones are the ones I was supposed to use on that board. Um, but yeah, so that's why the buttons don't fit. But it's a pretty easy fix. I've got extras of this circuit board, so we're just going to pull this one out completely and just rebuild another one. But that'll take like five minutes. We can work on that while our uh, IPA dries. All right, well, that's a silly mistake, but Glad I remembered that, so that way I don't link the link the wrong buttons in the uh, the bill of materials when I set that up. Okay. Um, oh, let's just put them back in the bag. Um, before I go too hard on fixing that, though, let's check everything else in the portable we'll and make sure it actually works. Um, that way, if, if I have to take more stuff apart, I can do that now. Um, oh, wait, we're still kind of wet. All right, we'll, we'll give it another minute then. Assemble this real quick. There we go. Okay, so the legs. The legs on these buttons are super long for whatever reason, so you got to... Cut them pretty short. Okay. And we're just going to mount these back to the board. to solder these without knocking everything over. And I'm just kind of pressing these down and reflowing that one joint just to make sure they're actually in evenly. Just seems like they are. So now I'll go ahead and fill in the other joints. All right. Well, I think we've assembled this board in record time. Let's not burn my fingers though. I can add this board to my other three world records. Yeah, I'm banned from speedruns.com for some reason though. They keep telling me I keep making up fake categories. But you know what? You gotta have haters to uh, to uh, be successful, you know? That's just how it works. OK, 
Okay, good. I'm on camera. All right. Um, bring the portable back in. All right, let's make sure we're all dry now. Seems so. Okay, we're gonna power it back up um, and we'll do a little bit more checks and some menus to make sure everything is set up right. What am I banned from? Oh, nothing. Okay, select a theme, main. We don't need to change anything in here. Buttons tester, let's see if the stick works now. Aha! Okay, you'll notice it's spinning in the wrong direction and doesn't line up with my movements, but that's okay. We can fix that really easily. Okay, so... Everything's still good, so we'll go to Sticks Wizard. So I'll move the left stick to the far right. Oh, I can see that this is an IPS screen. This looks so good. And now... Sticks are all good. Press A to save. Um, you should probably update the firmware on your GC Plus just in case. I don't think I have the firmware update on this USB drive right now, so I'll do that later. But you generally want to update it. Um, okay, that's all good. Let's go to power. So charging current. We're just going to crank this all the way up. Um, you probably still won't get this fast of charging speed. But, uh, wait, how high does it let you go? Okay, maybe we won't go that high, actually. We'll leave it at, like, 3,000. I don't remember how high you're supposed to go on this. What? Okay. The C stick just activated for some reason. That is somewhat concerning. The C stick isn't working anymore. <laughs> Okay, this might be a similar issue to the main stick. Let's uh, let's do some testing. Okay. Oh wait, oh that's not good. That C stick spot was still kind of wet. The IPA hadn't finished drying. Um, hopefully I didn't kill anything. Let's let's run a quick check on the C stick. How do you already have this stuff installed? Um, I don't know if you saw yesterday's or not yesterday Sunday's stream. Uh, so on Sunday I ran through how to mod the software of the Wii, and then I already had a USB drive set up with like games and stuff on it, um, and so that's just plugged in already. Um, it's easier to do that stuff beforehand rather than after, but you can do it after, or you could set up the games after. You can't do the. Uh, Uh, the software modding after you cut up the Wii. You have to do that before. But that's why I've already got uh, games and stuff. Okay. Okay, I'm a little bit concerned. Because the C-Stick seems to be wired up correctly. Um, okay. Let's turn it back on and see what happens. Um, well, yeah. I mean, obviously, portable Wiis have a hard time coming close to the level of polish that, like, an official product uh, gets. Um, why do they seem less polished? Uh, I mean, money is the biggest reason. Um, usually, um, like, professional video game consoles have... Okay, C-Stick works now. Do I need to up the dead zone? What's... This is so strange. It, like, gets stuck. Um, let's see if I can...
Oh, great. Now we're just... Oh. Okay, the Wii shut off. Oh, wait, no. Okay, I forgot. If you navigate to the home menu when you're an RV loader, it takes you to the Wii menu. I think. Which won't load properly on this. Uh, because I don't have Bluetooth installed. Okay, that's not too scary. Uh, battery life. I think the battery life on this portable is actually about the same as a Nintendo Switch. Um, the issue is that the Wii just uses a lot of power. Like, it's not designed to be portable. So, batteries and stuff tend to, uh, you need a lot, you need considerably beefier batteries to, uh... Dude, this is... So strange. I've never seen this before, where the C-Stick just... is intermittent. Um... Okay, let's test audio real quick, though. See if that works properly. So, we'll boot up Mario Kart Wii and see what happens. Yeah, injection molding, OLED panels, and if we could somehow get, like, a die shrink of a Wii that used less power, then you could start going crazy. You get Nintendo-level stuff, but... Uh, we don't have the finances for that, or the, uh... Or any of that. Oh, okay. I don't know if you can hear it, but... Alright, if you can hear that, that's the sound of Mario Kart Wii coming out of... Let me check and make sure it's both speakers. Okay, both speakers work. Oh, uh, we can check headphones real quick too. These are the cheapo testing headphones. Okay. So you notice there I tried to plug in headphones and the Wii rebooted. That's a feature. <laughs> and now the battery is at 0%. Huh. Okay. Let's reboot. I've seen this issue before, and I think I know how to fix it. Yeah, negative 273C. Hey, look, you know what? I use only the finest thermal paste. Okay, I'm not too scared. I've seen this before. I think I remember how to fix it. Um, okay. Come on. Gonna reboot. There you go. What on earth? So this means something's weird with the PMS on the C stick still doesn't work. Man, this is, <laughs> this is a rough one. I don't know. It's pretty normal for a portable to have an issue or two that I have to like troubleshoot and figure out, but it has thrown me some curveballs today. Okay, let me double check my DMs with the G-Man real quick. Because I had this issue on the last Louie, and I think I had to run a wire from the headphone sense line to something to a, something over here. Let me just make sure I'm thinking of the right wire. G-Man. I don't know, he's a gunner now. Um, let's see.
Okay, yeah, so you have to connect headphone sense to the Wii HUD S via. Which, so you have to do that if you're using Wii HUD audio control. Um, but you shouldn't have to do it when you're using button control. But for some reason, this can potentially fix that. It fixed it for me last time. Um, yeah, you like the masculine tag? I do like, I do like the tag function on Twitch. Uh, yes, yeah, so when it goes up for immediate sale, probably $1,500. Uh, but that's assuming I can get it working. If it doesn't work today, then it doesn't go up for sale. Uh, this PMS, could that grounding issue be related? Um, that grounding issue was more for, most, more so for, um, audio issues. Uh, like, I had issues with, like, scratchy audio, um, intermittent audio, audio not switching from headphones to, uh, speakers properly, and that was fixed with the headphone issue. Now, plugging the headphones in and having the Wii reboot was fixed by wiring headphone sense on the uamp to um what was it the s pin scw headphone sense okay it's over it's over here on the wii somewhere i think it's right here yeah okay so you gotta run a wire from the UAMP. Shut off. Hang on. Yes. Oh no, I'm I'm gonna I'm sure I can get it working eventually. That was more of a joke. Mostly concerned about the C stick issue right now. That's a I don't really know where to start on that one. I guess I'll start by reflowing the connector just in case, but I'll figure it out. I don't think I've ever had a portable get this deep. And I've had to scratch it for something I couldn't figure out. No. There was one time I got this deep and then the Wii's video output got screwed up and everything just looked extremely bright. And it was a Wii issue, not like a, uh, a screen issue or a wiring issue. Like that Wii like, video output was just way too bright for some reason. And I never figured out what's wrong with it. I've still got that Wii in case I ever find out. But that was a weird issue. Um, okay. We have Headphone Sense wired up. Before I turn it back on again, I want to take another look at the C stick. Okay, let's see. The SCW and SDW lines are still intact. So that shouldn't be why our battery percentage dropped to zero. But... Amazing work. Would you have the updated SDL with the USB-C input? Uh, soon. I'll have it out within the next week. Um, I just have a few adjustments I want to make to the files because some things on this aren't designed super well. So I'm going to update those and then I'll release the files immediately. Or as soon as I can assemble like the bill of materials and such. But sorry it's taken so long. They will be done soon, I promise. Okay. Reflow this guy. Okay, soldering already looked good to begin with. We'll reseat this guy too, just in case. I might, it might also be an issue with the physical stick itself. 
Um, these aren't brand new Switch joysticks. I think I used them in like a demo or something a long time ago. And so they might have some issues. But hopefully we don't have to do that because that'll require like taking off the board entirely and that'll be a pain. But, oh, uh, I'll go ahead and glue down the Z button real quick. Probably should have done that earlier. Just add a little bit of super glue. Okay, that should be good. You don't need very much. Okay, so if that doesn't fix the C stick, what would I try next? There's nothing, when I fold the case over, the only thing touching over here is, are the batteries. So these aren't being conductive and messing something up. Um, I guess I can add more solder to these pads, just in case. Oh, whoops. Oh, now they're shorted. Whoops. Perfect. Okay, so the soldering on the connector and the Juicy Plus board is pretty much immaculate. I can't imagine that's the issue anymore. Um, let's clean up the board. Oh, nope, not this, not this bottle of IPA. Use this one. I'm a little confused by why the uh, the battery reading and the temperature reading stopped working. Because they were definitely working earlier. I remember looking and going, oh, there's a the temperature, battery life is at about 90. That's all great. And then we plugged in the headphone jack and screwed something up. But headphones should work now, now that the headphone sense line is connected, which matters for some reason. Um, okay, let's let the IPA draw, dry for real this time. Oh, I still need to swap out the buttons board. Uh, let's do that now while we wait. So, up is red. Down is yellow. Green is menu. Trying to remember that. Um, okay. Do you think the headphone jack was shorting something somehow? Um, it's really unlikely that that's a possibility uh, because the headphone jack is soldered directly to the audio amp board and all the connectors for the audio amp stuff are right here. And there's clearly nothing soldered to them. Um, so I don't think so. I've seen that issue before, where plugging in the headphone jack shuts off the Wii. That's, surprisingly, that's not a new one. I've had that happen before. Um, and last time the fix was to just add the headphone sense line, connect, solder it to somewhere on the Wii. Uh, a specific spot, I shouldn't just say somewhere. But to connect it to this spot specifically on the Wii. Um, it happened on the last Louie I built, so I think that's something I'm just going to have to do standard on any portables from now on. Um, shaking around some wiring is a possibility, um, but I was pretty careful when I plugged it in to not shake it too much. And realistically, the portable should hold up to some shaking. I, I build them pretty solidly, but uh, it is possible. Especially with the wires still kind of loose like this, but okay. So now I've got the new button board in. Buttons should fit now. <laughs> should? Okay, there we go. Um, 
All right. Where'd the... I had three of them. Where'd the, where'd the third one go? Mm. Did I hide it under the paper towel somewhere? Okay, that is... I'm gonna drop it. Let's just fold it over temper... Oh! Wait, what is this wire? Oh wait, I need to I need to resolder the uh, the menu stuffs real quick before I forget which color was which. Screen controls are resoldered. Okay, button hunt. Where did the last little button go? Because I really don't want to have to recast another one. Is it on the floor? Wonder how angry I'd get if someone ever redeemed free portable. If I ever stream enough for someone to receive free portable, uh, I will probably be a very happy full-time live streamer. So, building one portable, uh, I don't think I'd be too upset about it. It is possible. I might actually lower it so that it's a little bit more reasonable. I think it's at like 30 million right now or something. Because I've seen Twitch chats with people who have like 20 million, but I think that's for people who stream like 10, 12 hours a day and they have active bets going and stuff. But yeah, 25 million. It would only take two or three years. Yeah, but I think that also depends on me streaming a lot. Like I'd have to stream like eight hours a day or something, which I do not do currently. I'm very infrequent about my streams. Um, man, where did, where did that button go? Did it fall into the portable somewhere? I've done that before. Oh, I found it. It is in the portable. It fell back here with the battery. Oh, you're one five thousandth of the way there? Okay, I should probably, I should probably lower it then. Cause I think you've been here longer than, or you watch my stream more than almost anyone. One, one or two of my friends might have you beat, but. I guess that would mean streaming for like, as much as I do for like 15,000 days or something. Okay. Got the buttons in place. See, stick board is almost dry. I wonder if the wet spot here killed something with the C stick. And if it did, I hope it was the stick and not the GC plus. Five million points, but the person doing it has to cover material costs. Could do that. Although if anyone does ever redeem it, I'll just like double the amount of points it takes to redeem it or something. 
won't stay at 5 million forever. Because if one person redeems it, then it probably means a lot of people are close. Okay. I think it sh I'm going to give it another minute just in case there's a wet spot I can't see. Okay, so that should be headphone jack issue covered. I think my last two concerns are the C stick and getting the battery life reading correctly. I'll add a little drop of hot glue for the audio lines so I don't wiggle around too much. isn't like putting it's like pushing the stick in at an angle instead of dead on oh there we go all right should be good do you get channel points for cheering and gifting subs i didn't know that i thought you only got them by like uh watching and gambling i thought they were specifically designed to not be pay to win but then again, Twitch is designed to make money, so. Huh. Interesting. I feel like you probably don't get that many points, though. But hey, I mean, if you want to gift me 10,000 subs to pay for a portable, I mean, hey, who am I to complain? Um. Oh, it's based on the leaderboard thing? Gotcha. That uh that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Let's fire it up again. Let's see if everything is still broken or if everything is magically fixed. Oh, okay. Our battery life has returned. And our inch oh, oh. Uh. Oh, and there it goes. Um. Okay, this seems like an issue with the uh, data lines that go from the PMS to the Wii. Because it's working intermittently. Um, okay, let's let's power it off. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with anything. Yeah, it is not supposed to just randomly shut off. A strange, strange portable. Okay, um... There's some flux residues here. I'll clean those up, but I don't really think that's the issue. It's like routing these underneath the MX chip, like, cause an interference? It's interesting, because that last time, I don't think the Wii completely reboot. It's haunted? I hope not. I didn't kill anyone to build this. Hmm. 
Alright, let's spin it around real quick. I think I have heard of people having interference issues with the SCD and SDW lines. You aren't supposed to twist them together, which I haven't done. They're right alongside each other, but they're not twisted. Joint seem solid on that end. Um, okay, let's disconnect the batteries because I'm going to be soldering to stuff pretty adjacent to the PMS. And if you're doing that, then you absolutely need to disconnect the batteries. Um, do need to wiggle this battery loose though. We're going to disconnect the battery wire real quick. There we are. All right. Oh, these joints seem really good though. Like I'm, oh wait, that one popped off really easily actually. Okay, maybe that was our issue. Okay, I'm gonna route these out from under the MX chip board just in case that's part of the issue. Down some flux and redo these joints and then it'll work flawlessly I will have solved the issue first try and I'll be heralded as a hero where did my flux go how did it get all the way over here all right to stab myself <laughs> part of the slav and fashion arts experience uh, unfortunately happens with more than just my flux i'm not great about putting tools back in the tool holder all right let's try that and then let's double check that i'm using the right pins which i have to imagine i am because if i was using the wrong ones i don't think it would have ever worked. Okay, RBL, PMS Lite, Documents, Weavy is SCW, SDW. Yep, yeah, those are definitely the right ones. So you guys, SCW, SDW flipped. Nope. All right, well, let's solder these back into place. That's a good solder joint. Mm. I don't know 
if I love that one. Okay. That one seems better. Okay, let's scrub all the flux off. Is RV Loader Revolution support still getting worked on? Um, I don't know if that's an active development at all, or if that's something really has got in the pipeline. Um, but I don't think it's uh, it's like working yet at all, as far as I know. I routed the SCW and SDW lines under the MX chip last time. Because I feel like that's just how I would have done it, but did I not put an MX chip in the last portable? I can't even remember. Um, okay. I'm going to let that dry. I should have checked to see if the C-Stick issue was fixed after I changed stuff last time. Yeah, Revolution probably would be Hydra, which is an open source right now. Um, I could trim, you know, I'll start trimming off some of the wire routers real quick. I don't want to glue down any of the uh, controller wire stuff though because there's a chance I might have to undo a lot of that stuff if we've got a real big controller issue with the C-Stick. Hydra background music feature. I think Aurelio's said that he has no plans to add that support in. Which is a bit unfortunate, but it does, it's probably just a headache to implement. And realistically, it doesn't add much. The, uh, the MP3 player in uh, Portabilize Me that would do like background music was super jank. Like, uh, I was watching like an old like demonstration video I had of a portable that uses Portabilize Me last night. And like half the time there's just like a large shrieking sound. Like uh, every time like a new MP3 is loaded into it. I forgot about that, but. Oh, yes. That, uh, that must be confusing sometimes. But, yeah. Okay. Let me split these wires apart as much as I can. Okay, they're a bit tight there. Um. Oh yeah, okay, the hot glue for uh, the audio wires has already come unstuck. Let's remelt it back into place. Almost like CTGP does in the channel. Um, I'm not familiar with that sound effect, but it might be the same sound. It was like a loud, I don't know how to replicate it. I can play the sound in a sec once I get this, uh... Oh, jeez.
Oh, I just made it worse. Let's go. God, this is... This is how you don't... This is how you're not supposed to use hot glue in a portable. Big blobs like this. This is a big no-no. But... Whoops. I'll see if I can send a sound clip at some point. Yeah. There are some consistent sounds across Wii error noises, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's the same one. Um. Okay, it seems like we're all dry over here. It's also possible that completely disconnecting the PMS from power might have fixed whatever the battery percentage issue was. It's a possibility, but I'm hoping that some combination of the things I did will uh, make a difference. Okay. Power is back in place. Okay. Let's power it up and see what happens. Okay, let's let it sit for a few seconds, see if it uh, disconnects. Okay, what about the C-Stick? Okay, the C-Stick is working properly. Let's head into the settings menu real quick. Um... We'll up the dead zone on the sticks just a bit, just in case that was part of the C-stick issue. I don't think it was, but, uh, okay, that's all good. Now we'll go back to power. Let's up the charging current again. We'll go up to like 3000 milliamps. That's good, that's good, that's good. T-Reg, it's fine at ADC. Power button type, momentary, yep. Power button polarity, active low. I think so, I, I don't know. Status LED type, addressable, save config. Okay, so the LED turns on now, which is good. <laughs> the ultimate test, do headphones work? We will, we'll move, we'll move there in a bit, don't worry. About, that's all good. Status, oh, uh, okay, MX chip detected. That means that our relocation worked. Um, and then you can see battery voltage is at four point, about 4.1 volts, which means it's almost fully charged. Not charging, yep. GC plus 2.0 detected, yep. PMS light detected, yep. Okay, that's all good. All right, let's get a little crazy. <laughs> let's plug in the headphones. Um, let's go, I love me some Mario Party 5. Okay. Chibi Robo? I don't know what Chibi Robo is supposed to sound like, so I won't use that for sound testing, but uh, I can open that up later. Show off a bit of that. If that's a favorite of yours. I've only, I've never played past the tutorial of it, because I've like gotten footage of it for portables before. I have heard good things about it. Okay. Uh, headphone or not headphones, speakers are still working. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna plug in headphones. Yay! I don't know if headphones are powerful enough to pick up through the mic, but. There we go. Okay, now let's plug in the headphones again. Okay, 
And again. Okay. I think it might be done. At least like uh, basic test wise. Audio works, video works, controller works. It seems like the uh, PMS light communicating with the Wii works now. Um, okay, let's power it off. And power it back on. Can you screen record this or no? Uh, are you talking about... What do you mean by that? Are you talking about, like, can you screen record off of the console? Or, like, are you talking about something with the stream? I don't, I don't quite follow. Um, okay. We've still got the right power indicators. Um, C-Stick still works. Huh, okay. Well, it looks like I fixed everything in one shot. Just that good. Okay, let's try Mario Kart Wii real quick. Make sure Wii games work properly. Also, the portable is heating up faster than it should because I have the fan vent blocked. Because <laughs> the portable is just sitting face down. Which is uh, one of the uh, one of the problems. Slight problems with this design. Uh, let me prop it up with something real quick so we don't... I don't really think it's going to overheat. But just to keep it cool. Okay, uh, let's check. Oh, do volume controls work? Okay, the volume goes down. Okay, the volume goes up. Okay, so this one is menu. I need to remember that. Okay. So you notice that the screen borders aren't quite lined up. I'm going to try to fix that. So to do that, you can go into auto config and then just run that. And the screen should bounce around a little bit and find the right borders. Okay, I bounced around a little bit and found the wrong borders. Let's try running it again. Come on, man. It's finding them in the beginning and then, oh, wait. I got it, okay. Okay, screen controls work, volume works, the screen is lined up properly. Uh, okay, audio just cut out. Was that a part of the movie? Oh, okay, I think the music just ramps up and down. I hope. It's a weird song. Yeah, I can't stream gameplay off of this thing, uh, like, directly to my computer or anything, um, unfortunately. Also, the lines you see on the screen are part of my camera. Uh, the screen looks really good. Uh, it's the IPS one. It's a massive difference. Really happy with it. Um... Okay, I think at this point, we're gonna route the wires just a little bit. Uh, clean them up a bit, make sure everything's all secure. And then I think we're gonna close it up and do some gameplay. Um, yeah, that's exciting. All right. These battery wires are going to need to squish down a bit more. Then we need to get rid of these guys. Um, PMS2s are back next year. Is that an estimate? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure how badly out of stock the parts for it are. I'm not sure if it was like a one year out of stock thing or a six year out of stock thing. Um, but yeah, I would plan to use the light in any designs you're working on. 
And to be honest, the light is... is it's perfectly fine for like 90% of portables. Like, I, I could have done the, uh, the fake GameCube portable with a PMS light if I had to, but... Thankfully, I, I bought a few PMS2s a while back, so for my big projects, I'll probably use those and then save the PMS lights for commissions and uh, smaller projects. Wait, did we get back on that Earthbound playlist? Yeah, we did. Why does it keep leaving? Music, shuffle, let's see, I think one of my friends mentioned a loop. Is there a way to, oh, loop playlist, here we go. All right. Yeah, chip shortage is, it's pretty miserable. Okay. Trimmed all of those. Um. Hmm. Yo, one twenty-five thousandth of the way there. You're getting there, man. That's all the wire routing thingies. Okay, is there anything else that I need to super glue down before I close this thing up or else I'm gonna have problems later? Hmm, just probably move this wire a bit. I'll route these around this. Uh, no, we need to go in between, I think. Um, battery needs to go all the way in now. Oh, thanks for accidentally posting your playlist the other day. Hey, no problem. If you've got any recommendations, let me know. I need to add more stuff to this one. Because in long streams, it does, uh, we do get a lot of repeats. I need to set up the stream elements bot. Because there's one that just, like, easily lets you, like, add music to the, like, queue and stuff. Um, okay. It's always a bit of a tight fit to get a Louie to close, but... Okay. I think we've mostly got it. Oh, cool. Thanks for linking that. Yes, please do not DMCA me. It's funny, I was looking through like my YouTube like channel copyright strikes thing. And there are like other channels. There are a couple like Russian channels that have like uploaded my entire Wee Boy Color video. And they, it has like 30 views. They aren't like making money off of it or anything. But. Okay, uh, let's make sure it still works when it's all closed up before we go to the effort of screwing it shut. Okay, that's a no. Alright, let's figure out what goes wrong when I try to close it. Could be a wire getting pinched. Could be a video wire coming loose. Hmm. 
I'm not seeing anything obvious. Yes, Amazon does own Twitch. Um, hmm. Maybe we just got unlucky. Um, I'm gonna put a bit of caption tape over this just in case. I don't think there's anything you can short to, but. No, I'll use a penny's worth of Captain Tape just to be 100% sure. Okay. What else could it be? Try turning it on again without pressing the case together super tight. Alright, see ya, Puzzler. Thanks for stopping by and chatting. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, so it boots when it's not squeezed together. Oh, come on, man. I just saw the, uh... The power stuff was off again. What's causing that? Hmm. Okay, it's not booting consistently. Are we just on a streak of bad luck or is something wrong? Something's wrong. Um. Okay. Well, this is frustrating. Let's pop the battery back out. Disconnected power. I think it's Captain Tape, isn't it? Is it Copton? There's no way I've been pronouncing it wrong this whole long, have I? Okay. Imagine that the soldering on this end is the problem. Those wires just look to be soldered well. It's a solid joint and it's connected. It seems like it's connected all the time. Oh, Copton is the off-brand one? 
I don't know. I don't have the box for mine anymore, but it might have been copped in. Hey there, Alvaro. Uh, we're getting close to being done. Right now, I'm trying to troubleshoot an issue where something isn't working consistently, but if I get that figured out soon, then I can move on to just testing it. But unfortunately, we're in a we're in a frustrating troubleshooting moment, but. These are, unfortunately, a part of the portable building process. If I do un if I undo those wires, I'm gonna have a- I'm gonna have a tough time. You know, I'm just gonna shoot a quick message in the 4Layer Tech Discord, see if anyone has recommendations. Um... Anyone have suggestions? How to fix PMS light interfacing with the Wii inconsistently? The Temperature and battery randomly drop to zero sometimes. But my SCW and SDW lines are soldered well. All right, we'll see if anyone has a has a suggestion. Um. In the meantime, though, what can I try? I don't like that the Wii isn't booting consistently either. That means there might be something bigger wrong on the PMS. But... What would it be? Let's see, is the charging board wiring still all good? I think it's the charger board. Your sheet of the inconsistent booting thing, cable management. Um, I'll try. I could try to cable manage a little bit better, but video and audio stuff is all over here. I feel like it's most likely a PMS thing if it isn't booting consistently. I guess I'll redo the SCW and SDW joints again. Since I've got nothing better to do. My portable, like usually on a portable, it's pretty normal for them to occasionally not boot. Like, I don't know if I've ever had a portable that booted 100% of the time, but it should be almost every time. Certainly not consistent enough to happen more than, like, once in a row. If it's happening twice in a row, then I've got, I've got some sort of issue that i got to fix. Alright, let's scrub it a bit. 
spots yet what happened with crash in the g-boy stream uh apparently he had copton tape instead of captain tape but uh i think i don't know if it's on brand captain tape but i'm pretty sure mine was at least labeled captain um okay i'm gonna try to unsolder the SCW and SDW lines and just completely redoing them. Although it might be a bit of a pain to get SDW because it's pretty far back there. Oh, okay. Copton tape is the best. You've got it too? Oh dang, apparently I'm using the wrong stuff. Um, I guess I could try routing the wires completely around the MX chip, in case that's the issue. But, might be something, I feel like it's something bigger. Okay, Stone Edge said there should be some resistors. Um, let me check. Okay, it's about 12k. Standard trim. Okay. Let's grab some red wire. 30 gauge? Yes, yeah, 30 gauge. I want 34 gauge. See if I can slaughter this on here properly. All right, I should be able to make this work. Just a bit of a squeeze.
plus that joint. Okay, surely that one's good. Well, welcome back, Peels. I don't know when you left, but we currently have it almost working. I've got a really weird issue with uh, the power board. It's supposed to send information to the Wii uh, about like how much the battery charge is at and what the temperature inside the portable is. Uh, but it's doing it inconsistently. So I think it's the last issue. I had a few other small things that I was able to fix pretty quickly. So I'm currently redoing the wires that go between the Wii and the PMS. And then if that fixes it, then yeah, when there were some issues with the cooling. Yep. Okay. So we're still trying to fix that. I thought I had it fixed because it was working really well for four or five boots and then it happened again. So try it one more time. Let's see. Did I get another message? Hmm. Okay. Alright, I'll ask you if the MX chip might be part of the issue. Yeah, I just saw that. They were almost as short as possible before. They technically could have been like a few millimeters shorter, but if he says as short as possible, then uh, I'll do that. Good solder joint. Looks like I messed up the LED one a little bit though. Let me fix that. There we go. Okay, so as short as possible. That would be that one. Um, okay, I'm going to go run and use the bathroom real quick. I'll be back in a minute. Okay.
Interference works in strange ways. I wouldn't put it past it. Okay. Um, well, let's think. I don't think length is the issue because like in an Ashita case, you're running them from about right here to about right here, which is a little bit longer than what's in the, uh, oh jeez. Okay, hang on. I'm going to go, <laughs> got to close my blinds real quick. Okay, there we go. Now the sun isn't in my face. Is that G Fuel? No, this is just a water bottle. Although it's poorly designed though. There's like this weird like handle thing on it, but uh, it broke because the water bottle is so heavy when there's water in it that if it falls onto this thing, it just snaps. So now I can't really stuff to like hold it by the thingy. In case anyone out there is designing a water bottle. Um. All right, well, if there's potential, let's just route it. Let's route it completely around all the MX chip stuff for now and see what happens. And then if it's still having issues, then I'll go as short as possible. But I don't think it's a length issue. Because these wires should be shorter than whatever the Ashita's got. And obviously, it, it, this length works fine in the Ashita. So, let's see. <laughs> yeah, hydration, you know, it is good for self-defense. I could take out anyone who, uh, who came at me with my trusty water bottle. Oh, whoops. Hope I didn't cut that wire. Okay. Was it green? Was SCW? Yes. Okay. in the pads just a little bit oh dang it's been, already been almost five hours I was hopeful to be done with this like three hours in which I guess we probably would have done at about the three and a half hour mark if there had been absolutely zero issues but alas there are issues Okay, those are really good pads. That is a very good solder joint. SDW. Okay. Oh, well now 
I might be routing these near USB, which is also kind of noisy. Man, I just don't know. All right, well, let's connect the battery again. Let's turn it on. Let's see if it's still booting it consistently or if we're at least back to where we were before. Okay, that's a good sign. We're at least booting. Okay, we have temperature readout and battery percentage. So we are kind of working. Um, I don't know how long it takes for it to like drop out so we can just sit here and watch it for a few minutes well that's kind of boring but it'll be the easiest way to tell when it dips off um what can i do while we sit here and stare at it got this got an ashita case what else do we have to play with oh okay it came back Okay, now we have... Okay, wait, you know what I can do? Let's... Try moving the wires around and see what happens. So if I just route these straight up into the air, nothing. Let's route these. Oh, wait, I should not be. I gotta be careful with these tweezers. Okay, so nothing changed. Let's cycle power. Maybe if the lines come disconnected or something, they won't reconnect. Okay. So we're gonna sit here for a minute again and see what happens. So currently the wires are routed up and over, like the MX ship stuff. Which I don't know if that's less interference, more interference, or what. Um, what was I doing before? I was doing something before I spotted it. Let's enable the battery check cam. What we're looking for is we're looking at these things. And if this thing goes to like negative 273 and this thing goes to 0%, then I smash the portable and we give up. Oh, I was showing the cool Ashita case. Yeah, so this is this is the Ashita case. Uh, I'm probably gonna reprint it though, because it's a little bit rough and it doesn't sit fit together nicely. I don't want to do a bunch of sanding. But, oh, I can show off all the portables I've got that I need to, I need to finish. Because I've got a bunch. So, this is a cool one. This is the only portable like it in existence. So this is, okay, let's, let's zoom out. Oh, it did it again! It dropped right back down to zero. Okay, let's try just cycling power. Don't move the wires at all. 
smash the portable now? Oh. Maybe later. It's against TOS. You can't do it on stream. Huh. Oh, it's okay. It's flickering back. Okay, so this time it immediately cut out. Okay, it's back. Okay, okay. Hang on. Let's let's play Wiggle the Wires. Oh, it's it's flickering again. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> it's it's trying. Come on, little buddy. I played with the wires a little bit, and it seems to be stable. Oh yeah, I trust you, MP3. You'll take care of smashing it. So when the wires are like sticking like straight up, so they're going over everything, there's nothing. I'm trying to bend the wires back down. Okay, when I put the wires back, it starts cutting out again. Okay, so it's almost certainly an interference thing. Which is really annoying, because that's... How does one fix this? Try going around like the battery? Nope. We could try making the wires super duper short. But it would only be a little bit shorter than before. I don't have much faith in that actually working. Oh, wait. Oh, okay, this wire came loose. Okay, let's... All right, problem found. It's moving the wires too much. Knocked one of them loose. Hopefully I didn't short anything weird while that was loose. Three inch spacer? Ah, oh, okay. MP3, you're an ideas guy. That's why we keep you around. Don't know if that's the uh, the solution I'd like to go with, though. Soldered. <laughs> Make a flex PCB for those two connections. Okay, let's try routing them completely separately. So red wire goes this way. Green wire goes this way. Maybe they're interfering with each other. I don't know. Um... Oh, I lost a button. No. Come back. We need you. Okay. Oh, it's like holding a... <laughs> I'm, I'm, 
How, how, how tall is a SNES? I feel like three inches might make it even thicker. Although that, uh, that does have real YouTube comment energy. Ruin the entire portable to make one thing slightly more authentic. I also love the comments where it's like, if I had built this, I would have put a real disk drive in it. It's like, no, you wouldn't have. You didn't design this. But you're right. I could just spin anything any way I want through my marketing wizardry. Okay, let's boot it up again. Wires are completely separate from each other. Let's see if there's any sort of difference. It is booting consistently now, which is very good. Oh, the, the sun set a little bit more. It's going to be in my eyes here in a second. All right. Well, <laughs> come on, man. I was going to say we get to play the... Okay, so now temperature works and... Oh, hey, look, <laughs> now we're only negative three degrees Celsius. Um, all right, it's wired jiggling time. Nothing. Just nothing. Okay, let's try... Just quick reboot. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> and now we're back. Oh wait, did it boot up just late? Okay, that was just a slightly longer boot up for some reason, I think. Or it's just a black screen, okay? Thermal engineering just might be my calling. for like a second. Oh man. I don't... I'm running out of ideas. Let's route the wires up here. Away from the NAND. We'll go in this funny shape. Close the blinds completely now. One sec. can't blind me from that direction anymore. Um, all right, so... I had an idea. Okay, I think we had just shifted the wires to a new way. So we're gonna try turning it on one more time. And then if this doesn't work, I'm gonna cut the wires as short as possible. And we're gonna try that. And then if that doesn't work, I'm disconnecting the wires and seeing what happens. Lovely. Just start shorting wires together to see what happens. That is the, uh, that is the most intelligent way of troubleshooting. 
Okay. Uh, we're shortening these. To as short as they can possibly go. Oh. How long has this wire been disconnected for? Okay, hang on. We're gonna... For the sake of exhaustive troubleshooting, we're gonna solder this back into place. Wires are not meant to be moved this much. Once they're like soldered to Weavy, is you're not supposed to wiggle them back and forth over and over again. Can I send a photo of my connections? Yeah, I can do that. Don't think that wire had been disconnected for long. it should show. They're pretty... <laughs> the joints could be better, but like I could tin off, trim off a little bit of the wire, but I just don't know. So a low resistance value in 4.7k. Mm. Stone Edge is suggesting, oh wait, I forgot to send MP3 the picture. They're suggesting maybe adding uh, some more pull-ups with lower resistance. Which might be worth a shot, we'll see. Alright, there's a, there's a picture of it for you. That picture does not look great, but it is what it is. Um, okay, so that is solidly soldered back into place. We're gonna turn it on with the wires going that way. SCW looks pretty sketchy. Um, pretty I already did it real quick but SCW is one of the uh, the pads I'm soldering to the two lines that are causing me a headache are SCW and SDW and they're data lines between the PMS and the Wii that they're supposed to communicate with each other but I don't know Okay, let's try booting it up again. Wonder if this inconsistent booting thing is related or if it's its own, its own beast. Okay, we booted this time. It's already flickering. Or was that just the camera? No, 
it's already flickering pretty hard. Alright, well, we'll let it sit there for a minute. We'll see if it gets any worse. Alright, I'll show off this case, though, real quick. So this case... There's an old portableizer who went by Spencer. And a while back, he was just selling, like, a bunch of old stuff he had for projects that he was never going to finish. So... I got this case, which is pretty slick. Uh, it already has like a paint job and everything, although it's really dusty. I have, I need to take better care of it. Um, it already has some parts inside of it too. Like it's got one of the old EYOYO screens, which was like the first five inch like display we found that had IPS panels, but it's kind of a pain to use. And then the back half, it's pretty cool uh, because it's got like uh, like specifically designed grips and stuff. Uh, that's a really clever design, but uh, probably really tough to 3D print. But yeah, so I need to do this at some point. I just need to put it all together. Um, oh, whoa, those screw posts. Hang on. There are these screw posts here, but I never knew what they were for, but they might actually fit a PMS2. One sec. Oh, wait. So our temperature is plummeted. But our battery is still good. Mm. There isn't an update for the PMS slide, is there? I know the PMS2 had an update. Firmware. Um, okay, it says copy the PMS2.bin file. But I feel like I shouldn't do that okay there is but I wouldn't update if your connection is sketchy that's fair um huh okay wait the battery percentage just updated to 96% it went up oh and there it goes All right, um, so it doesn't seem to matter how I route the wires. We still get, we still get the disconnect issue. It's better in some places, like it'll take longer. Like that, I think that's the longest we've ever gone without it disconnecting, but. Does seem to be interference. Uh, turn the portable off, right? Here we go. Sparkle Bear had similar issues. Have you tried increasing the pull-up resistor strength? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, Stone Edge said, just said something about that. And I'll try that as a last resort. Real quick, I'm gonna make the wires as short as possible. Although they were only maybe an inch longer than absolute maximum last time. Or, like, an inch longer than, like, maximum shortness. But, uh... I'll try it real quick. Okay, green is SCW. Alright. 
That is as short as I can make that wire. That is as short as I can make. That wire, okay. Hmm, wait, could it be? Okay, so I think the pull-ups are what need 1.8 volts. So I guess I should make sure that 1.8 volts has a solid connection to the PMS. Which I'm pretty sure it does. Still seems to be connected. I can't see 1.8 volts on the PMS because the Wii is going over it. But... Okay. Well, let's try short wires. Maximum shortness does sound like an oxymoron. Yeah, I don't think... I guess minimum length is probably the right way to put it. SCW. Okay, I stripped off a little bit more than I wanted. <laughs> yeah, this is the outro song, isn't it? I could just end here, but really want to get this working and at least play it for like an hour. I'm starting to get a bit hungry, but... Let's see... that joint. Oh, it's not even the right pad. Okay. There we go. Glad I caught that one. Alright, so the wires are now as short as possible. They cannot go any shorter. Um, Well, 
Uh, it's already flickering. Hmm. <sighs> and there it goes. Oh, it's back. All right, let's try something. If I go into a game, I Mario Kart Double Dash. Okay, the battery life showed up for a second, and it was correct. It was like 84%, which is about what it should be. 83%? Is it... Oh, is it because it's like disconnecting and reconnecting? Is that why... Let's see if it comes up again. Because it'll usually pop up for like a second when you boot it up. But I don't think it's supposed to like come on and off. Is there a way to like force check the battery percentage in like a GameCube game? Is there a button combo for that? I know that ZY. Oh, see, I can check it. Okay, so ZY D-pad up does show the battery percentage. So in game, it's consistently showing 83%, unless that's just like a fluke. So now, okay, let's go, let's exit out without rebooting the portable. So we're gonna go back to the RV loader menu now. Uh, oh, what were, Okay, it aired out. And the Wii shut off. Very strange. Let's reboot. Yeah, so we're still at 84-ish percent on the battery. So, in-game, it was working fine. For a while. Okay, I just want to sit in this menu for a few minutes. Make sure it disconnects again. Kirby Air Ride is based. I didn't grow up with it as a kid, so I don't really get it. Like, I've tried playing it before, and people really like it, but I don't... It doesn't hit the same for me. But... Oh, wait. Okay, it's starting to flicker now. So in the RV loader menu, it's fully gone. So if I boot up, let's say, wait. Okay, I shifted the case slightly and it came back. Okay, it's flickering again. What happens if I... That's weird. If it starts flickering, like moving the case in and out a little bit, it fixes. Is there something... 
No, it couldn't be it. I was going to say, is it something like on the screen driver board that's interfering with those? But when I like completely like lifted up the screen earlier, it didn't change anything. Seems like some faulty wiring. Yeah, it seems like an interference issue. But I've tried a bunch of different things that I would expect to work as interference fixes and none of them did much. It's still holding stable. Oh, wait. As I say that. Yeah, it's flickering again. Okay, what ends if I ship the case? It fixes. Oh, okay, it just died. Let me move the case a little bit. It's back. Oh, okay, it's dying again. All right, let's let it sit for like a few seconds. Okay, it's... it's uh, why can't it just consistently work or not work? My life would be so much easier. I also love how when it's like getting the battery percentage and flickering a bunch, like the battery like bar will jump outside of the battery. Are there any lines you can, tw you can twist SCW and SDW with? I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to twist them together. I don't know if shielding them with ground is a good idea or a bad idea. G-Man didn't mention it at all. I mean, let me go back and check. So strange. Um, well, now it's like consistently coming on and off. Before it would like go off and then that was that was it. Oh. Okay, I moved it a little bit. Apparently it didn't like that. Let's restart. Yeah, I think Shank did jinx me. Oh, come on, man. Did I break something? No, of course they did. I tried sweet talking it. No. All right, so it doesn't it doesn't boot at all anymore. Man. What did I break? H and V are still intact. Still intact over here. Okay, this glue is just coming loose. We just need to get rid of it. Oh, okay, that glue is also loose. Very cool. Alright, well... It is not looking good. What if the sensor itself is faulty? Uh, that's a good idea. Um, the issue is that the battery... 
uh, sensor and the temperature sensor are completely different. Um, and so if one of them wasn't working, like the temperature wasn't showing up, then I have a thermistor resist or thermistor issue. And if the battery percentage isn't showing up, then something else is missing. But since both are coming on and off intermittently, it's almost certainly has to be the wires that carry those signals to the Wii. So that's why I'm so convinced it's this. But I don't think electrical tape over the wire is the issue. Electrical tape won't like add any sort of like shielding to it. Um, it would help if I thought something was like shorting out over here. Um, like if that like this piece of metal, like when it was bent over, it was touching these, then electrical tape would avoid that. But I don't think that's the issue. And I don't know if the intermittent booting is related or if it's its own thing. For the sensor itself to be faulty, that'd have to mean like one of the chips on the PMS light is busted. But that seems very unlikely. All right, well, we let it sit for a couple minutes without doing anything. Let's see if anything changed. All right, something might be actually broken at this point. Um, I'm going to completely disconnect SCW and SDW for now. See if that changes anything. Okay, they're not touching each other. Um, I can check and see if 3.3 .3 volts and ground were shorting. Earlier I was having an issue where the resistance was really low. But that wasn't causing any sort of issue. Let's see. Oh, I'm getting... That seems way too low. I'm getting like 3 ohms of resistance between ground and 3.3 .3 volts. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what part of the board is causing the resistance to be that low. So let's start by disconnecting this board. Actually, let me let me check the voltage on 3.3 .3 volts. Because if the resistance is that low, twenty volts. It's like 3.28 volts, which is that's what I'd expect. Let's check 1.8 volts. 1.78 volts. That's normal. So I want to see if I can figure out where the resistance is so low at, though. Because that doesn't seem right. Okay, so that board isn't the issue. What about this board?
Still like five ohms, so that's not it. Is it the screen? No. The MX chip? Is that the only thing I haven't checked? Oh, it might be the MX chip. That's... The MX chip is retaining more heat than I think it should. Oh, the MX chip was working. Well, let's, let's disconnect these. Okay. Still five ohms. Okay, let's disconnect power. I don't understand. I don't understand how the resistance could be that low on the Wii. Because I checked resistances on the Wii. I remember demoing that. And I definitely would have. I wouldn't have powered on the Wii if I was getting. 3. Point, I was getting like 5 ohms of resistance. So is it something with the PMS? Let's. It is the PMS, I think. Okay. So, the thing that's causing the resistance between ground and 3.3 volts to be so low is on the PMS. I'm getting about five ohms of resistance. Which means something might be broken on the PMS, which might be why we're getting the intermittent flickering. But I feel like, I feel like if something was broken on the PMS, we would have had bigger issues before now. PMS light is reading only five ohms. Resistance between 3.3 volts and ground. Is that normal? Because if I have to change something on the PMS light, then that means taking out the entire Wii. Ugh. All right, well, I'll wait a few minutes, see if anyone has anything to say about that. If they say that's normal, then I think I call it quits for now and just finish this off stream. I wanted to do the entire build on stream, and I essentially have. It's booting, it's working, I've soldered everything up. It's just that one issue. Swapping out the PMS is never fun. Yeah. But I haven't done anything crazy to this PMS. I just kind of vanilla soldered it up. And it's been at 5 ohms for a while. Like, I noticed that earlier today when I was trying to troubleshoot the sticks. And the Wii would still boot with it at 5 ohms, but... I'm not convinced that's a good thing.
Mm, if battery's connected, measurement may not be valid. When did I disconnect? Oh, is it? Well. Oh, no. Okay, it might be the battery. Ah, uh, okay. It was a battery thing. case I am out of ideas I think at some point in the future I'll reconnect all the 3.3 volt stuff now that I know that that isn't the issue um, I'll see if I can get the portal running without SCW and SDW at all um, and then once I can do that I'll try to bring them back in See if I can figure something out. I might try changing the pull-up resistors on it. Apparently that can be an issue. But... I think I'm calling it quits there. Kind of frustrated I wasn't able to get it working. Really wanted to be able to play it for at least a little bit today. But... That's just not going to happen. But, uh... Yep, that's the part of building portables that you don't really see in my videos. <laughs> because it's really boring. And no one wants to watch that. But... Um, I'll spend some time on it either tomorrow or Friday and then maybe like Friday or this weekend uh, I'll try to do a stream of actually playing it for a little while um, sure I can get it fixed it'll probably just take some time maybe there's some weird fix out there that someone else knows of and they just aren't active right now but uh thanks to everyone who showed up and watched uh yeah bummed I wasn't able to get it finished but that happens. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll stream one more time this week with this thing all done, all working, no troubleshooting, only fun times. That's the goal. All right. See you, everyone.